Welcome to the round table of in-game leaders. I've assembled some of the greatest minds. I've got Nitro, Nexa, and Karakan to discuss all the things around being a fantastic IGL when it comes to Counter-Strike. This kind of discussion I want to start off with is becoming an IGL. Now, I know for you, Nitro, as an example, they just kind of fell into it. You know, you went from being one of the star players into this. But how does it come into it? How do you just start becoming an IGL? How did it work for you, for example, Carrigan? I think already in a young age, uh, when I played 1.6, I kind of was, was always a secondary caller in, in that sense. Okay. Um, I was a star player back in the days. People might not know <laughs> from More CSGO, times, yeah. Um So yeah, I, I think I played under great in-game leaders uh, back then uh, in the Danish scene, but also got B was like kind of the last the big idea I had before. Mm -hmm. I kind of took it myself up. Um, so yeah, it kind of came natural with when I was 16 that I had like a strong voice and a vision for the game and mm -hmm. how it should be played. Um, but I waited until the right moment. So I was mature enough to kind of lead the bigger teams. I mean, for me, I never really wanted to to be the IGL, right? I was always the secondary caller, and I, I, I guess the thing for me is I never really played with any like top tier in-game leader, you know. Mm. So I don't really know how others do it. I just know that like I was always a secondary caller, and people kind of like looked looked up to me, and they said, "Yeah, bro, you should do this. Like, you know, you have what it takes. You should be the in-game leader. You know, you can do it." So I always went into that path. Like I tried to stop being an in-game leader like three or four times, but it, like, <laughs> like it, it just, yeah. Like, you know, I was like, I, I think I'm better as a secondary caller, you know, mm -hmm. like I can help my actual in-game leader, you know, and then just somehow I just kept, kept coming back into it, you know, and then I decided to take the responsibility and, and, you know, see, see where it can take me. For you, Nick. I think like 2016, I first tried and I was really bad because I was like, I was really skilled on my team. And like, I was like the second voice. I think the second voice in the team is like the best because mm -hmm. you can kind of do what you want and like also be playing your own game, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the best, best job in the world, but, I think, uh, in the CSGO. 2017 is when I first took over and uh, just went from there. And uh, it was not something that I wanted to do when I was younger, but I just kind of fell into it. And uh, obviously great things came from it and it's been really fun ever since. It's funny, one out of three actually wanted, like it was a vision to be it, the other two just fall into it. But like, do you feel like extra pressure, extra responsibility when you have to take it over? Because it seems like there's just a lack of people that want to do it. There's definitely way more responsibility. And a big part of it is like being able to stay level-headed throughout the whole entire game. And uh, whenever your leader like tilts or like is out of it, then like the whole team is going to be out of it. So like I instantly knew that I couldn't be like a tilter. Well, I wasn't yeah. a tilter like before that. So you I don't knew take that, me as a tilter at all. So I knew that like the role was something that I could be good at eventually. And I have like pretty good work ethics and I like to study the game a lot. And uh, I think all those things combined are really good. Yeah, I think responsibility is like the responsibilities you have are much, much greater, you know. And I know at the beginning, a lot of times, when, when things were tough, you know, and we take a timeout and I can just see that everyone is just sitting there and waiting for me to come up with like all the solutions, all the right calls, you know, the, the right answers for everything, you know, and I think at, at the beginning, you know, I had a lot of pressure doing it, but it, it's, it's something that like, you know, with experience, with like games, official matches, you, you learn how to get through it. And I think it's not always about having a right call, but just giving a direction so people feel you know, more, more, more safe that you actually know what's, what's going on. Okay. And for you two in particular, you have obviously changed teams as well while I'm gelling a lot. You had phase and intervals and back into phase. Like, how much does that affect what you're doing as an IGL to like show your ability? Because obviously you're coming in, things are changing, things are moving around. I, I think it all depends on where you are in your career, right? Uh, I, I think many times, every time I change the team, I learned something new. I took something from what I did wrong in another organization, I, I think in the end and phase, I wasn't strong enough um, IGL. So I went to Mouse knowing that I mean, if I work with young players, they will respect me every single second. When I say something, they will instant go do it. And by, by going from phase to, first of all, it was Envy. I was like, that was very uh, awkward to play one, with one of the best players and then play with Envy in NA. But coming into Mouse, I knew what I had to work on, what I had to be strong at if I wanted to compete at the top again and what I wanted for my players and how I wanted to play the game. And, and then I could form Mousebots into uh, being a competitive team, um, but also having great players and 
like what I, what I love the most about being IGL and once I'm done with my career is like seeing how many players career you touched and how and when their peak was. I, I yeah. think uh, in, in my particular case, I played with so many great players and some peak with me, some peak before, some peaked after. Um, so I, I think that's one of the things as IGL when you're done, you're going to look back on that because as an IGL, you don't always get the credit. Maybe I got a lot of credit this year, obviously for the result, but in my past career, uh, that's the thing as an ideal. If you win, your player won the game. If you lose, the ideal lost the game. I, I completely agree with, with everything <laughs> that he said, basically. You know, it's it's kind of the same for me when I went from, from G2 to OG. It's like um it's it's sometimes hard when like personalities clash and you have people who are not really on board with like your vision of how you want to play the game, you know, and you can always feel it on the server when like people disagree with, you know, like the calls or like don't really want to do it or, or hesitate, you know, that's why coming into OG and getting to play with like younger players who for them, it doesn't matter, you know, like they, they, they believe in me, they, they trust in me they they want to prove themselves, you know, and they'll blindly follow me anywhere. And yeah, it's like a big, big contrast from, from where I was before, you know, and like, I'm, 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 I'm happy where I am, you know. And for you, Nitro, you obviously, had liquid right for this this long time. Okay, we, we got your Valorant stint in there as well. But for you, is it better having just a consistent? Because you've had players change, but you've had a very consistent core to work with. How much does that aid you? Um, I think throughout all the players I've had, the most important thing was to let them know my vision and like getting trying to get all five of us on the same page and. Obviously, I've had like a lot of like I've had Taco, Steel, I've had Zeus as a coach. So I've had like different cultures come mm -hmm. into my team and try to apply like different concepts. And I think nowadays, like I can apply everything that I've learned to my own game and like my team's game. But I think most importantly, uh, in, in CS is like getting your players all on the same page mm -hmm. and having that same vision. And then from that like vision, you can create your structure and like have your, all your different plays off of the structure and. Um, everyone like believes in the system because once one player stops believing, then it just it becomes really hard. Like he was like Nexo was saying, with like you can feel that disagreement and like you can just you just feel it. Like you know they're just sitting next to you. Yeah. You just it's just like such a bad feeling because <laughs> ultimately you're the leader and no one knows what's going on inside the team besides you and your teammates, right? Yeah. And uh, like I think I think that's just the most important part of the game. It's all been on the same page now. Now, real quick, last thing. Who in your eyes is the greatest leader of all time? Well, in, in my eyes, it's it's Kerrigan. Um, since when I like when I actually became first time IGL, I was mm. following him a lot and like stealing things from him and <laughs> and like, you know, <laughs> listening to to his like YouTube and like all the interviews and stuff, like, you know, trying to see how he thinks and like what why why he thinks this way, like why does he make this decision, you know, like watching his POVs, like, you know. Why did they go be now like this and that, you know? So a lot of things I have in my game is actually um, from 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 Kerrigan. So in in my eyes, he is the the best thing in the game. Nick, um, not to boost the ego, but I think <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Finn is has been like you've been pretty consistent throughout your whole career, like on top. So I would say him, just like the longevity of him being at the top. Uh, I think Glaive obviously had his peak um, where he was really good and they had really good structure and all that stuff um, and they beat the crap out of me. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I think overall, I think I think Kerrigan has been the most consistent at the top. Finn, yourself, yeah? We'll just jump down, we'll end it, we'll just go. <laughs> I think it's it, it's very hard to 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 look at in game leaders who's the best in game leader. Obviously, Glaive will have probably more on, on me doing the majors, but I think from from what I've achieved this year, just showcase like no matter where you are, no matter where you are in your career and where you want to be, you if you work hard, in the end it will work out. And uh, obviously, I'm I'm happy where I am, but I also know what I need to do, and I also know what I wanted when I joined Face uh, because I'm in a situation where. I've learned a lot from mistakes, but also yeah. learned from the successes. And who knows if it's going to keep on going. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to see other ideas uh, saying um, I'm doing a good job. You know, you never really know um, only from your past teammates because that they are the ones in the server with you. And, and as long as they're happy, I'm the happiest guy in the world. So there we go. Well, I think that's a good end. Thank you very much, guys. Another round table done. And well, some of the greatest minds account for right here.
Welcome to the round table. And this round table features some of the best orbs we have in Counter-Strike. We've got the baby goat or yellow flash in Manasi. We've got the aggressive slab from Dexter and the goat himself or Ackerman maybe. Simple. Ackerman. Ackerman, Ackerman yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's smiling already. Ackerman. Now, to start off with, when it comes to Orpin, I want to start by asking, we'll start with you, Sasha. Did you always plan to be an Orpin game? How did it happen? What led to it? No, I was playing with rifle mostly. But after when I, uh, I think, joined Hellraisers, mm. uh, Mark Hill said he don't want to op, so I, and Angel asked me if I can op, I said, why not? Okay. So I started to play more and more with op and start to learn more about this role. So it wasn't something that was just like naturally came to you, it was more like no, a no, choice no. and then you learned? I mean, I played with different guns and it was fun sometimes to play with op on yeah. some, on some spots. Dexter, what about for you? Actually, I was also starting to play Rifler. Uh, sometimes I was uh, using my second opera in my teams. Uh, at the one p uh, moment, I just realized that I would like to take care of my teammates more than uh, giving these responsibilities for other people with Ope. And uh, I was trying to uh, learn how to play with AVP before even I joined uh, any pro teams. And that's how it goes for me. I was having some offers in teams to be rifler, to, to start my career like uh, much, much earlier. But I was uh, deciding to stick with this role. And I was saying no, only if you invite me to as an opener in your team. Interesting. So you push for it a little bit more. Yeah. OK. Manasi, I only know you with an open in your hand. Was it always that way? No. no? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't plan to become an opener, to be honest. Like, I was playing with second op. Like mostly with the rifle, and uh, just once, I don't know, one day, like my coach and Adrian, like asked me if I want to become a main opera. And I said, why not? Like, let's try. And I'm you, I'm you, right? I'm um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Big yeah, brain. yeah, I become main opera, and uh, yeah, just like that. Never goes as planned, <laughs> right? Yeah, but it's a good decision for yeah. you, right? But I still like rifle. Like, I mean, I like op, I like rifle. I don't know, just practicing everything else. When you guys were starting out as an Orpa, was there certain players you looked up to as a player you thought, ah, oh, I like how he plays it? I watched a lot of demos of Kenyas and Device. Oh. And man, Oscar as well, back at the days, he was yeah. unstoppable. I watched um, like some fallen POVs. Fallen, uh, yeah. Device, yeah. Like those hoppers. I mean, even called Zero sometimes. <laughs> the he's course, second yeah. opera, but yeah. he's, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's true. I was watching Cold Zero uh, mm -hmm. days before. It was uh, one of the best examples for me was on cash. Okay. Um, if you're going to talk about like main opers, it was a device most of the times and uh, Sasha and uh, Fallen uh, back in the days uh, because he even gives some guides for Brazilian fans. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had some people uh, in my friend list that was um, good at, uh, at translating. Ah, so nice. they was giving me these videos and I was watching uh, Mirage tips from Fallen. I even uh, told it to him when we meet first time in real life. Like, like, Kozira, he made this highlight right on Karl Mirage. Yeah. Like, people in the future, like, he's not main opera, right? He's rifle. He's anchor, maybe even. Mm -hmm. no, I don't remember. But people will think he's an opera, right? Because of this highlight. And it's crazy. <laughs> Ones that stay in your mind for sure. And when you're, you're doing that, right, you're looking at these, how do you translate what they do and, and something you can put into your game? Do you, does it need to be a player that plays same position or is it just the fact they use the orb? Like, for example, like, if I play against a team, I try to watch, like, like before the game starts, try to watch, like, some POV uh, of Opera who, against who I'm playing, right? But, for example, like on Mirage, like, when, I, when we played against Navi, I remember, like, I tried to watch, like, simple POV, but it's hard to prepare for him because it's like, like, you know, like, it's an opera who's always moving and you cannot, like, predict where he will stay, you know? And you know, sometimes, uh, like, Monazi can watch my demo and I understand that he saw my, <laughs> he saw my last mirages, so I need to change something. Yeah. Oh, so your mind gave it each other? No, of course. It's, yeah. It's like this uh, be between teams as well. Oh. I'm, yeah. Like, I'm watching the Poe demos as well, but I'm, uh, I like to see more, like, small details when he's trying to peek somehow, or he has some angles, or he ex expects some guy to jump here, you know, it's uh, it's always different. 
But uh, sometimes when you focus on some opera, mm. you can miss the whole team, you know. It yes. was, yeah. uh, I think it was the same. Uh, it was for me when I watched a lot of Zaivu, because uh, like one year ago, they started to play better and they started mm -hmm. to beat us as well, or one and a half year ago. And after, uh, even when I watched, he just, uh, he was destroying my team, you know. So I decided to watch how his team playing. Mm -hmm. And it was so easy to kill other guys, you know. So you because took the focus away he from is, He as Oper, he was always third or fourth guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first two guys were very important in their team. Like it was, I think, Apex uh, and Misuta, they were trying to get first entries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was important to yeah. kill them. I remember when I was uh, playing in um, Espada back in the mm -hmm. days, uh, I we was fighting with Gambit youngsters a lot and um, we was losing to them and people was coming to me and asking how do you play against uh, Shira, what do you feel? And uh, I told them, guys, I'm not playing against Shira, I'm playing against uh, Nafani, Aksai, yeah, Hobbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, they don't understand that we don't have a lot of duels against each other, yes, we just yes. more <laughs> killing uh, riflers and only after maybe you will fight with Oprah. So you, you got knocked down too fast and then yeah. wait for him to appear. <laughs> okay. How do you compare you and how do you guys think of Sasha versus Zaiwu in the orc battle in the head-to-head -head like that because we as talent we discussed that Simple does things that we would not recommend other players try because you don't hit it but then Zaiwu is a lot more like plays it through and maybe less off instinct in how we view it. Mm -hmm. What do you guys see it as? I mean it's tough to say uh, like a lot of the games when I watch like Zaiwu and Sasha playing against each other like, I think for Zyvo, it's not comfortable to play against Ivy. You mm. know what I mean? Like, Kryptonite, yeah? Yeah, Kryptonite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kryptonite. I think it's like this. But I don't know. Like, two different kind of styles of Hoppers. When I teach my teammates so many times how to not pick Zyvo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I show them, like, how I play, and he yeah. do the same, you know? Like, yeah. uh, positioning. Mm -hmm. Everyone do the good positioning. But accuracy, I think, I feel his accuracy is good. Yeah, yeah. his uh, decision making very fast mm. as well. Yeah, but I feel from my perspective, I was looking on both of you in a uh, two years period when mm. you was fighting for <laughs> the fun. And um, yeah, they have different sty uh, style of uh, opening a bit like both of them can do aggressive moves and also both of, both of them can support their teammates and control sometimes. That's what I think it's smart Oper need to do always. Mm. You have both ways and you are good with both of them. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the beautiful thing uh, that I can um, like look on both of them, it's um, something that I, I remember, I, I heard it in football. Um, when I look on Zaivu, I feel like it's great guy and good player, very good player, insane. And I look on Sasha. One thing that is uh, making difference between uh, both of them for me, is that when, uh, like, of course, I, I don't know what's going on with Steam, mm. but w from my perspective, when I see uh, Navi games and when I see Vitality games, um, leadership. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I like. Mm -hmm. And um, whenever I was watching some of uh, like uh, crazy matches, I'm looking on, on uh, Sasha face. And he's like red, <laughs> and he's saying, "Guys, let's go. We need to do this." We Sometimes need to do this. I miss what uh, they will have this calmness, yes. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. will have different way. <laughs> Sometimes he's it helps, too. yeah. And sometimes it doesn't help at all. Same with uh, leadership as well. Yeah. yeah, you can be sometimes angry on your teammates because they did some very huge and bad mistake. And uh, with personality of Zaibo, I don't know. Yeah, he's behaving this year. He's just. Uh, he's always happy. Even he if he's, even like, if he's yeah. losing a game, he's just happy to be playing Counter Strike. Yes, and <laughs> that's beautiful inside of him. Uh, I just, I just, uh, I cannot say that I will have always the same as he has. Well, for me, it's <laughs> for me, it's something that's inside of Zaivu. You know, I'm trying to get it, but it's not so easy. No lies. All right, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it, and good luck going through the full finals. Let's see if you can get that win. Thank you. I think I've helped build strong talent here in Heroic because we've picked the right players at the right time. 
Also, we made changes uh, two times where both times people have been questioning it. Said, you are an amazing team, why would you change now? They made that roster change of bringing in Yabi instead of Refresh. And I think that roster change took a little bit longer than they really expected it to come together and coalesce and, and, and have the impact they expected it to. The first two tournaments with uh, Jabi, we really struggled. Uh, as a team. Losing to NAP at the fault groups was really awful feeling. I remember we had a team talk afterwards and I said that things need to change. We need to get back into the group where we work harder than the rest of the teams. Kaden is really passionate about CS and like about the team. He expects a very high level of everyone. He really brings out the best in everyone, I would, I would say. I think looking at our results since then, it's really paid off and we are at a completely different state of mind now. While they've never lifted a trophy, you can see that the potential is there. And I think now with the addition of a little bit of a new playstyle, a little bit of a different facet to their game, Yabby being comfortable within this roster, Kadian back to playing at a higher level as an in-game leader and as an AWP, Stown still delivering, they have all the pieces that you'd ask for for this team to contend for a championship. And now they just have to prove that they can show the level in Rio in back-to-back -back events. So only us and Navi made the playoffs at the, the Major. So some teams has had an extra week home, you know, to rest and prepare. Uh, but our shape is good and I'm, uh, I'm expecting us to go far. Royal Arena is always an event that we're going to mark in our calendars. It's, it's basically our home ground, so definitely it, it adds a little bit of an extra pressure. Yeah, it means everything to play here in front of the home crowd. We are super excited. We had a little bit of that taste uh, last year where they were cheering for us and then obviously against Astralis, Astralis was being favored. But since they're not uh, here now, we're hoping that we'll have the crowd along our side for every game. If you're a Danish Counter-Strike fan, like, you might not like it, but this is the team you got to hang your hat with. This is the team at this event you got to ride or die with. So certainly at the moment and for the foreseeable future, Heroic's the only one you've got. I think we had a target on us the whole year. I think we have been the team to beat the whole year. Right now, we're not. I think Rio was really rough on the team. We came in very confident. Then, you know, like 24 hours into the tournament, we're out already. I struggle to put a whole lot of blame on FaZe for their early exit. One thing that's led them to have such a great year is their ability to bend but not break. They've had so many close games, so many comebacks as well. And this was the first time where it really felt like that ability that got them to this point failed them. Well, I think when you go 0-3 in, in a major tournament like we did in Rio, uh, you obviously look for different reasons. But coming in as a team, practice is good. Everybody has plus 100 hours. Everybody was grinding at boot camp. Everything was kind of set up to be a perfect tournament for us, but ended up being a perfect storm in that sense that um, I think we came in too all confident. That kind of facet of the game seemed to be missing, that killer instinct and, and that cohesion that kept them together and kept them in games really let them down. So for whatever reason, teams came into this event and just were not afraid of phase whatsoever. I think after the um, last few months uh, since the season started, we are really hungry to win a trophy. But for sure, we want to land one of these uh, blast events. To end the year on a high note, because it has been a very good year for us, but it's also how we finish it is important. And we want to get back to being the best team in the world as we dropped down the rankings uh, last few weeks. This is probably the best chance he's ever had to win on home soil. He's, he's checked so many things off of his bucket list this year that he wasn't able to accomplish in the past. It would be such a beautiful end for Kerrigan to 2022 if he's able to actually win here in the Royal Arena, win here in Copenhagen, and put that behind him as well. Add one more thing to the resume. It would mean everything for Kerrigan to win in front of the home crown here in Copenhagen. It's an amazing feeling when everyone is cheering for you, and he's going to do everything he can, I'm sure, to show the crowd who he is. It would mean a lot to me. And finishing up a good year here in the Royal Arena, uh, it would be fantastic, especially have invited 50 uh, friends and family to sit in one corner and, and be like the face hooligan. So hopefully the crowd will support that and sing along with them.
Copenhagen, how are we doing? It's good to see you all, and thank you to everyone tuning in from around the world as well. Today is Championship Sunday, and today we're all waiting for that grand final. Heroic taking on FaZe Clan. But before that, we have a very special treat for you in terms of the show match. And I guarantee you, with the players that are taking part in it, you won't want to miss it. And we got some very special guests as well. But guys, have you been watching the whole tournament? Well, for any of you that missed the initial days or missed any of the action, have a look at this. The arena came alive for the semi-finals day. The last four teams battling it out to take one step closer to the trophy. Heroic entered the arena to rapturous roars. The Danes definitely had the crowd on their side. Heroic cruised to victory on map one. And now the kills come in for Tessas. With Liquid firing back on map two. Oh, oh my, my lord! God, he got oh. that kill in the back as well! That should make you fear if you're on the side of Heroic. A third was needed, but Liquid ran out of steam as Heroic dominated on Vertigo to clinch the first full final spot. They reached the grand final one more time. FaZe versus Nip was a match that delivered. Nip's pick of overpass went clearly their way to set up an epic on FaZe's map pick Nuke. It's Alexi to again pick up every kill he has to. That is 15. Nip pulled out a 14-10 lead and their place in the final was almost sealed until FaZe did the impossible and turned the tide, taking map two and setting up the decider. Sure enough, he keeps it clean. That's oh, three oh. from Rain. If you shoot for the king, you best not miss. And it seems like the ninjas at their final hurdles have run into the Estonian god that is Rops. Finally, FaZe turned up the heat and clinched map three to set up the match that they've been relishing all year long. In his own castle, Kerrigan finds himself the last two. And with that, FaZe Clan are grand finalists. Will it be another easy game like we saw earlier? Or will FaZe crumble at the final hurdle? Championship Sunday has arrived as today the crown will be claimed here at the Blast Premier Four Finals. Heroic taking on FaZe in a battle for the ages. One team with a cabinet stacked full of trophies, the other ravenous to be claiming their first. My name is Ferris, but joining me up on this beautiful desk, Maniac Pimp as always. Gentlemen, it has been a journey to get here, but man, I am so excited to dive into today. Yeah, me too. I feel like we got the final, at least I personally were hoping for. I think the two best teams so far in the tournament also claimed the spot in the final. Usually the way it goes when you have a format like this. So overall, super excited. And I think the crowd in here already now is more than two hours until the kickoff of the big game, the grand final, and it's already filling up nicely in here. So yeah. it's going to be a good day. Of it's filling right, up. It? The energy is slowly going up, right? We have to take our time. We have to warm up for this grand final. Yesterday delivered some beautiful counter strikes. Six map. We had all that we wanted to see. We had comebacks. We had overtime. We had clutches, multi kills, breath, anything you would have on the menu if you like a good restaurant counter. -Strike. Yeah, literally an encyclopedia of CS going down yesterday. Um, that heroic versus Team Liquid mm. game, I do want to draw our attention to first. Obviously, the Danes managing to make it to yet another grand final back-to-back -back after uh, doing so at the most recent Rio Major. But Liquid, man, they were really giving it the heat. It could have really gone either way in some of those moments. Liquid were putting up a great, great fight, not only in that game against Heroic, obviously, but so far in the entire tournament, I think we've been praising Liquid for playing good Counter-Strike. It's been a positive experience every time they've been on the stage. So the fact that we got to see them deliver against Heroic yesterday as well was great. I don't think there was any doubt that Heroic were the better team, but especially True. that second map on Inferno, that was back and forth. Netfly all of a sudden coming alive in that second half. It was just beautiful, beautiful Counter-Strike. And as you said in Maniac a couple of times yesterday, the purest form of Counter-Strike is on a stage when the pressure is on, and we saw that yesterday. Herig is once again taking names, right? A lot of people out there might have been criticizing the run they had at the Major. Granted, they didn't face the biggest, the strongest opponent, but now they add new names to that list. Liquid is one from now on. We talked about the map pool. They definitely had an advantage over the Liquid side. You said it. It was a clear best of three. There was one map, Inferno, that was very competitive. The rest, 
Heroic was head and shoulders above. Kadian, we have him on our screen. He called a great game. He could count on his superstar. Stone is riding his legends one more time. Yeah, it's been beautiful to witness kind of uh, the progress of Heroic on stage this time last year versus now obviously making it to that grand final as well. Liquid, though, we will be spinning that track one more time because uh, with that NIP loss that happened yeah. yesterday as well, Liquid are in the world finals now. And I'm happy to see that. I want to see if they can continue that positive progress we saw throughout this tournament or if it was a one-off. Coming into the major thing, all of us had decent expectations to Team Liquid. It was slightly disappointing they didn't make the playoff. They lost against Spirit. That's the one we remember where we thought, oh, you should have done better. But after what I've seen right here, I'm excited to see them in Abu Dhabi. What do you make of, of uh, Elijah's performance? I think that's, that's the one sign that worries me just a little bit yeah. because when Yakinda joined, some of the narrative was that he had freed up Elijah and then suddenly he would be putting up these high numbers. Probably we have over-attributed that success to Yakinda where we could have focused on Elijah. But in this tournament, he was extremely silent. In fact, he was the second lowest rated player for Liquid in that best of three. He tweeted himself. He wasn't happy with himself. That to me is concerning because if you cannot count on Elise, that who can we count on in that roster? Obviously, NIP are also faltering to phase uh, in that second semi final. But man, did they bring some yeah. heat? It was literally only the second half of the final map where, I, I don't know, NIP must have just run out of steam in that one. I went to bed and I was thinking of that Rob Scotch. I'm not going to lie. That Rob situation <laughs> when he was sitting on the lower bomb side, it's 15 14 for NIP. It's a 3v5. We know the game is over. We know it's supposed to be over. And then Rob's out of nowhere got a massive triple kill and kept face alive. And Kerrigan said it after the game. Rob's saved us, right? He kept us yes. alive. And then we saw what happened on that third deciding map. Face is the better team. I don't think there's any debating that. They are better than NIP, but wow, what a fight they put up and how close they were of actually making that surprise happen. It's terrifying. The fact that they survive is actually terrifying. Kerrigan said in an interview, that map, that nuke, that comeback, it activated us. Like, it tapped into a, a reservoir, a well of power that we hadn't seen in one from Face. And I'm even gonna say, I prefer this phase that just barely escaped elimination than the phase that was steamrolling everybody yep. in the yes. first few days. Because to me, as a Counter-Strike aficionado, it doesn't mean much. When everything is going easy and high fives are flying around, you don't have to dig into that second, third layer of level. But when you are tested, when you're 15-14 and then you have Rob putting that clutch for your opponents, it sends a message. You're just, you're not gonna beat us. We are unbeatable right now. Let's spin that Rob's clutch one more time. Because that is gonna be pairing in our CS Money Play of the Day, isn't it? Of course it is. Of course it's gonna be part of it, because Rob's did one hell of a job. The kills itself may not be the most sexy kills, but the importance of this moment. 15-14, Face is on their way out of the tournament, and he pulls off a triple kill like this. It is one of those moments that you will never, ever forget in Royal Arena. Pure impact from Robs, but his teammate as well. Broki is on track for a beautiful MVP title potentially here. That no-scope is just <laughs> filthy. It is just criminal. He has just defied the rules of physics, social lifestyle, and everything. Look at this. I don't even understand what the hell oh, just happened, evil. but that's Broki with this number one, or number two, sorry, on CS Man. You're not supposed to do that. Something you're not you're supposed not. to do either is death from above, which is exactly what Shoes is doing. We're getting it from a third eye perspective right here, flying down in the faces of three <laughs> Liquid players and removing every single one of them. His his point of view, even more ridiculous, landing on one of the players and then just shedding them up. That was beautiful done by Shus. Yeah, so excited that we're going to get to see all of those players gracing our CS Money Play of the Day for the semi-finals day, gracing the stage later for our coveted grand final. Of course, that's going to be coming up at 5.30 if you're joining us in the Central European time zone. But first of all, we've got a spicy show match to kick things off. Welcome to the Blast TV show match between a mixed team of four local Counter-Strike heroes facing off against the Blast TV Dream Team, a team made up of four of the best players in the world. They'll be joined by two lucky fans to play on the fall final stage. But this is no ordinary show match, oh no. This is a best of one map where you, the Blast TV user, will decide on the map played. Blast TV users also get the chance to dictate special rounds like snipers only, SMGs only, shotguns only, lower gravity, 20 second bomb timer, and a cash injection to both teams and a few other fairly ridiculous surprises. If you want to get involved, head over to Blast TV now and have your say. Welcome to the autosave experience by Omen. I'm your host, James Bates, and I get the pleasure of talking to some of your favorite players. All right, so to start with Tessa, I'm going to ask you to do the honors. If you pull this one off for me. Yeah, no, I'm controlling you. It oh. seems very easy to do. <laughs> Yeah. What was your favorite game as a child before Counter Strike, maybe? Or did you just start yeah. with Counter Strike? What did I play? Yeah. Well, um, in the beginning, I played uh, League of Legends, actually. Uh, like, oh, <laughs> no. Uh, 
Uh, my first game that I remember was probably Goldeneye. Hey! 64. They're re-releasing that. Are they? Yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be a new one. I wonder how that's gonna be. <laughs> JKS, you did it on us. That's, that's easy. That's easy. That's, that's not fair at all. Your fondest memory of game with JKS. I mean, it's probably just winning a tournament, right? Yeah. Winning Katowice was pretty good. Um, <laughs> making the major playoffs twice, that was pretty good as well. Uh, probably the Grand Slam. I don't think there's anything that comes close, honestly. <laughs> All right, do this next one for me, Tesla. Yeah, uh, this I, one's I good, you good. This. Proudest moment in gaming. Becoming an in-game leader. Yeah. Uh, it's probably the highlight of my career. Probably just like HLTV Top 20 is something that I really was looking forward to getting yeah. from like years before that. And eventually I got it and it was kind of like something just to check off my list kind of thing. You know? Game. Yeah, <laughs> when it's not CSK. <laughs> Uh, recently I played much FIFA. In FIFA you into the pack opening and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. Ah, much pack okay. opening, much pack opening. It's really <laughs> <laughs> so you're trying to build the ultimate team? Yeah, yeah. I actually played this game called Grid. Uh, I've always thought it was like really cool to like drift around and uh, doing races with cars. I don't really play that many games nowadays honestly, but last one I probably played was Warzone. Okay. Just with my friends from Australia when I was back at home. Alright, JKS, do this last one for me. Yeah. Lowest moment in gaming. Lowest moment in gaming. Oof, Tessa, what is that? Uh, yeah, well, uh, we had some pretty rough times <laughs> in the work. Uh, you've, seen, you've seen a few? Yeah. Uh, scandal here and there. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, obviously, everyone knows them, and there's uh, really low moments, and it's not fun to talk about, and I hate to talk about it. It's just something I want to forget. and. Have move on, moved on from. I think the recent one in Rio was so oh, no. it was so dark. Yeah, uh, it was yeah. so rough. But I think the most pain one I had was in Katowice 2019 with Fnatic. Mm -hmm. It was like the first time Fnatic were like did not go like through to the to the main stage. I think it was. Justin, what about for you? Um, I mean, I have had a few as well, but I think it's just like tournament losses and. Things like when you don't qualify for a major or something like that. So a big thank you to Broland and Nitro. Thank you very much, Tessa. Thank you very much, JKS. This has been Auto Save Experience from Omen. I hope you've enjoyed it. My name is Andreas, and my in-game name is Sugar. And I play for Serbia Main in the second division in the Power League game. My name is Jacob, and I'm, uh, my in-game name is Ruben. And I'm playing for Zero Esport in the Power League game in the first division. I've been playing for five years, but I started taking it more seriously uh, like two years ago, I think. I've been playing Counter-Strike for around five years now. I love the community about Counter-Strike. I love the atmosphere in Blast, and uh, when we play Counter-Strike, it's just an amazing film. If I had to play with a pro player, it gotta be Star. I love the way he plays Orb and everything about his CS game. It's just amazing. Mine is probably the one I want to play most with. I feel like uh, Manis is kind of an idol for the young players. My favorite player must be Simbo, because I love the way he plays the game. He's just so confident in the way he peaks. I'm very, very excited because it's like, it's a dream come true almost. My biggest dream is playing in front of a crowd on the stage, and uh, this is a big step for me. I really love to play in front of a crowd, and it gives on a really good cheer. Yeah, I mean, I can't even describe it. It's an amazing film. is the dream team for a battle for pride on the stage in our show match. Now, you guys at home have had your say over on Blast.tv, so let's see exactly who's selected for our Damn. dream team, man. This is a pretty stacked lineup. We've got Yakinda, Manasi, Simple, Rez, and of course, the fan that we just got a little bit of a profile on. Um, 15 years of age, I believe. Man, this is like a young kid's dream to be playing with some of these legends up here. Yeah, I was going to say, I think, imagine how crazy it must be for like a player to be put in that environment. You have a camera crew coming into you, making an interview. You have a profile on the Blast TV here on broadcast, and you get to play alongside some of these legends. You have Simple next to you, the GOAT, and you get to showcase your skill right here. I mean, Jacob, I would kill for that. I would kill for that too, and, and I have been killed by those guys before, I'm gonna be honest with you. I play quite a lot, you know, off screen, and I'm sometimes, you know, going up against these guys and face it, and they are hella talented, they're hella skilled. <laughs> I would watch out if I were these pros going up against these guys, they're not for fun. 
yeah, have you got any tidbits on either of the fans that are going to be entering the server? I mean, the guy's Sugar, uh, Sugar. Uh, I know a little bit. He's uh, 14 years of age. I, I know he's uh, owning it around. He has a big brother as well who's playing for Mouse NXT, which is one of these, you know, up fostering programs that is in, in Counter Strike. We all know what happened to the Mouse lineup. So. This sugar guy, you should definitely watch out, watch out for him. He's, he's absolutely fantastic. Did you tell me he had like 4.5 thousand ELO? I think that that's uh, around that's the level he's at. He's 14 years of age and he's at plus 4K. ELO. Basically, Rexus. I can't, even, I can't, even, I can't even. No. Mental. Um, yeah, let's see who Sugar's going to be playing with uh, in this Danish uh, Danish team. Uh, of course, it's going to just be Danes gracing the side of this lineup. We've got uh, like S Tag, we've got Gade there. Dupree's going to be gracing the stage. Oh. We've got Kirby as well. Yeah, I, I, bumped into, uh, I bumped into Kirby in the hall. It was great to see his face yeah. once again. I mean, he's made a comeback into Counter Strike, believe an end point currently. It's nice to have Dupree as well in here in Copenhagen. Gade, Esetag. Cool, you know, very fair play from Esetag to play uh, with us today after obviously, yes, this disappointment. You yeah, gotta man. give it to him, gotta tip the hat, and they're gonna have a fan with them. He as just well. wanted to go on that left one more time, and I don't blame him. Why can we not get on the left? Like, we were promised we would do the lift, and we never did the lift. Maybe and we that could do is it. a Heavy after heart the grand me. final. Maybe I don't know. You know what? Another it. wish that has been answered for me. We get to see Anubis, Jacob. I am very excited. Oh, for Anubis is going to be great. Anubis is one of those new maps, right, Fred, that I know you've been practicing, you've been nerding it out, you've been grinding it out. You told me that you're actually good on the map and you know smokes. Not quite sure if I believe you, but I'm curious to see if any of these pros, and especially the two youngsters as well coming in, if they have any tricks up their sleeves. Yeah, there's a lot uh, that you guys can get involved with as well on the Blast TV. Make sure that you are watching through that platform because there's some votes in here, Matthew. Um, you can give teams extra money. It's you can uh, change the gravity, apparently. Also, there's a very special smoke thing. Oh, my God. Um, think Ooh. about, you yeah, know, how we Yeah, there's a whole lot of uh, shenanigans that. that's going to happen. And it's great to see that people can actually interact and be involved in the show, of course. Uh, the moon gravity, you know, when people can actually jump and go further away. That's something I used to do. Back yeah. in the days, we could be the Archon, you know, you could change in the console. I would just change your gravity to 100, everyone would fly, and that's then 5,000 just kill everybody. Just, One of my it. friends used to do that and drop nades at the same time when nade dropping wasn't a thing. Um, that would crash drop the server nades. every single time. They would crash the server. Yeah. Just nihilism. Shout just out everybody to, has to Joe just, Hawkins, probably it. watching in the production room there you go. as well. Well, uh, before we do dive into this one, we do need to head to a quick break, but make sure you join us back after that to see the Dream Team and Team Denmark taking to the stage in our show. Let's go. Thank you, Jacob. Welcome everybody to The Greatest Innovators, brought to you by Coinbase. My name is Ferris Spears, and joining me, four icons of the CSGO scene. We've got Alexi B, Elige, Kadian, and Phelps. And today, we're essentially going to be discussing who paved the path in Counter-Strike, who was kind of the greatest innovator. So, Kadian, I'm going to start off with you. I think I'll go with um, Get Right. I think that uh, he kind of innovated the Lurk role a bit. I remember playing against him, and you just felt like you could wait so long, and he never came. And as soon as you moved away, he just found the perfect timing. So. For me, he kind of innovated that role in CS, and uh, yeah, that's why he's my uh, nomination. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good pick. I didn't even think about that because in my head, I was thinking of like IGLs and stuff. But yeah, like anything that like changes like how everyone plays and their playstyle is super good picks. Yeah. Elise, I'm come to you next. Yeah. So I was I was like trying to think of like what type of player like really changed. So I was like thinking about like the different eras and stuff, and I'm gonna go with Fallen because you know he. But like that lineup just like completely like changed how people play CS, like that style of like defaulting and having like all the, like these different like things that you could do off like the default and conditioning people. Like people didn't really do that before LG, SK. So I, th I think that was like the go-to for me. I mean, I think I was inspired by the fact that he was leading his nation in, in like a, a way that uh, he can be really proud of. He's that kind of dad figure where I just feel like whenever I watch him or see him talk or when they're playing with their teams, I just feel like he's super calm. And just the fact that like, yeah, he has that, that role of being like the voice and yeah, I mean, having the nickname professor and everything. Yeah. It's just... Alexi, I'm gonna come to you. Who else would you throw into the ring as the greatest innovator? Uh, I'm gonna go for Gopi. I feel like this guy has been there with Tapson, creating a lot of this stuff, so I think yeah, I want to name him out there cause, just because I think he might be a bit underrated. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good pick. Like Alexi uh, says, it's like, remember back in the days, um, uh, previous coaches saying like, if, if for example, Gop or someone plays the same position as you, you should definitely watch it because he's not going to just be relying on like a good aim. He's going to be relying on like 
uh, good positioning and uh, movements and uh, how to use his grenades properly and stuff like this. Okay, Phelps, is there anybody else that you'd throw into the mix? Yes. Probably my inspiration for play CS, it's Fur. He, he creates space, he push every every time. So I think Fur is a one of the best of the players that they change the CS. Well, thank you, gentlemen, so much. And thank you for bringing out um, some really you know, diverse picks. I think we've covered a lot of range of you know, different types of innovation in CS. So thank you very much for joining us for The Greatest Innovators, brought to you by Coinbase. Team Denmark versus the Dream Team going head to head on the new ground of Anubis. We're almost ready to be entering the server. But before we do that, it's time to welcome the teams onto the stage. Let's talk. What does it take for a crowd to be legendary? Is it when you cheer for your home team like crazy? Is it when you show up to the venue for one personality, one player? Is it about the numbers? Let me tell you something. It is not. It's when you cheer for your home team like crazy, but you still love the other teams because you're a fan of CSGO. It's when you show up like today even when your team lost, because it doesn't matter. The show wouldn't be the same without you, and you know it. It's when you lose your mind, when you know what these legends are capable of doing on the stage, because they sacrifice everything they have for those split-second decisions. Just for one second faster, you know they're legends. And you too can be a legend today, Denmark. Let me ask you, are you going to be silent today? Are you going to be quiet? <laughs> And why is that, let me tell you. Are you worried about tomorrow because you have to work? You have to go to school? You have a date? You have anything? There is no tomorrow. So when you see someone clutch today, scream. Because there is no tomorrow. When you see a diffuse there in the middle of a smoke as bullets are flying in, you just scream. There is no tomorrow. And why is that? Why is that Denmark? Because my Denmark, stands proud as one of the best crowds in the world. My Denmark is built different. And that's why I'm gonna ask you this, Denmark. Denmark, let me hear you right! This one is for you, Denmark. <sighs>
Danish soil inside our Royal Arena. We're going to have some fun with some of your favorite Counter-Strike Danes. These guys are going to put Denmark on their back and soak up your energy, feed off your cheers, and bring glory to the country. You know these guys. You know what they can do. And you best believe they want to represent their country in style. And they are joined by a very special guest, a man who gets to shine and try his best on this stage. Denmark, give it up for your team. It's Team Denmark! Now you guys at home decided who Team Denmark would face. This is the dream team that you decided on our Class TV channel. You decided who would face this team and you decided to make it very hard. Look at these players. It'll be no easy task. This is one star-studded roster. There are legends here, and some of them may have not made the stage, but they will put on one hell of a performance. And they have also got a special guest joining them to shine among some of the best. This is the Dream Team! Here they stand, Dupree. Four times major champion, a legend of the scene. KOB, at 18 years old, you were a major champion and a major MVP. Esther Tag, man, you're always here doing the damage. You're the one who can fill any role and make it work. And now you've got to make it work for Denmark. Gage, multilingual, multi talented. And also, look at your jawline. You're just a Greek god, baby. Look at you. Well, look at that handsome man. And then we got our young man at the end here, Sukun. You are the brother of Krizen. You are the up and coming future star of Denmark. 14 years old. On the dream team, it's simple. The great one, the greatest player of all time. Manasi, the baby goat, the fastest orb in Counter-Strike. Yakinda. The first man in, destroying bomb sites, and an anime enjoyer. I love you, brother. Now, Rez, for you, surely, in this lineup, you won't be picking up the orb. You should surely have the rifle in your hand. And Rubens, you are among some of the greatest, but it is time for you to shine. Are you guys ready? Is everyone in this arena ready? <laughs> Debris, you've been watching from home. You've seen this crowd, you know what it's like. Are you impressed with your, your fellow countrymen? Yeah, of course I am. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a great joy to see so many Danes and so many people coming to watch uh, this, uh, this game. And obviously not only the show match, but also for all the previous games and the one to come. So yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. Now, these players, right, that were picked to go against you, they didn't give you an easy time, did they, mate? No, not at all. I mean, we're going up against some of the best players in the world. And obviously, we're here to have some fun. So I hope we're going to have some fun and we're going to create a great atmosphere for the, for the grand finals coming up. So uh, I'm actually here to have some fun. So I hope the rest of my team is here as well. And we have, like, uh, a lot of good people here. You know, some of us are a little bit shaky and a little bit nervous and everything, but that's fine. And we have Gate, you know, the face it hero. So we are, we're here to... <laughs> KMV, what's it like to be stood next to Dupree again, man? What's it like to be on this stage? Um, it's really nice to be here. In my opinion, this is uh, the best stage in Counter-Strike, Royal Arena. Um, this was uh, the arena for me where I have some of uh, the best uh, moments in my career. And it's always uh, great to be here. Love it. It's lovely to have you back as well. Now, Simple, there's a lot of Na'Vi fans here in the arena, but I didn't get to see you play. You're going to put on a show for them? Yes, guys. Welcome. Welcome to Royal Arena. So, yeah, we're just going to try to have fun, because sometimes we don't have fun, you know, in our official game. So probably here, we're going to take what we need. <laughs> take what we need. Royal Arena, Copenhagen, are you ready for this?
One last time for me. Raise the roof! Oh, well, the stage has been set. The show match is almost underway. I can't wait for it. The, the Team Denmark, they have got one hell of a game ahead of them, even if it's all for fun. How yeah. long is that going to last? I don't know. If I'm them, I'm a little bit upset of what I've been put on the stage up against. That's not really all that fair. No, that doesn't <laughs> seem fair at all. But um, it's not a traditional show match. There's obviously a lot going on here. So um, I guess we'll see once it all unfolds exactly who's going to be coming out on top. I love the fact that we have some of the fans in here. But they call them fans. But I mean, some of these are playing on sort of up and coming teams. I think Serbia Esports is what they said. Um, yeah, so I think yeah. I, I reckon that this is going to be really interesting. I won't rule these guys out as well. I'm sure they're going to be super hungry. Dupree's too nice, man. Dupree, Dupree's way too professional. He just opens it up. He's got a lot of nice words. He's yeah. just here to have fun. I can't be that. I can't be the situation. That only lasts for a round. <laughs> yeah, know, and then right? you're like, you know, the killer instinct takes over and you think, all right, that's it. We want to yep. try and see if we can win this one. I'm Enough sure fun. they want to. Time, time to destroy everyone. Uh, for you uh, viewers back at home as well, make sure you're tuning into Blast.TV if you want to get a, a hand in this. We've got a lot of different situations that we can actually introduce into the players, a lot of different changes we can make from round to round, and you get a vote on them all. Every few rounds, we'll introduce a new X Factor into the game, so you can have a lot of fun having an influence on the game and interacting with how the players actually compete with each other. Uh, so yeah, get into that action. Yeah, some of them I think introduced in the teaser a little bit earlier, and some of them not. So I'm very curious uh, what people are going to end up voting for and how it's going to be playing out. Good to see Kirby again. It is. He took a little bit of a break, at, you know, back playing his way into endpoint, I believe, and, and trying to get back up there again. It definitely should be possible. Um, yeah, I think, you know, maybe this is going to be surely a, a moment to revive his hunger if he needed that, you know, be back on the stage, get this feeling. Even if it's a show match, I'm sure he's going to feel like this is, you know, something you want to experience one more time. Absolutely. And over on the, uh, obviously, the Dream Team side, uh, very, very dangerous. There's a lot of offers on the on the Dream Team. <laughs> there's, there's Simple, there's Modesty, and then there's the best of them all in Res. Yeah, exactly. You did it. You've done it, Jason. <laughs> nice hype, man. I like it. You willing to uh, to make some 2023 predictions for, uh, for that one? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think he's uh, he'll probably overtake Zaiwu at the very least. Nice. All right. Write it down. Clip it out. Bookmark it. You could be able to tweet it to Jason every time this comes up. I reckon, I mean, I don't even know, we're playing on Anubis as well, so the question is, obviously some of these players will have played it a little bit more, but it's possible that some of them will be quite rusty on it, have no idea what's going on. Yeah, some of the angles are going to be, uh, it might look a little bit sloppier, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more grimy, and uh, obviously not going to be as familiar with the map, although Simple has come out publicly and said that he really enjoys Anubis, that he thinks it's a good map. Yeah, so that's all you need, get to playing, get to know the map. It's going to be interesting to see how that changes the landscape for professional Counter-Strike once a map like Dust2 comes out and you have a new one coming in. Yeah. And who's going to be the best at it early on? But um, we'll see. A lot of Orpers. I don't know. There are some places on this map that you could probably put that into use, but shouldn't have shouldn't have three of them, obviously. I'm not, not going to lie. This is, uh, this is going to be my, 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 first, uh, my first glimpse of Anubis being played in any level of, of competition. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how things work. All right. We're learning on, <laughs> yeah, the, on the fly. We're learning with everyone at home as well. That's wonderful. Imagine being one of these new fans, these fans as well, stepping in. The, the fifth player just kind of pulled out of obscurity. Now you're sat next to Simple. Now you're sat next to Monacy. Now you're <laughs> sat next to Dupree. Yeah, what an experience to, uh, to have. It's Ruben on the one side playing for the Dream Team. And Sokor over on the other side going to be... Got to be switching up. I mean, I heard I heard him talking about these guys in the green room. They're not they're not unknown if you're playing around in the Danish scene, right? So okay. there's some of these people that you you run into and you think, oh well, this is going to be easy, and they're just really really keen, 14, 15 year olds, and you can't shut them down. Everyone's had that experience. Yeah, I think so. That's uh, it's part of uh, growing old. <laughs> Probably. Well, maybe this will be the beginning of something big for one or both of these players. You're not going to get a better experience, a better set of uh, a test to see if you can handle it. Speaking of experience, look at Captain Dupree over here hyping the boys up. He's getting everyone in the mood. Very vocal, sitting in the middle, taking over the in-game leader duties. A chance for him to maybe to be flexing that AWP again, like he's always wanted to. Yeah, actually, it was, I think it was actually in the Royal Arena where we it first was. were just like, oh dear, like that was the very first time in Royal Arena. <laughs> <laughs> Almost having an accident, but it's all good. 
It was, that's true. Probably hard for Dupree to convince Saiwu to step away from that weapon and, and give it to him instead. I think that's going to be a difficult discussion going that's forward. A, that's a tough argument to make, for sure. Absolutely is. But if he does really well in the show match, then maybe... Yeah, this is where he gets to prove it. This is where he gets to take it over moving forward. All right, last bit of setup is going on. But yeah, they've got the, everything stacked against them. Somebody like Yakinda, I mean, is he going to be able to switch off the, the crazy aim and just have a good time? chill out, have a good fun time on Anubis. I don't I, I'm I, sure he's going to be hunting. Yeah, I don't think it's a switch. I think it's just always on with him. He's, he's a little bit crazy. But, I mean, that's the fun thing about the, uh, about the Dream Team. There's, there's some showmen on that team. We know Simple likes to get amped up when he's on the stage. Yakinder's the same way. He likes to get a little personality in his game as well. So I mean, it's, it's going to be dangerous. He's got Flash over there and Monacy. Yeah. It's going to get wild. Are you going to make a prediction on this one? Ooh. Because you told me in the green room you were going for the Dream Team. <laughs> Putting me in a tough spot? I see how it is, Jason. Definitely, definitely going with Team Denmark on this one. There's no doubt in my mind that they're going to be able to win it. Okay. And you know what? If they're starting to fall behind, we have all kinds of tricks, Jason. Remember the fan vote? You never know what could happen. True, true. There's, there's some X factors that we're going to be thrown in there. I'll just say, I don't think Team Denmark has a single chance of winning this game. You know, speaking of predictions, uh, we did... We did skip those. We have some here. So there you go. Got a whole... It's only three of them for, for Team Denmark there. The rest are going with the Dream Team. And down at the bottom, obviously, for the Grand Final. That's a difficult one to pull. I really am not sure. Obviously, FaZe won the first time they met, but... Um, I don't know, Heroic, their second time in a Grand Final here? Yeah, well, FaZe hasn't lost a Grand Final yet in this year. I'm, so I'm not, I'm not really going to, I'm not voting against them whatsoever. They were my pick coming into this event to just have a crazy kind of blow up and just breeze through the tournament. And I'm going to sit on that one. Look at Maniac and Pimp, though. Different finals predictions. It's all going to come down to that. Ooh, yeah, that's true. There is, a, there is a way that could be a little bit spicy at the end. Those are lovely hats. They're ready. Those are lovely hats. And the national anthem earlier. That was sick. Yeah. That actually, that was great. That was really that good. Fired on, me on electric up. guitar. You love that? It's never a bad time. But yeah, I reckon, um, I reckon it's going to be a really, really good grand final. I've no doubt that Cadian and crew will want some revenge for what happened earlier. And uh, they're going to get a chance. And they better be super ready and awake. Phase proved yesterday they were good, even in comebacks. Hard match, obviously, but they made it. Yeah, you had that phase that, that kind of gave you a glimpse like they were going to lose it and drop it and came right back. And uh, the, the phase that Benzema doesn't break, they're, they're here full force in this tournament. They've had a couple yeah. of opportunities to kind of slip up, and uh, they've overcome all of them. So that's, that's really, really cool to see. Obviously, Navi, unfortunately, taking an early exit, not making it to the Royal Arena stage. But we get simple still. Yeah. You can't go an event without having him on stage. He's hung around, and we appreciate it. I'm happy to see some of the NIP players as well. Obviously, he's super tough to, to end up in a loss there, but um, they did show much more than I think most, much more than I was expecting. Absolutely. Um, so I think they could be very proud, and it's cool to see them stick around for the show match. I definitely like that. Now they're playing against each other, which is also funny. So Yeah, Reza, Reza versus Aztec. Yeah. That's, that's a cool matchup. Let's see. I want to get them in a 1v1, see how that one goes. <laughs> that's going to be bragging rights for a while in practice. Yeah, exactly. You want to have that just a little bit more. Ooh, the GOAT. He's not wrong. The man is not wrong. How's everyone doing in the Royal Arena? Are we got enough beer out there? Where's the guy building the beer tower that we saw yesterday? Yeah, we need that back. That crumbled, didn't it, yesterday? Yeah, it fell apart. That was a shame. That's a real shame. It is. I don't know. Yeah, it's like 3.30 in Denmark. That's beer time on a Sunday. That's beer can You can justify that, no problem. For sure. The Lord's Day. Oh, they were all set up. Just getting the last config on the way. Finishing touches. I'm sure this game can start out nice, and it could start out friendly, and it could be all fine, but any team that gets a lead, it's just going to trigger the other team immediately to be like, okay, no more messing around. Yeah, there is going to be a moment, isn't there? Someone goes up to like 5-0, 6-0, 6-1, and then, you get, then it kind of the, everything changes. The whole dynamic will change. That's generally how it works. Well, Dupree captaining the team in the middle. He'd better be able to bring some really, really good war speeches. Dupree usually more the joker of the team, you know? Funny guy. I know, now he's put into a serious position. Yeah. He's to lead the next generation, try and inspire them to <laughs> take on Simple and want to see and and the rest. That's, that's a lot. You have to give... Cadian levels of excitement to, to get there. Absolutely. He's going to have to be a lot of energy spent for Dupree. 
Yekinder here, just chilling. Final moments, finding his center. Getting the last memes out on social media? Yeah, Bobby. exactly. Can't be missing those. What did, uh, what did they call gay? Didn't, it, face it, superstar or something like that? Yeah, there's Is that a, a compliment or an, <laughs> that seems like a sore loser, you know? That does seem like a backhanded compliment. Yeah. It feels like someone's lost some face-it games too. But the then game. he made up for it. Then he talked about his jawline and called him a Greek god. So, I mean, you know. All right, yeah. He smoothed it over. That was, that was well done from Banks. Yeah, a little bit of everything. It's not bad. Not bad at all. We're not that far off, ladies and gentlemen. We're almost time to get into it. Well, let's see. Let's get an early, let's get an early vibe check for the, uh, for the grand finals while we're waiting. How many of you in the crowd think FaZe is going to win today? Okay. All right, how many of you guys think Heroic is winning today? It's like a little bit of a 50-50, I think, Jason. No, that's, that's firmly for Heroic. <laughs> Let's not give it that. They're all, out, they're all out for Denmark today and everything. Well, listen, I believe the game is about to be ready. Show match is underway. We're on any views as well, so... A map that we haven't really seen played before on the stage, but we certainly will going into the future. This will be exciting. Team Denmark versus the Dream Team. Let's get ready. Copenhagen, make some noise! All right, baby. Inaugural pistol round of Anubis. Oh my lord, we've got revolvers. Hell Right out yes. of the gate. That's three revolvers and two Glocks, but the dualies on the other side. Quite a different rate of fire, Mercy! Oh no, he's blowing them up! No mercy whatsoever from the bridge Give him the down ace. into the water. Don't you dare kill this last player. Let Modesty go after it. Gade's at least gonna get a plant. Yeah, you have to do that. We're gonna call this the bathhouse. Well, don't think he's gonna have time for any bath right now. Monacy's jumping for it. Oh, there's the pass! They're just sniping the trying you make him use all the bullets. They want to knife him at the end. Oh, nice! The spin around is there, and Team Denmark will take the pistol. <laughs> all right, fair play. Everyone's here for fun. This is, this is filthy. I got two guns, one for each of you. <laughs> two, two, three. He's losing his mind already. This is great. Oh, they wanted to knife him to get the ace. <laughs> look at this. Not impressed at all. He took them all down. Now look at this. Sawnoff, MP5. More revolvers that come on. The R8. It's about time that we saw the R8 in play a little bit more. I appreciate it. And look at this. I'm moving over. Ooh, up the middle, across the bridge. Yeah, but through canals, you kinder. There's a long way to get back up there, though. Oh, listen oh. to that revolver as well. He's coming the whole time. That's Ruben. And another one from Rez. Much underrated. Four on three as the bomb goes down again in the bathhouse. That's the A bomb site. Son of shotgun. You've been requesting this weapon, Jason. He doesn't have the skin for it, admittedly. That's the problem. Oh. You don't have the Kraken skin. It doesn't have the same impact. He Gate better be the hero again, but he's flanked from behind, and the Dream Team steals it away. I think that's three kills with the R8 in this round, so... Yeah, if there's any motivation to bring it back into pro play, I think this is, this is going to seal it here today. I think it's underrated. Got some cowboys on Anubis. Think about how much psychological damage you do getting taken down by an R8 in an actual official match. You don't, you don't ever want to be the person who's no, on the receiving end. You don't want to be that, that, that side of the embarrassment and the shame. Well, it's a very even start now. They got deep in there, across the bridge. I mean, once you're in there, you could go anywhere. You can split both sides, but Ooh. hold on! The fans have voted, and this next round will have limited gravity, but I believe they're still deadly accurate in the air. So jumping is, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna so. have a laser sight up there. You can jump and not, look at this. Oh no, he's so quick in there, trying to look over the map. Oh, look at it, they're all airborne, but they should be able to shoot. There we <laughs> go, to free. Uh, he doesn't know he's getting shot for us at all. He can get dropped. He thinks he's safe down there, but he's airborne above him. Dupree here to shut it down. It's so close. He missed a couple of shots. 
And now it's just S tag left. He's coming in with a ridiculous flank. Is he really going to try and throw? This flashbang is going to go to the moon. That's not even. It's too much. He's at the obelisk, getting one wall. That's trying to knife him. <laughs> it's just so good. And there's the stab. Mid air. He cut his parachute. And it will be the dream team to pick up a second round. And of course, it's simple with the knife at the end of the day. We know he loves a good knifing. <laughs> so, so absurd. P90 is quite the weapon to have for that as well. Yeah, with laser sights on it. Yep. Infinite bullets. It's all fun and games. Not bad. Not at all bad. But Team Denmark definitely need to do a little bit more. And that feature is one of the features you can vote on at Blast.TV. So make sure you get I think we have like six or seven more different features that we can throw into the game whenever we feel like it. So make sure you're in there voting. Nice shooting from S-Tag. Yeah, he's not asking for any votes. He's just, <laughs> just taking all the kills. Double for him, both of them headshots. The sucker's gonna be going down, that's unfortunate. Simple yeah. there, on the other side. Welcome to playing against the best. Yep, yeah, probably a very different experience, one that you're not easily gonna be able to have. They're still fighting him here. All oh, right, comes out. Look at the damage. Oh, he's done some work, look at this. He's <laughs> half winding it up to reduce the amount of time that it takes to fire it. He's an expert. Ruben is now on his own, again. The other fan player that we have on the stage playing for the Dream Team. So now he's got some of the best players in the world watching him saying, I wonder if this guy's going to be able to actually do this retake. One versus two, Dupree and Kebby on the other side. Players no doubt that he's been watching and just looking up to for a long time. And now he's up against them on the stage with all of the pressure on. And they're baiting him out. Smoke is up. He doesn't have a kit, so this will be a very long time. Might have run out almost already, yeah. Go for the 10 second, trying to see if he can flash his way through. They're stabbing him. He just wants to avoid getting stabbed, and I can't really blame him. At least he can make this expensive if the bomb goes. Oh, the spray is good. He gets another couple of kills, and they lose all the rifles on that T side. Back and forth, I don't think anyone, no one's won two rounds in a row. Quite a little battle. This is, uh, this is nice from Aztec. Look at this shot. The follow up, same position. Rez steps into the plate, but. I actually thought Simple with the revolver was going to pull this one right back. It looked like it. <laughs> they are having a really good time, which is uh, what we're here for. Round number five. A lot of Mac 10s. Still that scout on S tag. I love it. This is how I want to play as well. The mobility, the freedom. You have all the excuses if you fail around. You say it's just a scout. It's not an AWP. It's not my fault. Oh, Simple's going hunting. And four in hand, and he's got the first. S tags cleaned up from a tag for Monacy. A little bit of a boost up to get through the window. Yeah, but the bomb is planted. Bathhouse about to turn into a steam house. And that bomb goes. Ooh, a little bit of a trade with the Deagles. Still got some R8s in play. They're pretty quickly there, but once again, they don't have the kit. It's Mac 10s. These Mac 10s can do some work. Flashbang in. There's the peak. Didn't get it done. Dupree's the last one left. Does he know it? <laughs> He just wanted to throw the Molotov. That would have worked. It would have worked as well. There's no smoke, there's no kit. That actually would have probably won the round. He couldn't let go of it in time. Oh, that's devastating. He had the right idea. If he would have known the lineup like on any other map, that would have been no problem. But obviously he doesn't. So the Dream Team will take a one round lead. Yeah, they're in a good position. Money's Ooh. with them. Okay, so the fans have voted. And let's see what the result is behind this. This has all happened over on Blast.TV. So just take a look. Oh no, they picked the dream team to get smoked off. Well, best of luck in that booth. Of course they did. They had to. What are you supposed to do with this? <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> this is going to be very hard to see what's happening inside. Yeah. <laughs> you can see some of the players further down just disappear in the smoke. So try and play around like this and see what is actually going to be happening. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's horrifying. Now, it's a great time <laughs> if you wanted to fool the admin because they can't see anything either. Yeah, so, this, this is when you do it. Yeah. If you want to do some kind of illegal communication here, then it's time for it. Yeah, this is definitely not going to make it any easier to play. <laughs> I'm glad they picked the dream team. Yeah, team I like Denmark it. needed it. It just lingers as well, doesn't it? It just sits there. It stays in there and it gets in your <laughs> eyes. Ooh, Dupree, it's Creek. It's back. It's back, baby. The Creek meta. And they have triple nades in the middle. Have they brought strats to the show match? We've seen it before. 
Yeah, not the first time. Team Denmark hunting for it now. Four and five. And all grouped up in the middle. Cade outside of the B-bomb site. The obelisk over on the other side of the map. Ruben gets put into play. Makes up a couple of footsteps here. And this tag, yep, ready and waiting. They're cleaning it up right now. Oh, the smoke round completely destroying the Dream Team. That's great. What a start. That ties it back up again. Team Denmark not letting go of that easily. With a little bit of... A little bit of a, of a thumb on the scale for Team Denmark by the fans, but that's how we designed it. Rez. He's got this. Shotgun. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They're going to try knife him. Auto shotgun. They are trying. Boom, boom. Oh, he's picking him up. This is great. <laughs> Running out, though. Knife comes out. He doesn't know. Oh, he's done. right on the other side. Smoke's not going to help you. <laughs> oh, great. What a way to get Pawn into this. Stage knifing Rez in front of the home crowd. What a memory. Well, the smoke's cleared. At least they have that going for him. <laughs> nice honorable duel from Rez, but he never knew the position of the last. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Oh, man. Yeah, what a good time. Here we go, round seven. This tag is fully committed to the scout at this point in time. He's just, that's all he's buying. Dupree is there with him, so the rest of the team has become infected. Scouts all around. That's the bomb that drops into the water. Now Denmark's going to have to run and try and retrieve it. And yeah, now it's getting a little more serious. We're smoking off choke points. Shotgun in hand for Ruben. There's a deagle cleanup for Modesty. He's going for it. Boom! What a headshot. Blowing up Dupree, Seuss yes. is out, he wants to get close, he's got the right idea. Nicely done, Ruben, that's the kind of stuff we like to see. And now, no scoping, jumping, and knifed again, the second time for Simple. On stage, he's here to slice up the Danes, and he's doing a good job at it. Yeah, he's looking for it each and every time. Oh, this is fantastic. Those are my kids. Are they? Yeah, Walter and Nana. Nice. <laughs> Having a good time and enjoying the show. Way to go. Eating some chips. Yeah. Wait, did you think I was just going to say that? Random <laughs> children. I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that says about our relationship, Jason. But let's, not, let's not think about that any longer. Let's just leave that aside. We'll just leave it hanging Slightly there. awkward, but, sure. uh, but fair enough. That's what I'm here for. Okay, little uh, teaser over the top of the smoke. Care be looking for anything. Now we're getting sweaty. Yeah, boosts inside of smokes. Team Denmark, I mean, they are around down. They could probably feel the pressure. I'm gonna try and see if they could get something done. Although they've managed to let Monacy walk past all the way into T-spawn practically. Oh, he's found a couple of players here. What a delight for Monacy. Dupree goes down and Monacy is here to clean it up. Oh, this is it's an easy pickoff. They let him slip right past in the smoke. They try to catch him, but he's hungry and he gets another one. Yeah, nicely done. That was clean. That was precise. S-Tag again left alone. Another chance for Simple to get a knife. Tech 9 in hand. He's looking for the push. Oh, S-Tag wants to do it as well. That is the official sign. Yeah, but That's he... the channel. Oh! <laughs> he lied! He <laughs> deceived them! Oh. Oh. Dishonor on the stage. But... Like a true Dane. Yeah, like a true Dane. We do have... A little bit of a replay. This is it. <laughs> oh, great done. But now we have a little bit of a, t of a clip coming in a team speed clip. So let's listen in. <laughs> Close to B. One more, one more. Above you. Oh. <laughs> I want to have to find the spot. I, he wasn't there. <laughs> Wait, oh, he's, 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 he's next to risk. He's next to risk. Nice, nice. He's in B. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, nice. Oh! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Let's go. Nice. nice. Celebrating that earlier knife kill from Simple, mid-air. That's probably something we're not going to see again for a long time. And he called it. I like the way he calls his knife kills. He really, he really hunts it down. Oh, All right. No. 20-second bomb timer. If that right. bomb gets planted, you got no chance of defusing. Oh, that's super rough. Internally as well, think about it. 
If there's any round that Team Denmark, we're going to go for a bomb plant, this has got to be it. Yeah, this is the whole group up in rush A, rush B. That's all you got to do. Just get that bomb planted, and surely the round's yours. They've had quite a few of them, so... Is there a kit being... Yep, there are three kits in play in this round. That's oh, my gonna be, oh, my God, how are they here so quickly? What? <laughs> oh, he's <clears throat> no <throat> slipping through. That's disgusting. Oh, it's way too fast. There's absolutely nothing they can do about this. Knife is out, Ruben gets stabbed, and this round is almost... He actually is on the bomb. Monacy trying for it again. <laughs> the stab is in. All out chaos. Team Denmark faking the knife fight into a no-clip bomb plant. Man, there's nothing they won't do here to try and win. I didn't even know you could do that. They just flying through the walls. That's actually wild. There's the zoo skill from Estag. <laughs> well, they needed it. They were down around. <laughs> oh, so you're just using it the floor? You almost did. <laughs> Absolutely next level. Not far off. Much needed round for Team Denmark. They were starting to fall behind a little bit, so... Yeah, caught back up. Five. It was a little bit of a streak there for the Dream Team. This might get some momentum going back in their favor. It might upset some of the players on the Dream Team, though. I mean, you've got to be careful again. Yeah, the, the, having a good time. the no clip is a tilt factor, isn't it? Unload the whole thing. Don't stop. A man after my own heart, Jason. There's nothing, nothing like that feeling. It almost never works, but it still feels good. It does make you feel powerful. For all those bullets. Absolutely. Ooh, flashbangs in. Flashbangs in. Here they come. Shotgun in hand. Oh, Too shit. many players oh, to deal with. Oh, it's the dev. Gate is unloading again after the reload. And now it's your Kinder's turn. But the revolver, what? simple, fans the trigger. And it's only Kirby left. The bomb is planted. Kirby, he gets one more, tries to get the lineup. No scope on the smoke, the defuse is in. Oh no! No scope headshot to save the round for Team Denmark. That doesn't really get any closer, does it? No. Well, nice clutch from Kirby up on the big stage again. That was about as close as it can get. <laughs> I love this. I like this. This is style points for simple. That secondary fire. Ooh. Underrated as well. Yeah, breathe it in, enjoy it while you can, because now the game is tied up, and I'm seeing five AWPs picked up on the Dream Team side. They had all of the money in the world they got, to buy this. They got every opera you could want, pretty much. Headlined by Rez. Exactly. You're really making a case for him. I like it. Standing Rez. Oh, but they run into the T side. There's three of them. Oh, no. That's a lot. Early trade. T-side auto sniper. Maybe that is the secret weapon that we've all been overlooking all these years. Yeah, maybe not. I think Simple is the secret weapon we've all been watching for all these years. All right. Ruben, you're up next, baby. Show us what you got. Oh, look at this double lineup. There's no getting past. Simple not happy with uh, the earlier disrespect, the fake Zeus, the no clipping. Now he's back. Two in this round already. You know that they're somewhere. Do they know the angles? Kevin. Oh, he almost tried to play a little bit of a trick then. Could have catch Ruben. Now just has to deal with simple and res. 50 seconds though. Plenty of time. Nade on one side. HE. Yeah, he's got the right idea. Fakes it. Res, is he gonna bite? Almost does peek into it on the shoulder. Kebu. They need this round on Team Denmark. That dream team still looks way too terrifying, and he's going to try and walk out of them. Okay, we sneak oh, through. Oh, but he gets caught. Rez able to pick it up. It's a very drawn-out battle, and a, maybe one of the first glimpses of something a little bit more serious. Yeah, yeah I know. really try and win that round. It's really clamping down, isn't it, in those situations? Everyone's taking them serious now. Here we go. We all know what this means. Shotgun Bonanza. The Noob Tube, the Nova, the Sawed Off. It's all coming out to play today. They have five auto shotguns on the T side, so <laughs> that should be probably a little bit loud. And um, yeah, if you get close enough, you're gonna get chewed up. What's your favorite shotgun, Jason? Ooh, I, I like the sawed off, I do, I enjoy it. Okay. Someone better have the Kraken skin or else I'm upset. Sawn off, but only if you have the Kraken, is that how it works? <laughs> exactly. All right. 
Well, they've let you down. You actually have nine auto shotguns in play <laughs> and one Mag 7. What a ridiculous scene. Not a single shot off, shot off in sight. Oh. Well, here we go. Yekinder is oh. the defender up first. He's behind his smoke. They're going to jump right through. And oh, oh, he's got one. Trade it immediately. They charge the bridge. And down in the water below, there are a couple of CTs hanging out, but they can't really do anything from that position. Three versus four. They're trying to see if they can run boost their way back up. Oh, I think they failed it. That's an interesting attempt. Ruben, he tried this earlier. Oh, Ooh. yeah, he thinks better of it. That's a great shot. Shotgun's his weapon. Soccer taken down. Ruben once again getting flanked out, though, and Gade's not going to miss that. 2v3, modesty and simple. What is it, the true goat and the baby goat? That is, yeah, that's what Banks said. I like it. Dupree setting up for a potential bit of disrespect. They're baiting it out. Oh, Nade, you've got to be really careful. That could have blown them up. If that had been angled off, here they come, trying to run down simple, and he won't take it. Big couple of kills there. And now it's tag. Molotov. Yeah, they know. Oh, what a grenade. He's going to throw one right back, and there's no smoke on the other side. So Monacy put under a lot of pressure here. Flashes through. He runs into the flames to pick him up, and he's back out again. Oh, he's another Molotov time. Went down. He has the second one. It's a kid, oh, though. Oh, no. Yeah, he goes straight oh, oh, for my it. Lord. What a calculation. Oh, my Lord. How did he know? All right, Flash. All right, Flash, we see you. I want to see... I want to see the meme with the guy with all the equations and the trigonometry in front of his head. That's honestly <laughs> just thinking, like, oh, how... Okay, I've got time. I can't I can do believe it. it. That doesn't even make sense. Tick does, like, how much damage per second? How much is left? How much health do I have? Like, I'll do all the math in my head, and I'll just run into views. What a ridiculous way to win a round. Seven to five. Two round lead for the Dream Team. I've seen him do math in real life. He actually is that quick. Well, there we go. Now do this math for me. This four, four Negevs. <laughs> How many bullets? Didn't expect that coming through the smoke. Nope. <laughs> Just looking at the smoke. Why would you peek into it? Sokka, this is crazy. You lost your mind. So dangerous. Gotta be careful, smoke's about to evaporate. Yep, they're coming for him. And it's the M4 in play. Monacy, he's here to win. Couple of kills. He doesn't want to let this opportunity go to waste. Dupree and Kirby are left with two AWPs up against four players on the Dream Team. This does not look good at all. No, not really. But I mean, you know, in this situation, look, they're starting to push here. Kirby's gonna get an opportunity on Simple for sure. Oh, and he missed the opportunity, and he gets punished. <laughs> Love tap from the R8, but it's not enough damage, not quite. Even if it is packing quite a bit of a punch, this is starting to look increasingly worrisome. The Dream Team at least going to be winning the half. They're up to eight, two more rounds left. I'm seeing all P90s. You got to admire that. I mean, half as many bullets of the Negevs on the other side. It would be better if you were playing on a server with 500 ping. That's where the P90 really does its work. That's where it shines. Yeah. Those rare situations. Yeah, you need like massive lag so no one can actually see anything, but you just keep shooting. Okay, well over to the bathhouse we go with all these P90s. Two Negevs lying in wait. Okay, this is a test I never thought I was going to see. Oh, the P90, the rate of fire is so huge. Simple, trying to see if he could do it. It's not going to be working out. I want to see. Is he using Ooh, right over. He is disgustingly quick, but the P90s are taking the bomb side. Oh, my <laughs> God. He's so stupid. He tries again, but Gade will take him down. And now it's a question of whether or not Rez and Yakinda could go on a bit of a retake. He's going to find that one. Not at all bad. I think that's the M249 as well. And the defuse is coming in. Nine on the side of the I Dream know. Team. Denmark had a hot start. They're falling apart. It's come crumbling down. They need that leadership from Dupree in the middle. They need something from somebody. P90s weren't the answer. Auto shotguns weren't the answer. That's so quick. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Welcome to the pros. Final round of the first half in its Zoomer Madness. This one should benefit the Dream Team with all the snipers they've got down the list. We just saw Modesty put on a show. Two scouts, three auto snipers. 
Scouts. Okay, is that a little bit of disrespect? Saying, you know, you guys are losing in front of the home crowd. Like, we'll buy some scouts and give you a chance maybe to do something at the very least. Got to give you a shot here. T-side auto snipers again. I don't know. Filled in by three scouts of their own. We saw Estag with a nice, beautiful round with one of these bad boys earlier. Yeah, he was doing fine work. Ridiculous. Oh, okay. Dak, dak, dak on the other side. No scope, headshot through a smoke. That's and how it's done. Okay, they're all leaning back as well. Oh, they're having a great time. <laughs> Lounging on the stage, no bunch stress of, at all. Bunch of JDMs in here. That's exactly right. Oh, another hunting for him. Rez put under pressure. It's another no scope. <laughs> oh, in God's name. Okay, well, Dream Team just says we don't want to play with it. We don't want to play with the scopes. And they're losing for it. Yeah, they are. Giving it up a little bit. Simple's on his own. They, I've never seen anyone lounge that hard, and he's still doing it. It <laughs> can't be easy. I don't know how you can see the monitor at this rate. Simple's trying to no-scope a little bit of his own. Getting hunted down by Sucker. Oh, it's Kirby instead <laughs> getting the kill. So another round at the end. A little bit of a break before the second half comes up. Welcome everybody, I am Maniac here and I turned myself into a TV host, finally. My childhood dream happening right here at Blast. We're playing The Right Price, presented by CS Money and I have in my company, Nico Twist and OC. I am going to give you a skin with its condition and a real world item and I need you to tell me which is the most expensive of the two. Round one, quick fire. The first one who feels like it, you can buzz, miss it, we move on to the next item, no points being won. First question. An AWP, a Theris, minimal wear, or a cup of coffee? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nico got it first. Yeah, I thought it was Nico. I'll go with up, man. There you go. That's the first point for Nico. He's got it. Now, if the set has survived, I think it's good. <laughs> so I press oh, the he really wanted to be first, man. <laughs> it's good, it's good. I like, I like it's good. Try too hard. <laughs> it's exactly what you need. A USPS, Cortex, well-worn, or a bunch of bananas? I'm gonna say a bunch of bananas. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Nice. You're absolutely right. That's two dollars. <laughs> so. Last one. An AWP wildfire, field tested, or a gaming mouse. <laughs> you were first. I was a gaming mouse. There you go. That's a point <laughs> for you as well. It's time for all in. I'm gonna give to each of you guys the same question, but the twist here, no pun intended, is if you get it wrong, you lose the value of the skin. So you have to consider it carefully. You guys ready? Yeah, that's Nico, right. I'm going to start with you. A gut knife, Doppler Sapphire, factory new, or a TV? How big is a TV? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with TV. The TV for yeah. you. That would also go with, I would go with the TV. You go with the TV yeah. as well, OC? I'll go with the gut knife. You go with the gut yeah, knife, yeah. well, for the first question, the answer was a TV. No. That's cool. cool. <laughs> Item number two, sports gloves, amphibious, factory new, or a car, an average car. I'm gonna go with the car. You go with the car? Yeah. Bro, I'll go with the gloves. The gloves for twist, okay. I think it's the gloves. It's the car. It's no oh. shot. It all comes down to this third question, last item, guys. An AWP Dragon Lore minimal wear or the AWP in-game? The minimal wear, it's still good, right? Do you think they're gonna help you? They're not gonna help you. You're in the lead, they want you to go down. <laughs> Ah, it's a tricky one. I'll go with uh, Dragon Lore. I would also go with the Dragon Lore. Dragon Lore as well. Well, that's a three for three. That is the Dragon Lore indeed. We have found our champion here at the right price. It is Nico with an incredible amount of money, way ahead of everybody. Congratulations, Nico. How do you feel? Uh, it's nice to finally win something. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure, guys. I hope you had fun, and I'll see you around. Well, we 
return from that halftime break, and the spirits are down in the Royal Arena. Team Denmark suffering from a dreadful first half, a 9-6 finish. They're letting the crowd down. You can see the reactions. The people are in despair. They want their home team to win, but it's not happening at the moment. They're not really delivering the rounds that they currently need. And it is a bit of a disaster at this point in time. They need some help. They need somebody that can step up and turn the tide for Team Denmark. Anybody willing at this point in time. Oh, but what's that? On the stage, there is a sixth man. But it's not a man at all. It's an angel instead. They have the savior. It's Niklas Benda of Danish national team fame, of Arsenal, a football legend here. And he is suiting up to save Team Denmark. What a fantastic time. Jason, will this do it? Six versus five, is it enough? This is a crazy turn of events. He started playing CS during COVID times. He owns his own CS team. He says he claims, and we put to the test, that he plays at a face-it level 10. 30 Whoa. goals in 81 games for the national team, and he's popularly referred to as Lord Bettner. Who else could do it? Yeah, they need a Lord on stage to get the job done. Six versus five, it's never been done before. Is it enough to take down the dream team? We're about to find out who better to do this. Niklas Bentner on the stage, suiting up for Denmark to try and see if they can bring it back from that nine to six scoreline. It's a tough break, no matter how you put it. They still are up against Simple and Monacy and all of the rest. Yeah, and those guys pretty much count as two players all on their own. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm excited for this one. It's a bold strategy to bring a soccer player in to save the day. <laughs> yeah, no doubt it is. I like how you, you put that in there, Jason. That's smart. Your flight's early in the morning, I hope. You can get, get out quick. All right, they're suited up. They're ready. Yeah, we've heard some claims that this is not at all his first time playing, that no. he actually does this a lot more than people might realize. Yeah, I mean, uh, why not? I like it. That, that's, that's great. I mean, we're going to put it to the test. We've heard, we've heard rumors. We've heard legend of his skills. Here we go. Second half is coming up. We've got Team Denmark versus the Dream Team. And Nicholas Bentner suited up. Julie's are out. Oh, he's hunting for it. And the team are with him. All six of them charging and looking for the kill. They're gonna find Simple. It's not a bad pickoff. Probably a little bit confusing to the dream team. Rez here in these six people coming. What is the Glock gonna do? Oh, they checked the corner. Oh, oh Estag ruined everything with that turn. Rez wanted more. Yekinder's up next. Deagle in hand. He's got a lot of targets to pick from. There's the first. That's a good headshot. But Dupree even better on the return. Bomb is planted, though. So Monacy and Ruben, two versus four still. In spite of getting a couple of kills, I know it's mad. Dupree, he goes down. Good shot from Ruben, but Bettner is back with the dollies and taking down Ruben. Monacy now creeping in. They don't really know where, but they're going to double team him while Bettner's doing the defuse. They're going to win the round. The turnaround has begun. Second half opening goes to Team Denmark. The Bentner influence. They've already got a round on the board right out of the gate. Smile on his face, and that's got to be some pressure subsiding. Yeah, just a couple of kills, you know, get that, get that mouse warmed up. Well done. All right, 9-7. You got to know as well, those face at level 10 players are the scariest. To <laughs> <laughs> Super keen and yeah, hungry. I'd rather play the pros than the face at level 10s. It's not a good time. Not a good time at all. Well, nine to seven. And second round, look at the money that they have. <laughs> Disgustingly rich. Again, I believe voted by the fans or on Blaster TV. Sucker Ooh. is taking a couple of good kills here. The young potential star, but Ruben on the other side, the other fan player that we have. And he's taken down Bentner. That's probably a once in a lifetime <laughs> experience to be able to say that. Yeah, yeah, got some kills against Bentner on the stage in the Royal Arena. Sure I did. Oh, there it is. Simple's tagged up. Oh, this is tough. Low HP on Ruben and Simple. 2v3. Oh, what a shot. There he is. There's Ruben. Two versus two now. Okay. Throwing the... Wow, they have real strategies. Ruben's like, yeah, that's great, Simple. 
I'll pick up this bomb. I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, it's simple, just covering this rotation. Going to be an easy bomb plant here. They're quite far away. Have to go back through that cave that connects to the middle of the map. In a one... Almost... Not even enough health between them to really make up for one player. Both very low there. Oh, simple close. Molotov, though. Oh, they're gonna go the other way. Ruben, though. He is there. They're all very low on health. Fakes it once. That's smart. And now could he do it again? Only this time against the best player in the world on the other <laughs> yeah. side. You're 14 years old. You're in front of the stage. He's gonna go straight for it. Oh, he spins it around. <laughs> Simple's up there, toying with him, trying to see if he can knife him, and he takes the challenge. He's like, you know what? I might lose this round, but let's see if we can fight. <laughs> and he gives it to him. All right. Fair play. That is a gentleman's play, isn't it? Yeah, out games him but just lets him know he knows how much he was outplayed, giving away the kill at the end. This is a great start for Sucker, though. Double kill, one through the smoke. You kinder and Monacy, that's one for the fridge. Not at all bad. But it is the Dream Team, once again, coming back into this match. 10 to 7 now. They're in a powerful position. And Simple's laughing. He's having a good time. That's almost a scarier thing when he's, when he's laughing and smiling and having a good time. Oh, All no. right, we're back to the moon. Lower the gravity, get the spacesuits on. Here we go. And remember, those guns are like lasers in the air. It's not like normal when you lower the gravity and you can't shoot any other guns because you're flying around. You can hear. They're going to be super accurate, so jumping is not necessarily a risk, but it can be. Could be simple flying out there with a knife somewhere. I'm curious to see what kind of guns they're going to be picking up. P90s were, uh, could, could be a thing. Yeah, they were a favorite. Uh, shotguns were, shotguns were sh showed up in the first half as well for the, uh, for the lower gravity. MP9s now. Okay. That's six MP9s for those of you keeping track at home. Nicely done. Nades deep in there. Yeah, they're doing all the work. They're getting the early kills. Three on six now. <laughs> and there's not a kill happening yet for the Dream Team. <laughs> Your kinder gets completely overpowered. Three versus one, and it's all on simple. Oh, <laughs> up from the heavens. Yeah, why didn't you check that position, Jason? Yeah, why didn't you look up there? All right, Denmark fighting back. Rudolph in the crowd. Christmas in the Royal Arena. Sounds like a good time. Nice shoot. Ridiculous scenes. Yeah, wonderful shooting. Gets him back for the clutch earlier. Yeah, revenge. Feels sweet, doesn't it? Dream Team needs to pick this one up. There well, it is. They know. They definitely know in the Royal Arena. Yeah, Dream Team's about to find out. A little bit of an aggressive move here. Kind up. It's done messing around. It's like, you know what? We can win this. AK is oh, out. Kev is so blind. And Ruben will complete the kill. S-Tag, he's feeling the pressure as well. Trying to see if he can do something. All right. Gets a little bit of a spray down. It's a good double. Dupree and Sucker are left. Two on three at the moment. But the bomb is committed. Smoke might actually help you if you're on the CT side and you have this kind of a weapon. You might just enjoy that. So yeah, put down more smokes we can shoot through. Rez crouching through on the other side. And it's Akinda holding the back. All on the young player. Unload it, baby. Now's the time. Through the smoke, they lined up, but Rez shuts them down. Denmark still three rounds back. That's time to feel that pressure now. Even six versus five. It's slipping out of their hands, slowly but surely. It's upside down. <laughs> He's got time to fix it. We'll find him. Ooh. Yeah. I was like, you, you guys have had your fun, but um, <laughs> I'm not going to let it get away with too much. This is five on six, and they're still, they're still coming in hot. Oh, Bettner's going to push. He's certainly thinking about it, isn't he? He's been doing that a fair bit. It's that heavy presence from Team Denmark on that bridge in the middle. Kind of key point on the map, obviously. There we go. Tries to push <laughs> it out, but Ruben is there to catch him. That's very aggressive. He probably didn't expect there to be three people waiting for him. Kirby's gonna find one from the side. Okay. Yakinder is spared. Spared the shame and embarrassment. Four on four, though. Good nade work. 
divine utility work. Whew, that's a no scope for the smoke. So a lot of madness happening here. They're starting to wrap around as well. There's a timer on this for the Dream Team. They really need to move right now and get that bomb planted. Kebu, there's the stab, and he stabbed simple as well. Is that a wise choice? Is that a good idea, do you think? Oh, yeah. Whenever you get the chance, you, you take it. You take the knife, and you'll suffer the consequences later. But in that moment, it feels great. <laughs> oh, no. It's Smokey once again. And the question is, which who? booth did the fans pick this time? Oh. Uh, oh, no. They've turned on Team Denmark. Yeah, it seems the tables have turned. All the voting that's been happening over Blast.TV. And in the beginning, they picked the Dream Team, but now it's Team Denmark that are feeling the pain. I feel like Dupree loves this. I feel like he thrives in these kind of situations. I hope so, because the Dream Team kind of got demolished when they couldn't see much of anything. But we'll see if Team Denmark are going to be in a better position. Oh, it looks like maybe Bender is... Yeah, he's spared. He might be spared from it. They spare the Lord. Natural force field around him. Maybe he's... <laughs> I can't even see the rest of them. It's so stupid. Oh, fantastic. Well, buckle up, because this round could be a little bit more tricky. Six versus five, but not in a position to see much of anything as the Danes will try and battle back. A two-round deficit. They're in the middle fighting. R8 has come out. All right, he's up close, and he does get the kill with it. It actually is working out. The pre on the double, and Yakinder is on his own. Vision or not, they were able to do a great job in this round. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, they just got to find Yakinder. Footsteps being made. That one's nice and easy. And this is where you see, Yakinder's just buckled it down. This is a serious game from Yakinder for, for right now, this 1v3. Yeah, probably thinking... No more jokes? No, if you're going to have a man up, then we're going to play a little bit different. Oh, he doesn't realize that Estag is right there. Oh. He's not past each other. That is scary. But now he's going to be moving quite far away. Estag moving all the way through the T-spawn. And Yakinder's taking this down through the E-connector, electric. Ooh, sneaking past. Yeah, timing is everything. Yukino's just narrowly avoiding it all. Well, this oh, is hard though. Not. Clear. Nope, not everything. Oh, he heard the scope. He heard the scope. But will he ever expect the flank? The revolver. Oh, the knife's out. He's making a run for it. The Zeus, and he gets there. Electric jousting. Oh, he had so many options. You could tell he's like the R8, the knife. All right, the taser. And eventually it works out. That's well done. Team Denmark, step it back. Oh, so close for Gade. But it doesn't quite work out. This, though. <laughs> yeah, fist pumps all around. It's a feel-good moment. And you've, and you've won a round like this, where you're staring into smoke, quite literally. Here we go. Nice shot. Oh, dear. Yeah. Well, we saw earlier what happened when Monacy started to bring that AWP into play. Nobody on the Danish side wants to see that. Denmark's within one. They have almost done it, but they're feeding themselves. Lord Bentner giving it up to Monacy. Yeah, he got a kill on the pistol round, and it's been a little bit of rough going for Lord Bentner. Oh, okay. <laughs> Simple, you knifed him earlier, and it's woken him up. He's not, he's not with it. He wants some revenge of his own. S-Tag trying to do the best that he can here. AWP as well on Gade. He's going to get the leg shot. More shots coming through. No scope by S-Tag. Still a 2 on 3, but surely no way they can retake this bomb site. Dream Team, they're all over it. Oh, Gade's running through. USB in hand. Molotov could be good, but Yakindas pushed through it. He saw the smoke he's hiding inside. He challenged it. They're going to go straight for the defuse. I don't think anyone knows. Two seconds left. Oh, knife is out. He stabs in one. But it does <laughs> not matter. Oh, wow. What a retake from Denmark. 2v3. It seemed impossible. They've tied it up. They brought it all the way back. That is about it. He actually did tag him once with a knife. He just couldn't get it a second time. All right. Look at this. So close. And then obviously style points for the R8 at the end. It's tied up. 11 to 11. Team Denmark. They're making it work. Admittedly, with a one-man advantage. But still, Sucker is there to take down Monacy. 
That's proven very tricky so far. We're on six now. Ridiculous. <laughs> Benter is there. And the crowd, they love it. Bro. Kinder. Getting a little taste of that royalty on the other side. Simple and res two versus six to try and make up for it. And Sucker will find his second kill. He's doing fine. He's up to 15 kills. Having himself a great time at the show match. This would be a 1v6. This would be an epic clutch for Simple. Ooh, spots KRB. He's there. Fade out the shot, but he just swings wide. Too fast for KRB to handle. And moves into the B-bomb site. S tags there to delay, and Simple looks for the flank. Only four remaining. They're all grouped up. Do they want to come through? Under a minute. They're all stacked over at that B-bomb site. The obelisk. Simple's going far away, probably hearing the grenades. And realizing, yeah, they're going to be coming up. Dupree's still hunting him. No one to be found on the map. Team Denmark moving as a group, more or less, except for Dupree, who's going to be running right into it. Oh, he actually does it then. He wasn't even scoped up. One versus four for 25 seconds. Oh, they're everywhere. How does he get the bomb plant here? Up oh, close and personal now. Missing a couple of shots. And more people are showing up. Bentner is the next victim. Oh, no scope on no. to Estai. Simple Do is it. in his element. He's taken down Gade as well. He's got 10 seconds. And oh. Dupree's behind him. He missed the shot and he goes straight for the bomb plant. You've awoken the beast now. And he brings oh, out the no. Zeus. They both miss it. And Dupree keeps going. <laughs> the time has run out. Oh, simple. Oh, that was almost the best clutch of all time. It was so close. I wanted it. This is unreal. He <laughs> actually, they tried, they tried to suce each other. And that was the time they needed to win the round, one or the other. <laughs> no. That would have been such a disgusting end. All right. All right. SMGs go. Brrr, let's get it on. Now, what kind of SMGs? We well, feel like we've seen a little bit of everything. I don't think I've seen a UMP yet. That could be picked up. MP9 certainly had their say. The PP Bison hasn't made an, 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 an appearance yet? Six Bisons if Team Denmark picked up. That's a lot. That's a lot of bullets. How can you fail with that many bullets? I'm sure they'd let us find out. They'd show us the way. They're in the lead now. They are in the lead. 12 to 11. All right, it's all MP9s. They are tryharding just a little bit. Got UMPs on the other hand, though. Well, when you have a man advantage, uh, you know, you kind of have to, have to win that one. Yeah, they don't want to let it go. 24th round. Let's see how much of a lead it really is going to be before the Dream Team start to wake up once again. You saw what Simple was able to do in that last round. Here we go. P90s, two of them in play. And Simple holding it and listening and calling it in, saying there's a lot of footsteps on that bridge going through middle. He hears s -tag, though. Yeah, he it's does. Good. Easy pick off, and he knows everything. Probably called it in to the rest of the team, saying they were all coming from that part of the map. The bomb, though, quite far away. Being run back through middle. Venster picking up a kill. Yeah, taking down the goat. Bomb's gone to the other side of the map. Dream Team still trying to recover. Three versus five. Well, they got the bomb plant. Big step in the right direction. He's heading the wrong direction. He is. Bless his heart. Realizing now, all right. Might be his first time on Anubis as well. Rez up close. But he does go down. Two versus five now. Monacy almost overrun, but Ruben is going to be helping out. He just keeps shooting and he gets a double. Molotov is out. Monacy on his own. Drops Bentner and now Kirby on the other side. Has the kit, has the smoke. And Monacy thinks it's already a defuse. There's a wall there. You've got to be careful. You might just bump into it. Knife is out, but he's not stabbing anybody. <laughs> Kirby is out of the smoke and looking for him. And Monacy, though, he's running away. <laughs> he super tricked him. See ya. <laughs> Completely fooled. What a good time. That's nice. That's probably his favorite career highlight. Yeah, make a little frag video just of that from different angles, you know? 12-12. Yeah, no one's letting go. 
bomb plant in a three versus six or something like that. Look at the run from Denmark. Six rounds in the second half. Modesty's got the opening, not the follow-up, and Sucker drops right on top. The Akinder's there to pick up the pieces. Yeah, they're fighting back. They don't want to give this one up easily. C set 75 from Simple to take down Kirby, and powerful drop into that whole mid connector. Yeah, that was a superhero drop. Got a little backflip thrown in there. A bomb site is compromised. The bathhouse is lost. S tag and gate to try and recover. Try and fail. I'm gonna get through res. I'm seeing a lot more people on the Dream Team right now that are looking like they really don't want to give this up easy. Gay trying to no scope his way through, but he's gonna be denied. And they're just all waiting for him. It's gonna be a one round lead here for the Dream Team, no doubt. Oh, they're coming for him. <laughs> trying to see if they can hunt him down, seuss him, and knife him, and finally he gets one more, but surely he's in trouble. And eventually the no scope return from Simple. Here we go, one round lead, the Dream Team starting to put this together. And Team Denmark, they need some help. They definitely do. Oh, here we go, boys. Get it done. Make nice. your country proud. Magnificent work. That's got to be the... It's got to be the motivation that Team Denmark need. Yeah. A little bit of a, of a reminder. The crowd is with them. It's no shoey, but it's something. Yeah. With the beer tower yesterday, we're working on it. AWP is across the board, <laughs> and Bentner gets another taste of simple. Loves that push. Oh, what a flashbang to set it up. Yeah, that one's nasty. They've used that a couple of times in this game as well. That, it's, a, it's a bit filthy. Kirby with a nice shot on the Yakinder. Rez finding more kills. Kirby blinded again. Man, this Dream Team is bringing out some sweaty flashbangs. Man advantage, three on two. <laughs> they really are. And Ruben getting some good kills as well. Not bad. I could imagine the pressure is quite ridiculous sitting on stage next to the kind of names that we have on here. Dupree is now all on his own. The question is, will they try and knife him as well? We have so far. There's one. They're gonna be closer. <laughs> <laughs> he got tricked into it. Monacy was waiting around the corner. And the Seuss will find him. Not at all bad. 14 to 12. Look at this. Oh, if it wasn't Modesty, it was the other one. He was going down regardless. Double Seussed. Oh, shotguns are back. The fans have voted. Over on Blaster TV, and they said it's time for some shotguns. Yeah, bring them back. We missed the shotgun rounds. Not as many, I think, what was it last time? It was nine auto shotguns in a Mag 7. Yeah, that's true. No and sawed off? No, a single sawn off. We need a little bit more creativity in that lineup. Get all of them out. Let's get a real test going. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, Kinder's my boy. I yeah. always knew it. He's done it for you. Well, let's see how much he can make it shine. Three Mag 7s and three auto shotguns on Team Denmark as well. Oh, my. Oh, you can die. Oh, what a rat. <laughs> what a rat. I'm here He's for using it. everything. The Seuss is there. How does he get it? Oh, How is he alive? No, I don't know. <laughs> How is Yikinda he alive? did get the kill. <laughs> oh, Team Denmark getting blown up. S Tiger saying, all right. If that's how we're going to be playing. Wait, did he just throw it away for no reason? Seuss instead. <laughs> <I've>... <laughs> There's no casting. He's <laughs> escaping. Oh, no. Oh, I'm trying to knife him, but it's too much. Oh, S Tag taking a bit of damage. Once they're in the ground, I don't think they can easily be shot at. <laughs> he's, he's got himself like <laughs> What is happening? Oh, man? and he dies. I think that's just the world eventually, the gravity killing him. Ridiculous. It's too much fun. It had to end. Face even fans, that, even that ready? wasn't enough. Yeah. They still couldn't do it. It's still the dream team. 15 to 12. There's a party up in here. That's great music. Well done. Well, three rounds. Denmark have to win in a row. How? So far, the Dream Team have just been too good. The fans voted for this lineup as well.
they picked the players that were going to play in this dream team, and they absolutely did Team Denmark dirty, didn't they? Yeah, they, they really did. Simple's got 32 kills. Monacy's at 26. Boom, nice shot from Stag. Brought low, but it's a six on four. Smokes are up. A little bit of a, actually a huge gap in that deep smoke. But they're getting the bomb on the other side. A couple of kids are in play in the round. Monacy, though, answers back against the R8. Bentner's picking up a kill on Simple. Second time, I think he's found that particular kill, but you can double take him down. Still a one versus three here. And you can uh, not being found by that one. Still alive out here, just barely. They're coming for him. There is a defuse happening in the background, so they're going to be able to pick up the round. He's just pushed out too much fire and smoke down in front. And it's another round for Team Denmark. Bentner's getting it done. If he just takes out Simple at every round, that's the job done. That's all that's, they need. That's well played from him. Here it is. Oh, the flank. There we go. Nice. That one kill. I think Simple top fracking at like 32 or 33. <laughs> so they need to get rid of him. Send Bentner out there to hunt. Oh, a lot of needs. That's some great damage. And the Dream Team looking hot at the start of this round. Dupree makes a jump for it with the shotgun. But Yakinda finds him quickly. He's about to get knifed through the smoke. He's got the right idea, but Monacy takes him down. That was almost a double spray down. Nice recovery from Gade. Four on four. Kirby behind the smoke, wants to make his play, trying to come through. Ruben's got that. Shuts him down before it can begin, and now it's all on Sucker. Sees the elbow. A little bit too early on the trigger, perhaps. Oh, it's fire everywhere. He's got 20 health left and needs some backup. Although in the middle, they're trying to do this reverse boost. Simple is adamant that it's got to be possible. And he's recruited a teammate. Oh, it's close. In the meantime, Ruben gets a kill. Yakinda picks up the other one. S tags on zone. There we go. He did it. All right. Inno innovative stuff happening on Anubis early here. Yeah, well and Simple, he's going to find it. Oh, there he wants the knife. Yeah, he oh, does. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> he wanted the battle. He wanted to see if he could get the knife fight out. Ah. Seuss on the other side, and that is it. The Dream Team taking down Team Denmark, even with the assistance of Lord Bentner. It wasn't enough. 16-13 yeah. on the stage. Even in a 5v6, the Dream Team absolutely massive. Voted on by the fans, a tough team to go against. Oh, man. They tried. They really did. But the fans, they picked too strong of a team. Absolutely crazy. We are going to go to a bit of a break, and then we'll be back with the grand final. Stay tuned. That's a heartbreak for Team Denmark on home soil. Even 6v5 pimp. Denmark couldn't get it done. Any words as a kind of your home country representative? Uh, very, wrong. very disappointed. Uh, extremely disappointed they weren't able to put up a better fight. They're losing 6v5. I, oh, I've, I've been standing on this desk many, many times and trying to, to contain myself for saying, you know, that's a disappointment, but losing this game, unacceptable. That is the epitome of yeah. disappointment. Um, I mean, Betna, obviously uh, the hero brought in wasn't heroic in terms of, you know, maybe the fragging drive, but it's the atmosphere, it's the emotions that he brings. That's probably brought a ton of charisma to that team as well. He yeah. took down Simple a couple of times. <laughs> but I think my favorite part of this whole segment is to see Moses struggle to actually cast what's happening when there's a 2v2 and it's actually a 6v4, <laughs> and they're doing quick math, and you say, it's a 4v3, I don't know. I'm, I'm. <laughs> Hands down, one of the best show matches I've ever seen. It sounds so illegal to say this is a 6v4, 6v3, yeah. but it happened in those moments. It did happen. Um, my favorite moment was the fact that we had smoke actually going off in the booths as well. It was like you're playing in the club at, you know, 3 a.m. Love that. Is that, is that before, right? from experience? <laughs> Have yeah, you had these moments? Me. Always bring my mouse club, to my keyboard just town. in case. Get some banging tunes, banging CS. That's what we had today. Thoughts, Jacob? Yeah, I'm about about clubs and yeah, I've got you know, I'm about it. Yeah, it, was, it was great. It was I great. mean, I want to get a vibe check on Anubis. This was the first time yeah. that we've seen it being played, you know, in a somewhat professional capacity. Very serious capacity. I very serious it. capacity. Yeah. I want to do this this reverse boost that Simple did towards the very end. I guarantee you everybody's going to try and do that all the time. Yeah, Simple did get it. The no clip ability around that map, you know, something I wasn't aware of. Now I know. 
I mean, for the young guns as well, the fans that managed to enter the server with the team. That is an experience of a lifetime. They must be so gassed that they did that. I wish we could have done that at the time. Yeah. You know, get on a server like that, have some good fun, some zoos around, some knives around, some smokes. I'm sure they had a really Imagine good time. Imagine you're sitting next to Monesi and you're giving him a knuckle after every round. You're 14 years of age. That's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Yeah, beautiful stuff there. Well, of course, we still have plenty more CSGO action on the cards. It's our coveted grand final coming up very, very soon indeed. It's going to be FaZe taking on Heroic. I guess a little bit of chance uh, for redemption for the Danes on both sides of the equations. Um, I do want to check in with our Maersk MVP, though, before we do go any further. Of course, we still have five names in contention of potentially lifting a, a little mini Maersk MVP trophy at the end of the tournament. Uh, the five names on our screen, there's basically the entirety of FaZe Clan. Right. And of course, Stan, he's had such an exponential performance. But Brokey, just looking at pure numbers and ignoring any of the impact he's had on the server, uh, he is head and shoulders above the rest match. Ah, Brokey's been absolutely sterile. Foreshadowing how complicated this is going to be for Heroic. The fact that we have four players out of phase in these fives. Brokey's obviously the man. His numbers have been phenomenal so far at this event. I think what really kickstarted his journey is this 16-14 victory versus Heroic, where he got 34 kills. It was absolutely lights out. And ever since the train hasn't stopped, it's choo -choo all the way. He's been doing it with the AWP, he's been doing it with the rifle, he's been doing it at very important moments. You see this game against NIP as well, down 14 to 11. He's been stepping up massively for face clan. So no doubt, as of right now, Brokey and Stown will be the two main candidates to win that MVP. And he was somebody that we were putting under the microscope coming into things, because you know he had a, an exponential start of the first half of the year, but petered off a little bit just in terms Ooh. of that impact. We're going to have all eyes on him coming into this grand final indeed. But I do want to get a few thoughts from him in our Mask MV MVP check-in interview. Brokey, for the Mask MVP check-in, you are in the running for the MVP of the Blastfall Finals. How do you feel about that? Uh, I don't really think about it that much. I'm, I'm just happy to be in the final with my team and I hope even at the whole thing. And looking at your performances from Rio and to the Blastfall Finals, it's quite a different Brokey we're seeing here. One with a lot of confidence on the table. Can you tell us about this confidence and how you brought it back? Um, I think I just put in more work. I, after the major, I went home. I just started playing. I didn't really think about the major anymore. I just focused on the next tournament and now in the final. And who's been your toughest opponents here at the Blast Fall Finals? Maybe the one that was the toughest to crack? Uh, I, I mean, I would say probably NIP. We had a hard game against an overpass and Nuke. We had to come back from 14 8, I think, and we managed to do it, and I'm happy. And just tell me one thing. Being in the running for the MVP, how do you intend to make sure that you get it here in the grand final against Heroic? I would need to win. That's how I'm going to get it. Yeah, it was a tough game indeed versus NIP, but Brokey definitely standing head and shoulders above the rest to be taking this one and pushing FaZe into that grand final. And that is going to be coming up very shortly indeed. Man, that show match definitely got us ready for some top tier counter strike that's going to be gracing the stage very soon. But first, we are heading to a quick break. And when we are back, it's FaZe taking on Heroic here in the Royal Arena. Now we're in the semi-final of the Bitway AIM Chicken Channels World Cup Edition. I'll be asking each player five questions to determine how many balls they get to shoot at a goal. After the question has been asked and after the players have answered, the players will walk up to take shots at the goal to score as many points as possible. The point that will be awarded will be a large chicken plus five, small chicken plus 10, utility plus 20. Knocking over a barrel will be minus 10, hitting me, Minus 15. All right, VSM, semi-final number one. Question number yeah. one. What is the price of a Molotov? 400. Mm -hmm. How many players is needed for a wingman match? Total or? Total. Four. Yeah. Name a German player. Thompson. Yeah. After how many rounds do you switch sides in Counter-Strike? 15. Yeah. How long is a round in competitive Counter-Strike? 1.55. Correct. Yeah. You get five. Okay. All right, Tess, you ready? Yeah. Push us on. Name two competitive maps. Test two. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's move on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Where's Ronaldo from? He's from Portugal. How much is 120 seconds in minutes? Two minutes. Name a blast host or commentator. Uh, Pip. There you go. How many timeouts is available during a match? Uh, four. Or in total? Uh, then eight. Yeah, I'll come back in. Four balls. Yeah. Best of luck. Ooh. Close, but we'll take it. Oh, 
Nice. Lucky for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> oh, close. What is, what is that even? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tess is minus five to beat. Yeah. See if I can do it. Okay. Try a little, little new tactic. Have the best start. Okay, okay. All righty. Yeah. All right, the first semi final is over. VSM minus five, you are eliminated. Tess is plus 10, you're through to the final. I think we had a target on us the whole year. I think we had been the team to beat the whole year. Right now, we're not. I think Rio was really rough on the team. We came in very confident. Then, you know, like 24 hours into the tournament, we're out already. I struggled to put a whole lot of blame on FaZe for their early exit. One thing that's led them to have such a great year is their ability to bend but not break. They've had so many close games, so many comebacks as well, and this was the first time where it really felt like that ability that got them to this point failed them. Well, I think when you go 0-3 in, in a major tournament like we did in Rio, uh, you obviously look for different reasons, but coming in as a team, practice is good, everybody has plus 100 hours, everybody was grinding at boot camp. Everything was kind of set up to be a perfect tournament for us, but ended up being a perfect storm in that sense that um, I think we came in too all confident. That kind of facet of the game seemed to be missing, that killer instinct and, and that cohesion that kept them together and kept them in games really let them down. So for whatever reason, teams came into this event and just were not afraid of phase whatsoever. I think after um, last few months uh, since the season started, we are really hungry to win a trophy. But for sure, we want to land one of these uh, blast events. To end the year on a high note, because it has been a very good year for us, but it's also how we finish it is important. And we want to get back to being the best team in the world as we dropped down the rankings uh, last few weeks. This is probably the best chance he's ever had to win on home soil. He's, he's checked so many things off of his bucket list this year that he wasn't able to accomplish in the past. It would be such a beautiful end for Kerrigan to 2022 if he's able to actually win here in the Royal Arena, win here in Copenhagen, and put that behind him as well. Add one more thing to the resume. It would mean everything for Kerrigan to win in front of the home crown here in Copenhagen. It's an amazing feeling when everyone is cheering for you, and he's going to do everything he can, I'm sure, to show the crowd who he is. It would mean a lot to me. And finishing off a good year here in the Royal Arena, uh, would be fantastic, especially have invited 50 uh, friends and family to sit in one corner and, and be like the face hooligans. So hopefully the crowd will support that and sing along with them. I think I've helped build strong talent here in Heroic because we've picked the right players at the right time. Also, we made changes uh, two times where both times people have been questioning it. Said, you are an amazing team, why would you change now? They made that roster change of bringing in Yavi instead of Refresh. And I think that roster change took a little bit longer than they really expected it to come together and coalesce and, and, and have the impact they expected it to. The first two tournaments with uh, Jabi, we really struggled uh, as a team. Losing to NAP at the fall groups was really awful feeling. I remember we had a team talk afterwards and I said that things need to change. We need to get back into the group where we work harder than the rest of the teams. Kaden is really passionate about CS and like about the team. He expects a very high level of everyone. He really brings out the best in everyone, I would, I would say. I think looking at our results since then, it's really paid off and we are at a completely different state of mind now. While they've never lifted a trophy, you can see that the potential is there. And I think now with the addition of a little bit of a new play style, a little bit of a different facet to their game, Yabi being comfortable within this roster, Kadian back to playing at a higher level as an in-game leader and as an AWP, Stown still delivering, they have all the pieces that you'd ask for for this team to contend for a championship. And now they just have to prove that they can show the level in Rio in back-to-back -back events. It's only us and Navi made the playoffs at the, the Major. So some teams have had an extra week home, you know, to rest and prepare. 
Uh, but our shape is good, and I'm uh, I'm expecting us to go far. Royal Arena is always an event that we're gonna mark in our calendars. It's it's basically our home ground, so definitely it, it adds a little bit of an extra pressure. Yeah, it means everything to play here in front of the home crowd. We are super excited. We had a little bit of that taste uh, last year where they were cheering for us, and then obviously against Astralis, Astralis was being favored. But since they're not uh, here now, we're hoping that we'll have the crowd along our side for every game. If you're a Danish Counter-Strike fan, like you might not like it, but this is the team you got to hang your hat with. This is the team at this event you got to ride or die with. So certainly at the moment and for the foreseeable future, Heroic's the only one you've got. Grand finals were secured for Heroic, but not without a fight from North America's finest, Team Liquid. And now all the kills come in for Tessas. They reached the grand final one more time. Back to back, they did it at the major. Heroic have earned the title of Kings of Denmark, but without a win inside the Royal Arena, can they really claim the throne? Now it's their chance. Now it could be their time, but their Kryptonite FaZe Clan are standing in their way. Carrigan's closer than before to a Royal Arena win, but it nearly all came to an end as they escaped a near miss to the Ninjas. Sure enough, he keeps it clean. That's oh, three oh. from Rain. With the trophy in their sight and just heroic to beat, this is set to be a showdown between Carrigan and the Danes. Blue blood bleeds royalty, but we are ready to paint the arena red here in Copenhagen. Today, a new monarch guaranteed to reign supreme over the Blast Premier Fall Finals as FaZe and Heroic collide on a crusade for the crown inside the Royal Arena. A grand final for the ages with two Danish heads of state colliding. Sitting atop of one turret is Carrigan and crew, who would be the undisputed Goliaths of 2022, if not for a recent major slip up on the other tower, it is Kate and his men on his way to build a Danish super team with young guns in tow. An incredible collision when we're looking over the entirety of 2022, Jacob. Yeah, FaZe have been having the best year ever. Kerrigan has said it many, many times, if you would tell him from the beginning of the year that he could win Katowice, he could win Cologne, he could win a major, and perhaps also win inside Royal Arena together with his team, he would have bought it straight off the bat. It's been a fantastic year that had 25 months, 25 months as the best ranked team in the world, and that is, uh, I guess only few teams in the world have been able to do that. We talked the likes of Astralis, we talked the likes of Fnatic back in the days, we talked Navi as well, faces up there with one of the best teams of all time. I mean, talk about perseverance. I think it's a word that's going to come by when it comes to these two teams, both Kanyan and Kerrigan, the one you just mentioned. For how long he's been at the top, for how long a professional carry has had, and how long he had to wait to sit now on the throne and have this year. We know the woes he's been through. We know the time he was in the TSM, into Astralis, then removed because they couldn't win the trophies. Moves on to phase the first time, gets them to a level, but somehow the ceiling is a little bit too strong. They can't make it. He's removed. What does he do? He goes on to play with Envy for a while, then Maus, then he earns his stripes and his respect one more time. He lands in phase, tumultuous times, fights, tries to get the lineup. And when all the pieces fit together, he finally does what he said he would. He wins. He establishes himself as a champion. And he has created the most beautiful masterpiece that we've seen in Counter-Strike uh, for some time. I was just reflecting upon, uh, you know, we did some content pieces with Blast at the beginning of the year, yeah. where we were kind of uh, looking at our perspective, best roster shuffles coming into things. I put the ROPS roster move uh, coming into this. And yeah, it's just paid off through and through. I love that we get to see Counter-Strike and Amrops joining back together after, you know, uh, they had that 10-year-old mouse. Well done for you. It was a good spot, a good shout, because it made an awful lot of sense. When Rops came into phase, I think everyone was thinking to themselves, OK, this makes an awful lot of sense. That is the piece, that is the player, that is exactly the piece to the puzzle they've needed. Playing with all of my stars are standing, coming in and out of the lineup, that must have been rough for face. But when they finally got Rops, I think everyone uh, silently perhaps had to admit that, OK, just by looking at these five players, we knew that face were going to win trophies. Whether or not we knew they were going to win Katowice, Cologne, win the major. That yeah. was maybe a question mark, but the fact that they've been able to find success, maybe not too big of a surprise. Uh, it was crazy. I mean, listen, it's also a reminder how one member can change everything, not only by his individual impact, but by how much sense he makes into the system and how he kind of allows everybody else to be comfortable. Because they had some of these players prior to Rob's joining the roster. They could never find that kind of success. But when he plugged in, suddenly just magically everything made sense. The first tournament they go to in Katowice, even without the actual roster, 
Alistair in rain having him to sit out. He's already there. He's already putting up frags. They're racking up the first trophy. So yes, we talk about a player that changed everything when he joined. Robs is the one. You mentioned the words growth and resilience, Matthew. And I feel like if we had sort of, you know, line charts for each of the teams that we see gracing the stage today, um, they would have different kind of crescendos on them. Because for FaZe, you know, the first half of the year was through and through top tier CS for them. For Heroic, it's been more of a steady rise throughout the year. Obviously, you know, making that roster shuffle, for, uh, taking up refresh, bringing in Yabby. Um, it's been more of a, a, a test of time, I guess, for the dates. Yeah, for Heroic, it, it's really been a... Uh... I want to use the word suffering, not in a bad way, but the same way you go to the gym and you actually have to fight through pushing more and more. I feel like that's what Heroic had to do. I think they were continuously fighting to try and really find their own limitations to go above that. They've tried a couple of times. And if anything, if it paints a picture, I take you back to February. I take you back to Katowice on the stage in Spodek with face completely spanked the hell out of Heroic because this was where they were at that time. Heroic were that team. Kadian was that player who was saying, you cannot do it. You're going to choke it. You made it to the playoff, but that that's it, that's your limits. No one in your team is gonna step up. Stone is not really delivering, Kadian is disappearing. And I think 2022 has been for them about trying to push through that. And we are starting to see it. What we saw in Rio was already a new heroic. What we saw here is a new heroic and they're trying to redefine themselves. The key word for me would be maturity because I agree with you. It's been up and down. It's been a bit of a roller coaster for heroic and, and they've had to experience a lot of downfalls in order to get to the point where they've matured. Now what we can talk about Kadian. Now what we can talk about heroic being a team that can deliver on a stage. I will say, and I think that's one of the most underrated facts ever, the fact that they removed Refresh, you know, they were openly saying that, okay, we are a top five, top six, top seven team. We're okay with that. That's all right, but we want to be better. We want to contend for trophies. Everyone was saying, why would you remove Refresh? That was a, a decent uh, piece to the puzzle, so yeah. to speak. He was a, a well-fitting member of the lineup, but they wanted more. Mm. They wanted to take a risk in order to get to the next level. And here we are. They were in the major final. They're in this final as well. It's worked out. Not necessarily only because of Yapi coming into the lineup, but the fact that they were able to risk something, not being okay with just being a top five, not mm. being content with the situation, but actually putting in some eggs in the basket and getting the reward for it. Talk about it's a we against the world. Yeah. I think it has been a theme for Heroic for the longest time for many different reasons. And of course, we go back to the time with the Hunt scandal and what might have happened at the time. It didn't help for their image at all. And I think they had to suffer through that for a while. Now, after this, they removed Refresh, of course. There was the whole, you're an online team, you're never going to make it back to land. They had to fight against so many monikers. They had to fight against so many bad branding to their names. And I think it helped them in a way because Skadian said it is always adamant when it comes to interviews. He said, listen, it's how we do it. It's us against the world. You either believe in it or you out, you're with us or you're against us. And I think it really bond them. The link and the relation between the players is something very much different, which to an extent I thought would be a problem when Yabi joined. It's not easy to join an organism that is so knit tight, but it seems like it's happening. I think Heroic kind of uh, epitomized the phrase, no pain, no gain, because they've <laughs> gone through that. They've experienced the worst of yeah. the worst and, you know, managed to come through that and kind of, you know, blossom on the other side of that. And I think if I was going to pinpoint one moment where I was like, yeah, we've actually seen a real Heroic evolution, was that semi-final versus Furia? The fact that they were able to sort of put it up against the crowd. When we were talking about this time last year, they were getting booed versus the likes of Astralis, and we saw them crumble under that. Yeah, I, I think that's a severely underrated fact as well. I was watching that body language from Heroic, and I was wondering whether or not KDM would be, you know, approaching the crowd inside that arena. In Rio, you're going up against Furia, you're going up against 18,000 people screaming at you, and you could just see the laser focus Kadian and Heroic, for that matter, had on themselves. One thing you're going to see today on the stage against FaZe is Kadian playing to the crowd. He's going to have focus elsewhere than just on the server. But one thing I really did love about that performance going up against Furia was the fact that he was 100% focused on himself and on his teammates. There was nothing around playing the crowd, right? There was no way he could win over the Furia crowd inside that mm. arena. So the fact that he had the ability to make that switch just solely focused on the game, solely focused on themselves. It was a very good look for Heroic. And as I said during that game, the T side they pulled off against Furia in that semi final was some of the most clinical Counter Strike I have ever seen played at a major. It was beautiful to witness. That was a reference series from Heroic, definitely opened a lot of eyes and took a lot of attention towards that team. I think when we talk about a roster and we talk about evolution, it's not just purely Counter Strike based. We're not only just talking about a better strategy or a better skill, I think it's also a group of people who become better as competitor, as individual and the fact that Kadian was actually able to go and be against all that crowd and not lose his marbles, stay like composed, have a good T side, know how to play against the crowd, that is something new. I, d I didn't think that was going to happen. I thought Fury had it all the way. There was no narrative for me to say Heroic would win it, but they did. And that's how they were evolving. It takes time, it takes pain. You mentioned it, no pain, no gain. Well, we talk about him as a talisman of the team, so let's get a few words from Kadian himself. 
Kadian, a grand final on a Danish stage in front of a Danish crowd that's probably going to be roaring you and your team's names against FaZe Clan with Kerrigan in front. What are you feeling right now? Amazing, you know. It's uh, really great to be here. It's an honor to be here. It's something that we work so hard for and, uh, yeah, potentially a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity playing uh, a grand final in front of this stage. So, yeah, we just want to give it our all and uh, leave it all on that stage today. And you're a popular man here in the Royal Arena, but so is the in-game leader standing across from you, Kerrigan. How do you plan to kind of one-up him and get the crowd on your side? Yeah, it's a two showman who likes to interact with the crowd. And uh, I think because both likes to do stuff like that, it's probably going to be like uh, who's winning most rounds. Like you said, I think maybe we'll have a slight edge on the uh, fan department because we are a full Danish team. So we also saw the insane support we had yesterday, which was truly amazing. So yeah. But I think most of it is going to be happening about, you know, winning the rounds, because then it's also going to be easier to have the crowd on your side. And talking about winning the rounds, FaZe Clan are definitely not going to be an easy opponent. What is the toughest aspect of their game that you have to crack tonight? I think the way they play, uh, the T sides with like uh, all these kind of small fakes and uh, they are really stubborn in terms of like just being patient and stuff like this. And um, then they'll oftentimes also send like Kerrigan in somewhere alone with a lot of grenades and he'll create space, create an opening. And then the four others will capitalize on different parts of the map. And yeah, I mean, their style is definitely proven to be efficient for many events now. They won the three biggest tournaments uh, this year, other than the Rio major, which was like uh, the first major, Cologne and Keto. So, no easy opponent, but I mean, it also it's also going to make the victory so much sweeter if we uh, if we take it. And let's just get spicy in this last question right here. What's the easiest aspect of their game that you can uh, capitalize uh, capitalize on? Um, I think you know if you shut down their uh, primary style, I think their uh, secondary option is not as strong, but uh, it requires a lot of effort to stop their uh, their first style. So yeah, that's where the main focus is right now. I like that from Cadian. You can never underestimate the beasts of FaZe coming into the server, and particularly for the Danes of Heroic, because uh, you have to go back to over a year ago, Jacob, to see them taking them down in a best of three series. Yeah, it's been a long time since Heroic have been able to best FaZe Clan, and perhaps there's going to be a long time before we see it. In my eyes, there's no doubt that FaZe are the favorites coming into this matchup, but that doesn't mean Heroic are without chances whatsoever. We talked about how they together have you know, made it so they move together as a unit. It's a very well-rounded team. It's a team that has great synergy outside of the server, but let's talk about inside of the server as well, because I would argue right now that they have the best team play in the world of Counter-Strike. We talked about the flash assisting, we talk about the grenade damage, we talk about the way they constantly move around the server in a proactive unit, taking away space and making it uncomfortable for any opponent to go up against them. The fact that they've been able to replicate this good synergy they have outside of the server and put it into the server as well is a big part of the reason as why Heroic are so, so dangerous. To play. Yeah, I join you. Actually, fundamentally, when it comes to Counter Strike, I think they have the most polished game that we've had at least here in Copenhagen. It's not a question. There's plenty of indexes that can kind of support that idea, right? When it comes to the eight year damage on the CT side, they have great nade usage, flash assist on the T side, mm. also very polished. But the issue is, to me, when you compare these lineups, it feels like it shouldn't even be a game. If you just do pound for pound, the question is, is the individual power of FaZe going to just completely shut down the team play of Heroic? And that, to me, has to be the story of this Grand Final. Are we going to see the Danes, the individuals of Heroic, being able to step up just that one step to be actually able to have a fight? I think Let's put one individual under the spotlight. Yeah. Uh, I, I do want to talk about Stan just for a brief moment, because, okay. uh, yeah, we were looking at him to be coming in to be a more consistent star for the side of Heroic. So far, he's impressed. He's been doing fantastic. Stan is having a, not a breakthrough event, because we knew how good he could be. We knew how good he has been, but the fact that he's been able to deliver on this stage, the fact that he was able to, I wouldn't say single-handedly take down Team Liquid, but be the difference maker in that game was fantastic to see. You see the heroic lineup right here. We talk about them being one of the most well-rounded squads out there, and if you take the second best player, the third best player, fourth and fifth, they are all incredible, incredible close. We've seen moments from Shoes, we've seen moments from Yabi, Katie and Tessis, but the one guy who's been delivered at a very high level from start to finish is down, and he is needed today. I agree with you match you and I think Kadian agrees with you as well by saying that if they can shut down for the primary strength of face clan with the individuals then Stown comes into play and then there's a chance for him. There is a very evident and obvious issue to me when I look at this graphic Freya. On one hand I can acknowledge that the floor of Heroic is very high. If Shush is going to be my lowest rated player that's a great insurance to know because he's had moments and he can make a difference but from the top heavy side it's too empty for me. It's too empty. It's only Stown that's currently at any sort of exceptional rating with 1.2 
23. Right behind him, the middle of the pack is so much more somber than the likes of FaZe. The pound for pound is just ridiculous. And that is why this is my preface. If Heroic don't overperform on an individual standpoint, they'll just get eaten alive. Because the middle of the pack for FaZe, we have the strongest quatuor in Counter-Strike. The four men, Kerrigan, on the side, <laughs> or on here, you cannot mess with them. There is there is no way you mess with them on an individual standpoint. That's a risk, though. That's a risk you're willing to, to run. Heroic's whole foundation, Heroic's whole team is built up on the team play. They're not built up to cater to individual stars. Stown is the star of the lineup because he's a little bit better than the rest of them, but they're not using time to set him up. Whereas for FaZe Clan, I think Kadian said it pretty well in that interview, they're setting themselves up to be those individuals having to make the difference on the server. One thing that could be an issue, we talked about it, we used this graph a couple of times, Stown going up against the best teams in the world, historically speaking right here, he's struggling a little bit against FaZe Clan. And yes, the rating right here below one is not great for a star player but then again take into context that the majority of times that heroic have faced face clan they haven't been the favorites Absolutely. they haven't been winning the game so obviously his stats are going to be a little bit lower but you need your star player to be able to post a rating that is above one if you want to stand any chance whatsoever in this game one more question that i do want to pose for the side of heroic as well was uh, a word that you put under the spotlight just yesterday it's a question of stamina for the danes uh, as well we've seen it you know in tournaments that you know are slightly arguably slightly longer uh, than the four finals mm -hmm. heroic stumbling towards the very end and phase they can capitalize upon that yeah definitely i think stamina is intimately related to experience on the stage right i think for, for people at home it's very important to realize that when you're not used to that environment you are using a tremendous amount of energy both mentally and physically to stay at the top of your game for an entire series right? it is very draining emotionally speaking, physically speaking. But this is where I tip my hat to Heroic and what has been happening in this tournament so far. Because they've lost five maps out of 11 they've played. First side, it's not that great of a stat. But the fact is, every single series that went to three maps, they actually won. And that, to me, is sort of a new dimension. They used to be the team that would get beat up on the second map and just completely give up on the third because they were out, they were empty. And this is something that you build over time. And now I feel like this is the ultimate test, if you can actually sustain phase in the three maps. You have to control those emotions, right? Because I agree with you. The energy that is being expended by a player like Kadian on that stage is going to be immense. So he has to balance it out as well. He can't, he can't go crazy on map number one because there's potentially a map number two and a map number three. And we saw what FaZe did yesterday against NIP as well. You can never, ever count them out. Once you think you have faced where you want them, they will find a way to fight back. So for Kadian to control the whole emotional side, we even saw him, I think he was coming to tears after they won the group stage, right, and made it into the arena. It's been a very long week. It's been a lot of energy spent by Kadian <laughs> and going up against these goofballs. They haven't he fun. has to. He has to balance those emotions. He has to save a little bit of energy for a potential third map. I love the emotions that FaZe is showing coming into this one. And yeah, you're totally <laughs> correct, Jacob. You can't let your foot off the gas pedal when you're going up against these five players, particularly Maniac, as Broki, he's back. Yeah, Broki's definitely back. And this is an extremely good auspice if you're a face fan, if you're hoping to see a W for your clan, because he kickstarted his year with an MVP performance in Katowice. People thought that this was going to be the new reference. Now, I have to admit, this wasn't. Mm. If you looked at the downfall he's had in the middle of the year, he's been a little bit more quiet. But we've had already an example in front of our eyes of what face looked like when Broki's on one. It's a playstyle issue for, for me when it comes to Brogy. He's never going to be the, the guy who posts a 1.30 or 1.40 rating at every single tournament. His playstyle is very risky. He uses a lot of confidence, a lot of aggressive peaks with it. You have seen it right here. You know, Brogy is up there with the best of the best of this tournament. And when he's playing like this, he is a monster to go up against. He's taking away space from the opponents. He's doing aggressive plays with the AWP, constantly being an annoyance for his opponents. The problem is when he's not feeling confident, when he's not hitting his shots, he can be a little bit of a liability. We saw that during the major. We seen that for Broki for Face Clan as well. If he's having a rough game, I, I look at Face and I think, okay, you're only playing at 70%. Broki is a big part of this lineup. And you know where Broki never fails? I will tell you. I'll In tell you finals? right here. In grand freaking finals, <laughs> he never fails. Let me just have a look at my notes because his numbers are absolutely crazy. Katowice, it's a 114 rating. Pro League, it's a 114 rating. Uh, you have then Antwerp, it's a 1.28. And you have a 117 after that. Man, this man yeah. doesn't fail. He doesn't fail. He's had moments, but in the grand final, he's no joke. Of course, another man that can do that, and even better, yeah. is Rain. He wasn't in Katowice, but the rest we've all seen is 
absolute MVP masterclass he had in Antwerp rolling back the years. I was just about to say, the fact that you mentioned those stats from Broki and they're so impressive makes me super, super happy because you know Rain has been a monster in those finals yeah. as well. It's players who step up in the big games. Yeah, admittedly, Rain was sitting out on one of those finals, so the sample size is a little bit smaller, so you'd argue that both Broki and Rain are somewhat similar. But those two are the talisman. Look at the roles on the server they have. Rain on a map like Nuke CT side, aggressive. He's the entry fracker. He's involved in so much chaos and creating chaos for face. Mm. the same as Broki. If those two are playing well, there's so much Heroic has to handle on that server. And we praise Heroic for being a team that is very proactive, dealing with the chaos, thriving in the chaos, but maybe there's a point where there's too much chaos and too much skill to actually deal with it. This information, this data right here is actually ridiculous. It's, it's outright stupid. Because most of our conversation, when we get to a grand final on the desk, is the unknown quantity of the quality of players we'll see from players. Because a grand final is supposed to be exceptional. We always say this is not a game like any other. It's a very unique moment. We don't know how they're going to behave, how they're going to prove themselves, are they going to become legends. FaZe have done it four times already this year. Great. We have enough data that we can do average on how they play in Grand Finals. We can say Rain three out of four times was an absolute beast. Broki, average above 1.20. We can say Robs, he was an MVP in APL. And that is such an invaluable information that we know what they deliver in Grand Finals. Can we say the same about Heroic? No, we can't. That's the problem. We've only seen them in one, I would say, big final. We saw them win a, a Pinnacle Cup, I believe, against an Astralis that was half dead at the time. So Yeah, we talk about S-tier tournament. Exactly. We're talking about the biggest of the biggest ones. And the one time we did see Heroic play a final, it wasn't a good look. They were going up against outsiders, and I know Probably that game against Furia that soaked out a lot of energy. Perhaps, you know, mentally they weren't where they were supposed to be. And you got to tip your hat for outsiders as well, playing a fantastic tournament. But realistically speaking, as you're saying, we have no idea what kind of heroic is going to show up today. And that's another question mark attached to that lineup. Yeah, the data is kind of on two sides of the equations uh, when we're looking at each squad coming into this grand final. But let's circle back to the star all as Brokey has some thoughts coming into this grand final. Brokey, you're about to step on stage against Heroic, a Danish home crowd favorite, but you guys have Kerrigan in your camp. What are you feeling right now? I'm feeling great. We already had uh, played against them like three days ago, so I'm happy to play them again on stage and see how it goes. And uh, how's the team feeling right now? Are you excited? Are you kind of nervous? Uh, I think everyone's excited to be back in the final after we went out 0-3 in the major, so we're just happy to be here. And tell me about the difference between the FaZe Clan at the Major and the FaZe Clan here, because you have also had quite the difference in your ratings. Can you tell me what's been uh, the difference? I had to think about after we lost 0-3, uh, I just started playing the game a bit more, played every day, and I'm happy to be back. And uh, one of our talents in the back, you mentioned your extremely aggressive plays as the product of your disregard of danger. Can you uh, explain how you feel you play on the server? Uh, I just feel I just feel something and I do it. I don't doubt myself and I go for it and it works for my, most of the time. And that's obviously down to some confidence. How have you built up that confidence? Uh, I think it's just by playing a lot and uh, being confident, doing the same thing over and over. And when I go on the server, I'm, I don't doubt myself. And what's the message to all the fans out there not cheering your name right now? Uh, I'll fuck up heroic. God <laughs> damn! <laughs> I've never what? heard Brokey be that savage. Jesus That's great. Christ! <laughs> It's I, awesome, actually. He probably will. It's awesome. Honest, I mean. He <laughs> makes it sound so simple, yeah. though. Like, Mads is really trying to get some nitty gritty out of him, and Brokey's just like, nah, I'm just playing confidently, right? How do you play confident? Just play confident. Yeah, and, and I love that. You know, listen, let's not make Brokey something he's not. You look at a guy <laughs> like Stown within Heroic, that's a player that is obviously a star player for Heroic. He's also the secondary in game leader. He's helping Kadian with the calling, and he has a lot of influence in how the team is playing, preparing for games, etc., etc. Brokey doesn't strike me as that guy. No. He's a guy that you put on the server, and then he does what he does best. And that is killing you. A combat op style, going in your face, taking away space. As he said, sometimes he's not even thinking about what he's doing. He's just doing it because it feels right. And that's also nice. It's nice to have a player who plays on your intuition. So when you compare players, when you compare star players, there's different types of stars. Stown, a very smart guy, a very calculated player. Brokey, a little bit of a, I would say, almost to some degree inconsistent, despite being consistent in the finals. But he does it to such a high level that you can never discredit it. Yeah, we have to be careful when we talk about Brokey's inconsistency, because in the entirety of 2020, the Rio Major is the only tournament where he's at a negative rating. Yes. It is the or a sub one rating, I should say. It's the only time throughout the year he's been all in the green. But yeah, I can appreciate intuition. I can appreciate intuition. I gotta say, when I was playing, I didn't really have it. Like when you were in the clutch and you are aware of the dangers, you might kind of feel a little bit limited. Like, oh no, they must know where I'm coming from. Oh, I'm lacking. If you don't think about it, if you're just in the moment, in that flow state, if you can trigger it on command, then that's when you get these clutches. And he's good for the clutches. We've seen multiple highlights of him. Yeah, we've seen a lot 
not going down here at the full finals alone. Yeah, and it's that visceral kind of game sense, uh, I guess, for Brokey. Super integrated into the game. And you were praising him for kind of uh, his proactive, fearless nature that we have seen time and time again here. Okay. He's explosive on the server. I think yeah. explosive is the best word I can put on Brokey. The fact that he can be in a round and you haven't seen him play for three or four rounds and all of a sudden he explodes in a scenario where most offers wouldn't, first and foremost, wouldn't be in that position because they are afraid of going into a close combat duel. Second of all, wouldn't have the ability to pull it off. We've seen that time and time again for Brokey. I believe it was the fall final group stage where he single-handedly destroyed Astralis and Nuke. <laughs> I in remember a, that. An absolute insane clutch where I thought to myself, sure, to be in that position first and foremost, that requires you to be crazy and to pull off that clutch, that requires you to be insanely good at the game. There's very few all players that remind me of Brokey. Fallen in the back days, maybe a little bit, but outside of that, Brokey is unique. That play almost broke Jason. I as broke well. If me. you haven't seen that uh, <laughs> past a moment as well, he's it's literally beautiful. in a ball, almost crying. It's like Brokey it's like I picture Brokey to be like a, a bank robber, because right? he's gonna <laughs> steal around away from you here and there, just gonna put on his mask, and just go in and just take around away. And for Kerrigan, it's such a luxury to have, yeah. because I agree with you. If you always play Counter Strike by the book to an extreme, there are situations you're just gonna save. Ah, uh, listen, two v three, the stats are against me, the numbers are against me. I'm just gonna slowly back on out with my AWP. But sometimes you have to have someone that says, you know what, F this. I'm going through that smoke, I'm burning jumping in, and I'm just putting it all on the line. And it is something that Brokey is doing. And I don't think there are many other players in phase that have this sort of crazy element, the texture to their gameplay, that changes a lot. Yeah, because we talk about that calculated nature uh, mm. then on kind of the inverse proportion of this. Rops is a name we have to put into the mix. He does everything by the books, it feels like. He does everything it's by like the, the opposite. books and to a very high yeah. level. The opposite. And the fact that Kadian have two different styles of players who can do that, but have the same result. You know, we know Rops to be a clutcher. We know Rops to be a guy that's steps up in the big moments. Just look at yesterday, 24 hours ago, he was destroying the dreams of NIP, I guess less than 24 hours ago, but he does everything by the books. The way you play ramps is a protocol thing, where if you want to watch a demo and you want to learn how to play ramp on a map like Nuke, watch Rob's play. He is so fundamentally skilled at this game, he doesn't take a lot of risk, and that's where we sometimes criticize him a little bit. We would love to see a player with that aim and that ability to sometimes go above and beyond what he thinks is the right thing to do, but overall, the package you get with Rob's is solid, very, very solid. I've just had an image, Jacob. And for the Dragon Ball Z fan out there oh no, on the chat, oh no. I'll just hit you with that one. What if we could just get oh no. a merging of Robs and Brokey? Wouldn't we have the actual You'd ultimate player, the, ultimate the actual Fuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu
Second, or third thing rather, is that notice that he has the height advantage. Obviously, when this door opens, he's going to be able to see the feet of the players coming out. So with all three of these things in mind, just look at this play back again. Holds this off angle on the right side. Finds this kill onto Rez, who has to jump through the window. Next, he backs up just a little bit to spot the feet of the players coming out. And then lastly, he has enough time to get that third kill because Brolan has to run out through the door to be able to find him. So, beautiful play by Rops, but it's a lot of calculation in his position, and that's what makes him so good. An absolute mastermind in that moment. Yeah, you p uh, put it perfectly yesterday, Jacob. If he doesn't get three there, NIP winning that one, or at least getting the bomb plant. Two kills and 99 damage on the third guy wouldn't have been enough. That would mean that we were about to see NIP play that final. I just want to give credit here to Danny and to Rops for that matter as well for an excellent breakdown. There's nothing random in this positioning. There's nothing he's not thinking about. And for players out there thinking, yeah, he got three kills. Oh, he has a good aim. Ooh, congratulations. But who says that? No, but there's a lot of people who says that. There's a lot of people who think Counter-Strike is a very simple game. It's all about shooting all about being at the right time at the right timing no you gotta create your own luck you gotta create your own fortune and rubs does that time and time again why do we talk about rubs to be so solid positioning wise because he does these calculated decisions at all times sometimes a little bit boring sometimes he should be doing more yadi 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 bottom line is that rubs does this to a very very high level and it's not random and i want people to understand that so thank you so much for that danny and he's got the skill to make it worse sometimes yes. the brain you know i can watch a game play a game know where i'm supposed to be but it's not going to be like Rob's. <laughs> Nothing even close, like not even close by itself. And we've got to talk about the romantic aspect of this as well, which I think you alluded to perfectly earlier. Um, the fact that Carrigan, you know, he battled through so many iterations of so many different teams. 2022, that's been his come up this year. <laughs> it's been an incredible year for, for Carrigan in 2022, but even even within this year that has been incredible, I think he has still learned lesson. And that in itself is a story for everybody out there that's, that's putting their heart in any kind of discipline is that, yes, you can be at the top of the mountain and you can just fall. You can stumble the way it happened in Rio, but then he has showcased time and time again that he knows how to handle it. He has been a captain, he has been a leader. You could listen to the interviews. They go to Dallas, they could win the actual Grand Slam, they fail. Then he's got to go and have that conversation in the interview. He's got to take responsibility we have the quote right here and I appreciate I acknowledge what he is saying we should never put to bed the demons of the major it's a good reminder that is correct you have to embrace these moments where you fail because if you just put it in the rearview mirror you're never gonna learn from it if you don't open yourself to what you have done wrong and why you have failed you're just gonna be the sum of what you were prior that's it you're gonna stagnate you're not gonna become any better so even when you face even when you've won four events in 2022 even when you have the best year of your career you can still fail you can still be wrong and you can still learn and he embodies it. For all the hardcore fans out there, one of the critiques you could always put towards Kerrigan would be the fact that yes, he finds success wherever he goes. He was in Mouse. He took a very weak Mouse lineup to be the best in the world for a couple of weeks. He took FaZe to be a team that were number one in the world, the first iteration where they won everything. I remember them winning a tournament in New York where no one even came close to, I think, getting double digits against yeah. him. He's been everywhere. He's gotten success everywhere he's been, even in Astralis. But what happened in Mouse? Once he found the success, they stagnated. They went on a Downfall, he got kicked. He went to face, they found success, they stagnated, they went downhill, he got kicked. Same for Astralis, found success, stagnated, downward, get the kick. Right? We've seen that happen so, so many times. The one thing Kerrigan has never been able to achieve as an in-game leader is actually stay within one team for the vast majority of two, three years. Well, he's had period where it's going up, it's going down, but he's still finding the success once again. And maybe that could be what we're writing right here. The Major was a disaster for FaZe Clan, but maybe Kerrigan have learned from all these different times in Mouse, in Astralis, in FaZe the first time, that even though you have a rough period, even though you stagnate, even though you go on a down, downward spiral, you can still fight back and come back. That's the one thing he's never been able to achieve with any team so far. And if you can do that with FaZe, it's complete. Yeah, and it's the bounce back that we talk about time and time again for FaZe. Crucial coming into yet another grand final for Carrigan and his men. Let's get a few more words from the captain heading into this one. Though. Kerrigan, a grand final here in the Royal Arena on Danish soil against the Danish team in the grand final. The fans are probably going to be shouting your name, but also heroics. How do you plan to harness the fans' energy in the optimal way? Uh, I just hope we play some exciting CS. Uh, I think we're known for that, very explosive. So hopefully um, everyone here in the arena today is cheering for good CS, and that's what I love the most about this final. Uh, I think uh, no matter what, the Danish person, maybe Danish team or one, who knows, uh, but Denmark is winning today, and I think we all have to cherish that in the arena today. And FaceClan has had a rough path to this uh, event, you know, having the Rio Major in the past, but now you guys are in the Grand Final. You have a chance to redeem yourselves. How will you do so? Uh, I think we have showcased really good CS in the group stage, and we also showcased um, we didn't play our best CS yesterday against NIP. We managed to win. 
And I think that characterizes character uh, face clan pretty good. Even if we don't hit our peak, we try to find a way to win, and, and most of the time we do. Same thing goes today. Heroic has a high peak, uh, but I think we have the consistency on our side. So, so that's to make sure we play the best uh, to our abilities today and stay strong mentally. And what's the toughest nut to crack when it comes to Heroic's game plan? You guys are going to be going up against a pretty difficult opponent here. Yeah, I think they have a very um, special philosophy. I think more and more teams are, are copying because they are doing great. But it also, the way they have to react is very fast. So if they're getting a little nervous or a little under pressure, I think that style can crack. Uh, where our style is very fluid, we can do everything, clutch, play aggressive, aggro and slow. So yeah, I think it's, it's a style, uh, stylistic fun matchup. And I think we're going to see that today as well. So for sure, uh, Heroic has played really good the last last month uh, here in the, at the Major and also here in uh, Copenhagen. So um, we have to play our best ability to close this out. A huge depth of history between these two squads coming into things. And man, I'm absolutely loving this crowd, getting ready to welcome no less than six Danish players into the arena. This is amazing. I love this vibe. It's going to be great, isn't it? The <laughs> arena is slowly but surely filling up, and it's a final that everyone has been waiting for. Heroic being the home crowd favorites. But Kerrigan, make no mistake, he's very popular in Denmark too. Let's talk about the trajectory of both of the in-game leaders coming into things. Because sure, there's a lot of differences when we're talking about playstyle, when we're talking about characteristics inside the server. But it's the journeys that these two players players have been on, where there's actually a surprising amount of similarity. We could talk for ages about Kerrigan, how he's been through everything, but Kadian has more or less resembled that same story in a way that just five years ago, he considered not playing Counter-Strike anymore. He was doing desk work together with you and me, Maniac. He was a, an analyst, right, talking about the players instead of playing the game. I've had the honor of kicking Kadian from a couple of my teams as well, because five, six years ago, he wasn't good enough. He was nowhere near good enough to be at a level where we could contest for being a top 10, top 15 team in the world. That makes me say that with a lot of respect, because what he's done ever since is admirable. He went to America, he went to the States, he played in Rogue, because no one wanted to play he with him with me. in Denmark. He played with you. There he played goes. with me that in Rogue. Must have been a downfall and a half, yeah. Good he, went, good he went away from everything he knew, everything he loved, because he knew he couldn't succeed in Denmark, because no one wanted to play with him, and then he fought back, came back to North, came into Heroic, and today, we regard Kaden as being one of the best in-game leaders in the entire world, and if that's a comeback I've ever seen, wow, it's impressive. I just want to take a moment to bask in the glory that is in the Royal Arena right now. I'm getting goosebumps. I can't can't even imagine, Matthew, what the players are thinking, looking out on what is just an absolute spectacle here in Copenhagen. It's beautiful it's indeed, Brian. There we go. <laughs> I love this. I love the atmosphere. Man, and it goes to show that, I mean, we spoke about it yesterday, Jacob. Mm. Counter-Strike is a culture here in Denmark. Everybody lives and breathes it. Yeah, we do, we do. Even in our schools, we're starting to embrace it. Once you're in, in ground school, you can have esports as a lecture. We have more and more teachers being educated in esports and in the culture around esports. I said it yesterday as well, it's a family event. We see kids down to the age of seven, six, eight, and they're all here enjoying Counter-Strike, and I absolutely love it. It's like a family event here as well. The amount of moms, dads, kids, grandmas, grandparents, everybody is coming just to enjoy the spectacle here today. Listen, you gotta be real. Events like these is also what probably inspires a bunch of kids out there to put so many hours into the game and hopefully one day be on that stage. I'm pretty sure that Counter-Strike now is getting old enough that we're gonna complete the circle. We're gonna see people who actually witnessed you know, grand finals in some kind of stage here in Copenhagen or in Cologne or in Skodek. And then so, shit, that's what I wanna do. That's, that's what I wanna do. This is my career, this is my dream. And moments like these are, I guess, stepping stone. Listen, Yabi is one career. of those guys. Yabi was yes. there last time around watching the grand final and now he's about to play it. A couple of years ago, he was inside this arena. He was very, very young, wasn't ready for it. And now he's one of those kids you're describing. Listen, you were talking about Kadian and, and the journey that he had. I think both he and Kerrigan are to prove that nothing comes really easy. Anything of value doesn't come easy. It just It's not just you step one day and then you just happen to find greatness and you're just putting it on your back. I think these two have battled for so long, for so many years. Kadian played the three first majors in Counter-Strike. The first majors then completely disappeared, became irrelevant to the top level, and now is back as well. And he stayed true to his identity. I think that in itself is also a thematic, right? There were a bunch of people in 2020 who were saying, yeah, this is great here, right? you're doing. Yeah, the whole the gambling, the aggressive Counter-Strike. Nah, it's working online. That's good Good for you, man. Just keep that online. Once you get to LAN with that environment that we have behind us, it's never going to work. And as LAN arrived, unfortunately, it wasn't working. He could have had so many opportunities to just change completely, throw the, the, the book out the wall, but he stayed true to the Counter-Strike he wanted to play. Yeah, it's been a beautiful come up and story for kind of, yeah, arguably both Carrigan and Katie on both sides of the equations. Oh man, the atmosphere is getting absolutely <laughs> electric. I absolutely love it. 
Um, I do want to continue to put perhaps some of the win conditions uh, for each side of the equation under the spotlight because uh, when we're looking at beyond just the individuals yes. on the side of Face Clan, uh, some of the stats, they don't lie coming into this final the stage. The CT sides from Face so far in this tournament have been absolutely outrageous. You see it right here. They won 69.4% of their CT rounds. Their 5v4 conversion rate is up there as the very best of the tournament. But the one that I'm very, very cautious about, the one that I almost don't believe watching it right here, is the 50% 4v5 conversion. That's ridiculous. So you're basically playing a 50-50 game when you're up 5 against 4 against face on their CT side. It's ridiculous. And the way that is enabled is the multi-kills on that CT side. You have so many different players who's able to pull off the multi-kill. Rops, Brokey, Rain, Twist for that matter as well. Sometimes Kerrigan does it. And that's why they're so, so tough to break open up. Never has individual as a topic be more important than in this moment. Why is FaZe so strong in the CT side? Because of what Jacob is talking about. Because you have so many individuals who are capable and efficient in different positions where they can turn things around, have a moment. That Rob's triple kill that Mahon just aptly described, that is FaZe. That is the essence of FaZe. Granted, this was the pinnacle, this was the apotheosis <laughs> of, of the multi-kill that we had. And it's not going to happen every Thursday, thank God, because we wouldn't want it. <laughs> but all of them can do that at a lower scale throughout the game. And it just, it's hard mentally to play against FaZe because you might feel like you're doing what you're supposed to. You get the opening kill, you take your time, your communication is flowing, you're attacking the site, and someone out of nowhere comes and double kills you and just completely change, reshuffles the card. That is the strength of phase. I want to bring up the map leaders coming yeah. into this one uh, as well. I think we can probably determine that the usual fans are going to come out. I don't yeah. see phase floating that vertigo. No dust two, no vertigo. No. They're not floating the vertigo. They tried doing the major. It failed miserably, so they'll leave that for 2023 for sure. Now, when it comes to the picks, there's different ways phase could go in this scenario. Same for Hero. I'm looking at an Inferno. I feel like that's the one weak link in Heroic's map pool right now and a very strong map from FaZe Clan as well. So I would be surprised if Finn and Kerrigan is not picking out Inferno going up against Heroic. Oh, we see the pick coming in from Heroic and I'm waiting for it. This was either going Ooh. to be Overpass or Ancient. They decided to go for Overpass and I need to put a, a caveat on this. I believe there is an extreme amount of pressure riding on Heroic when it comes to their map pick because Jacob is right. That Inferno for FaZe is extremely obvious. It's a map that they master at an incredible quality, a map where they have completely put Heroic in the rear window mirror in multiple occasions. So Heroic, if they want to make this uh, game competitive, they want to make this grand final worth watching, they have okay. to win overpass. I think that's interesting. I think it's very interesting that Heroic is steering away from Nuke. They don't want to play Nuke against Face Clan, and they're allowing for Mirage to be the third deciding map. We have seen Mirage being a, a strugglesome map for Face Clan. We remember the B&E game where they were up 15 to 10, ending up losing in overtime, exiting the major as 03. But overall, Mirage is a very solid map for the likes of Face. You have the individuals. We talk about the multi kills. It's, it's one of those maps that really are open to those individuals. Heroic is a decent Mirage team as well, but I would have preferred Nuke as a third deciding map if I were Heroic personally. Man, we talk about individuals. I was just going through an internal dialogue. We know the players from FaZe. Some of them have already built legends. We talk about Rob's his abilities. We know what Twist can bring. We know what Brokey can do on a server. I feel like the journey of Heroic is these individuals becoming, becoming players, becoming stars. Who is Tessis? Who is Shush? And I'm, I'm not saying that, I'm not making fun of them. No. I'm not being negative, but it is a fact. When you compare them, it feels like the aura that the FaZe players have is completely surpassing and outclassing anything. And for Heroic, if you want to reach that category, if you want to put your hands on a trophy in Counter-Strike, I feel like these players have to step up. They have to be become something of a hero, something of an idol on the individual standpoint. Because team play is great, but against FaZe, I feel like it only gets you so far. That's the question. I feel like that's the question, because I agree with you to some extent, but then again, is it needed? Is it needed for Heroic to have Shush going crazy? Is it needed for Tessa to be a superstar? I'm not sure, because stylistically speaking, we have two very different operating yeah. teams right here. Heroic, homogenous, as from start to finish. All the players can step up, all the players are contributing, and they rely so much on their team play, the synergy, how they use their utility, how they maneuver around the map as a unit, constantly proactive. West face relies so much on their individuals. We've seen what happens at the major when those individuals are not showing up. You said to yourself, Brokey having the first negative event, and what happens? Face are looking like a bunch of noobs. That's the difference. So stylistically speaking, that's the question you should be asking yourself. Do you believe in individual Counter-Strike, or do you believe in team Counter-Strike? Because one of them will have to win tonight. Well, both squads are going to have to be believing coming into the server, and it's almost time to kick things off here at the coveted Blast Premier Four Finals Grand Final indeed. The map cemented, the crowd is certainly ready to get this one underway. And when we're back, it's time to give these teams a royal welcome.
heading into the final of the Bitway Aim Checking Channels World Cup Edition. It's Tessus going up against Bit, so let's see who takes the win. I'll be asking each player five questions to determine how many balls they get to shoot at a goal. After the question has been asked and after the players have answered, the players will walk up to take shots at the goal to score as many points as possible. The point that will be awarded will be a large chicken plus five, small chicken plus 10, utility plus 20. Knocking over a barrel will be minus 10, hitting me minus 15. Name a Swedish CSGO player. Lefler. How many rounds to win a CSGO match? 16. Where is David Beckham from? Uh, maybe from the England. What is three times nine? Uh, it's 27. Hmm? Name two past American presidents. Uh, it's uh, Trump and uh, Obama. Yeah, that's good. Good time, Elbis. Name a hostage rescue map. Office. What is the square root of one? Zero <laughs> by What? Yeah. How long is a CSGO round without a bomb plan? Without a bomb plan? Uh, one fifty-five. What colors is a zebra? Uh, black and white. When was the R8 Rover released? Released? Uh, In a year. Uh, yeah, the 2015. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Four and five. Yeah, great. Oh. <laughs> Close. Pretty good goal, but uh, yeah. no points. So lucky right now. Yeah, you're close. Oh, oh. that was close. Did you hit? Yeah. Is that a hit, right? I think so, yeah. yeah. You technically can. <laughs> so. <laughs> how dare you? I'm sorry, I'm how dare sorry. you? I'm sorry. The final is concluded and bit. Unfortunately, you finished with minus 10 points, which puts you in a second place. Another loser, I would argue, over here. Tessus with plus 15. You are technically the winner of the final, but I want you to explain what the hell that was. No explanation. I've heard what you said in the public, and uh, I did some revenge for my boys. So, yeah. Oh, good on you. Tessus is the winner. Blood, sweat and tears of the entire duration of the Blast Premier Fall season has been leading up to this very moment. We now have the two remaining top dogs in phase and heroic, both ready to be taken to the stage here for the coveted grand final. Overpass, Inferno and Mirage locked in if we do so need that third and a final deciding map. Overpass coming in as the pick of heroic into this one. Jacob, how are you foreseeing both sides of the equation on this? It makes sense to me why heroic would pick overpass. They found a lot of success on the map during this tournament. They have a very good understanding of how to play a very tough T side. They've been good at gathering some of those T rounds throughout the tournament. So they're not too afraid of starting on that rough T side, which is a good thing for Heroic. Mm. But again, it comes back to the conversation we had before going on a break. It's going to be the individuals versus the team. I think it's an excellent litmus test when it comes to Heroic, right? If we are to believe that they are the caliber of players and team who will lift trophies, who will beat the likes of FaZe, who were giants this whole year and once again have returned to form, Overpass is the best way to prove it. Jacob is talking about, he's got some numbers for us as well. From a team perspective, Heroic is an excellent team on Overpass. You look at the teams they've beaten very recently, Outsiders, Liquid, Spirit at that, Destroyed and IP, beat Liquid here as well. All the cogs are perfectly turning together. It's like a beautiful Swiss watch. But I feel like FaZe and some of these individuals could just take an absolute crap on it by being aggressive and being on their faces. When we're talking about Heroic being a team that has a lot of synergy and then where it's very, you know, equal throughout the way, where it's very well-rounded, there's not a a clear start in the lineup. I'm just looking at these stats on Overpass. The highest rated player is KDM with a 1.14 rating, and the lowest rated player, so from top to bottom, is Yappy with a 1.04. There's a 
10 difference from the bottom performing player to the highest performing player. So everyone is contributing and they do it as a team. So it's not something we're making up. It's not something we're just, you know, watching the server and think, oh, they work together in, in tandem. They have a good synergy. They constantly move around in packs. That's also what the stats are suggesting to us and the vice versa for FaZe. Highest rate of play on them, Broke and Rain by Kratzer Martin. Those two are the overpass guards. We know Rain on that CT side loves to be in toilets, loves to be around with the rifle and Brokey roaming around with the AWP. So the stats are actually supporting what we're witnessing on the server as well. If we're hoping to see that synergy then coming out uh, from the Danes of Heroic, where exactly should we be focusing most of our attention coming onto this ground? I think it's very easy. I think it's a trade. I think it's the trade for Heroic that's going to make the difference. If we stand here and we talk about how FaZe so far in this tournament have 1.16 multi-kill rating on their CT side, it means that every single player has basically more than a kill in a round. But if you're Heroic, you cannot allow that to happen. Because I think FaZe, with the quality of roster they have, they can get away with murder sometimes. You will see Rain being in a position where he doesn't exactly have the perfect cover behind him. Maybe from a bird's eye view, Mahone could criticize the setup because there are some gaps to be found. But it doesn't matter because they have the equality to actually take the risk. If you're heroic, anytime FaZe take a risk and do not follow the actual rules of the Universal Counter-Strike, you have to punish. You can allow the first one to fall, but you punish. You do one for one for one for one, and then you play the trade, because FaZe will allow it. If you don't, if you actually let the FaZe player get the multi-kill, that's it. You're never going to have the space to play your game. The first half is going to be so, so, so important for Heroic. Yes. We know and we must assume they're starting on the T side they of are. Overpass. They are. There we go. That makes sense. We also know Overpass right now is one of the roughest T sides to play in the game of Counter-Strike. And FaZe, we reiterated, right? They're winning 70% of their CT rounds so far in this tournament. Let alone now talk about Overpass. They also win 70.5% on their CT rounds off that specific map the past three months. So for Heroic to just get four, five, six T rounds in the first half, that should be enough for them to mm. come into the game. Because face, they have a weakness on the pass, and that's their own T side. We've seen them run into a brick wall. We saw it against NIP as well, I believe, where once they can't really open up, once they can't find the openings, once they can't get the control and get the spacing on the map they want to, they don't know what to do. And what is Heroic's trait on that CT side? Taking away space. We see Tess is being aggressive in middle. We see Stown being aggressive in middle. So face is not going to get any space on that T side whatsoever. So super, super important for Heroic to stay in the game in the first half, and then for them to have a chance to close it down. I want to throw things back to uh, what Mads was speaking with Kaden about in the pre-match interview, saying that, you know, a potential weakness he sees on the side of FaZe or something that they can capitalize on is taking advantage of those individuals, uh, as we've so, so, uh, so spoken about. Um, if we're putting it in this context of obviously FaZe beginning on that CT side, where should Heroic potentially be pushing, be shoving, be potentially punishing FaZe? I think there are two avenues, there's two ways that Heroic really have to negotiate and manage correctly. First of all, it's range positioning on the A side, and at times he's going to take crazy risks, he's going to push towards A long, he's going to be at that fountain position and if you allow him once again to get the multi kill it's going to be an issue the other problem that Heroic and Kagan for that matter will have to figure out is where the hell is Brokey starting his round because that is also an underrated topic here on that overpass stage that there's going to be mind game between Kerrigan and Kadian in terms of where do we place our resource early in the round none of these players none of these teams are afraid of heavy fighting early in the round they'll do it if they feel like that's the moment to do it but keep an eye on Brokey he's not always going to be on A side he's not always going to follow the strip sometimes he's going to be short right in front of you. If they don't smoke Monster, that's because he's peeking you and he's going to be long at times. So Kadian has to keep an eye on Brokey. He to find multi-kills. Comes into the preparation, because you're spot on. I'm so glad you brought it up right here. Brokey is very unique. We already established that, but especially on the CT side of Overpass. How many times have you seen Brokey stand on that B side, like a turret, getting kills left, right, and center? We even saw it yesterday from a no-scope from heaven. That man is all over the place. That was criminal. Most, that was absolutely criminal. <laughs> Things that should be elite. Most, most AWP players in this game, they like to stay on A. They like to be on A long, they like to be in toilets, because that's safe haven for an orb. You can always take a shot, fall back. Take a shot, fall back. Brokey doesn't care. He's going to be in your face if Heroic will allow him to be in your face. So that duel between Brokey on the CT side versus Heroic on the T side, also a key factor in this game. We've spoken a lot about the stars uh, on the side of Heroic, namely Stan coming into the equation and how you know consistent he's been throughout this tournament. I do want to give some light you know, to the support cast as well, because the likes of Shush, the likes of Tezos, obviously Yabby uh, with some instrumental you know, info finding moments uh, in that game just yesterday in the semi-finals. How are we weighing up these guys then coming up against the star power of FaZe Clan? Well, I, I believe that in itself, in essence, Shush is an underrated player. Yes. I don't think Shush yeah. receives the praises that he should have. He's, I think it was Maui's name who tweeted something very interesting. Shush is a player to whom you devote nothing. You do not have to give him resources that this man is actually trying to check. That's oh. not going to work. He's plugged it. He's plugged it. <laughs> 
anymore. Oh, no. Shush doesn't receive any kind of backup, any kind of help from Heroic, and he still does it on his own. And that in itself is such a plus value that makes him underrated in my eyes. I 100% agree. I, I have shoes up there with the two best supportive element players in the world. I, I like to compare perfecto him to Perfecto. Shush. Yeah, Perfecto and Shush. Yes. There we go. Those are the two. And I think he's he's up there. He's one of the best walking out on the stage and having everyone shout at you with love. It was incredible. That's the first time. We haven't even discussed that during this that, game, right? That was the first time that happened for Hero yesterday. Because yes. we remember last year what happened when they were facing Astralis. Everyone was against them. Everyone was rooting for Astralis. But I've seen more heroic jerseys inside this arena than I've seen Astralis jerseys. And that, to me, is a testament. Shush is such an interesting character, right? Because I think to identify with him, he's such a journeyman. Yes. Like he's, not, he's not some kind of Superman, you know, where you picture him having powers the way Simple would do it because he can just not follow the rules of reality and he just turns out physics the way he can. I think Shush has to play with his attribute. He's re re relatively pedestrian, if I can put it first, but actually when you look at his actions, they are heroic. What he's able to do with the assets and the character he's had is crazy. He can be everybody. Anybody can be Shush if you really actually make it. And his work in that regard is underrated. To me, Shush was the most impactful player at the major for them. He did so so many great things. He, he does so much work on the server that doesn't necessarily reflect in the stats. And I know it's a, sometimes a bit of a weak argument saying that, oh yeah, we don't see it in the stats, so we don't really know what to, to quantify it or, or whether or not it's a good thing or something we're just, you know, imagining in our own minds. But I know from fact that Shus is one of those guys who's always taking the roles no one else wants. He's always doing the dirty stuff, always flashing for his teammates, always trying to do everything he can to facilitate the people around him. And then he also have individual skill. He's underrated, just like Perfecto. In terms of raw individuals, you would put them in star roles, they would have better stats because they actually have the attributes to do it. Yeah, incredibly selfless player uh, coming into things on the side of the Danes as well. Um, I do just want to reflect on the journey of Yabby too, because if we're sitting, if we're going to, you know, roll our time machine back to this time last year, obviously Yabby not on the side of Heroic, he was actually here in the stands cheering on uh, the Danes themselves. Yeah, he's had quite a year if you think about it. I think it started obviously with Copenhagen Flames yes. and the success that they had, which in itself was extremely commendable. This is how he stepped into the light and people started to know him. But I think that Considering his trajectory and his development as a, as, a, as a human being, as a player, the fact that he was jumping from Copenhagen Flames to Heroic, and he was supposed to be the piece. He was supposed to be the Rops of Phase, if we want to do the comparison. He was supposed to be the guy that joins the roster and ultimately makes it all better. And that, in his position, I think it was an incredible burden. I think he struggled with it at the very beginning. It wasn't really easy to be far away from living up to the expectations. But as the tournaments are coming and going, I think we're starting to see that he's got way more nerve than we thought he had. Allow me to be a little bit controversial then. I don't think Yabi okay. has been a great success in Heroic yet compared to how, I think, uh, how good I think he will be for the future. The potential of Yabi is much, much bigger than what we're seeing right yes. now. He's starting to find his footing. He's starting to contribute a lot on the server. We've seen him have multi-kills. The lurk role he has on the T-sides as well. He's finding a lot of space, creating a lot of chaos. But Yabi can be much, much better than what we're seeing right now. So the fact that we're looking at a Heroic that is probably the best they've ever been in a major final, in a final right here, and they can still get better, to me, that that's exciting. You know what's crazy about Yabi? I feel like he's been put in position sometimes where without having being at the top of the scoreboard and having a million frags, you need to act as if you had that confidence. And this is so invaluable for a player. For me to be watching their POV and to be able to ignore their stats, I don't care. I don't care if he's got only nine kills at that moment. The score is 14-14. You're going to have a duel in the next two seconds. Um, do I believe you're going to do it? And Yabi has been convincing me yeah. these last few weeks. He's been put in positions where if you buy by the journey of the game, he should not have any confidence. In fact, he should completely be flustered and fail, but he has stepped up. He has shown that he has that resilience, and that is something that Kadian can trust and count on. And props to Heroic as well for kind of giving us, you know, a more realistic example of how we should wear our expectations when you do make a roster change. I think we're very guilty as a community of kind of underestimating how long it takes to integrate into a team that we know Heroic was such a little tight-knit, closed community uh, of players initially. The fact that Yabi, you know, has to go into that step in to some different shoes. I've got to give props to him in terms of his progression over the last Yeah, the self-awareness within Heroic is, is up there with the best because you're right, you're spot on when you're saying being integrated into a, a very tight-knit lineup like Heroic, that's going to take some time. Before you feel comfortable in your roles, that's going to take some time. Let's not forget that Yabi is the most inexperienced player within that lineup as well. He's relatively new to the pro scene, had a breakthrough year with Copenhagen Flames and being brought into Heroic. And as Maniac said, he's already now a player that you trust in the big moments. That's a massive attribute to have. So I agree with you, some teams, we need to give them more time, but there's also other teams who rely a lot on the individuals where whether yeah. you give them three months, six months, or nine months, it's still going to be a shit show. <coughs> G2. You know what? I don't think we're too harsh. I don't think we are. 
I think we are aptly harsh. Yeah. Because I think being yeah. at the top and being the best in Counter Strike isn't something that pedestrian. It's no. not average. Not everybody can. We're not going to give years to everybody to show up. When a player is put into a hard situation, you put up or you leave. And if you cannot make it, then maybe it's time to think of something else. It is the team's responsibility and the player's responsibility to know how long they need to evaluate a player. When Bits first stepped in the shoes in Na'Vi, yes. he looked ridiculous his first few games. Blade said, listen, it's not ready yet. Back to the academy, but I see something in you and it's going to happen. He had that eye. He had that, that understanding of the situation. If Yabi had spent four or five months being a non-factor, just move on. Yeah. Not everybody get endless chances to be at the top of the mountain in Counter-Strike. I don't think we're being too harsh. I think this ecosystem is harsh because not everybody can be exceptional. No, I that's think, fair. I think that's a perfect point. Yeah. That's my whole issue with G2 as well, because you look towards that lineup. Not that this game is about G2, but they have so much potential and sometimes you just got to take it, right? Okay, we've had this roster for three or four months. We've done nothing so far move on. Whereas as a team like Heroic, it takes so much time to get in and feel comfortable, be a player that Kalian trust, etc, etc. So it's very different and we should we should judge it case by case. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, put up or shut up indeed. I think that's a very yeah. apt point indeed, Maniac. And I mean, when we're putting uh, the shoes on the feet of FaZe, rather, um, they've only been shut up in Rio so far sure. this year. It's been an exponential year for them. It's been a fantastic year. They have so much experience on the big stage in final games. And yeah, sure, Heroic most likely will have the majority of the fans in here. But don't forget how popular Kerrigan is in Denmark as well. I'm sure this is going to be one of those games that if FaZe will run all over Heroic, the crowd will accept, we will accept, and everyone will still cheer on FaZe. Because right now, they are one of the best teams in the world. They've had the best year they could possibly imagine. I know. I'm very, very interested to see how this final is going to pan out. I know, and we're all guilty of recency bias when it comes to FaZe. You know, they dropped it Rio and everyone was like, oh my god, what the hell is going on with FaZe? Roster change, come on, bring this guy in. They are still in what could be the most successful year in the history mm. of Counter-Strike. What they have won, Katowice, Cologne, the Major. Now they have still two more tournaments to play. They could lift the trophy here in Copenhagen. They're two maps away from it, and there's Abu Dhabi down the line. Talk about an absolute stunner of a year that Kerrigan could be had, and he's yet to write the last few pages. Yeah, that would silence any doubters coming off the most recent Rio Major. And the fact that when we look at that trophy cabinet for the side of phase, it's just hella stacked from 2022. And Kerrigan was saying, you know, it would mean the world to him to be able to lift his first trophy here in Copenhagen. He hasn't actually managed to do that yet. He hasn't managed to do it, no. It's, it's been it's been tough for him. He's lifted one trophy in, in Denmark. That was in Odin's at Pro League Finals, I think, four or five years ago when he was in Maus, and he shared out every Dane stream by beating Astralis in that final. He's never done it inside this arena, so of course it would mean a lot to Kerrigan, but honestly, it would mean twice as much to a guy like Kerrigan. Yeah. We talked about Heroic. We talked about how they have risen through all the rankings. We talk about now being one of the best teams in the world. The one thing Heroic hasn't done, and we haven't said it yet, is actually win something of importance on a big stage. Sure, you're getting into the semifinals at the Sure, you're getting into the final. Sure, you're getting into the final right here. But what happens if the conversation changes from Heroic being the team that they were great online, they're great on land, but they can never win anything? I don't want to have that conversation. So it means even more to Heroic right now to get a trophy on this stage that it potentially would do to Kerrigan. Well, everything has been leading up to this very moment for both of our teams entering the server today. Every clutch, every comeback, all the emotion. It is time to kick this grand final off. Copenhagen, Counter-Strike fans from around the world watching wherever you may be. Here inside the Royal Arena is where royalty is made. 
And that all started back in 2017 with SK Gaming. Then we moved on and we saw Na'Vi lift the trophies. After that, it was FaZe Clan, who could do it again here today, and they still have Brokey and Rain playing on this team. There is a crowd out there still for these guys. After that, Na'Vi became the first team to win inside the Royal Arena twice. FaZe Clan have the opportunity to do that here today, and Carrigan, in front of this Copenhagen crowd, he would have an epic chance to live out not just the best year in Counter-Strike for him, but a dream in front of his family and friends. But for Heroic, they could be the first all-Danish roster to break the curse of Copenhagen, to break the curse of the Royal Arena, and lift the crown. This trophy right in front of us. Let's see if they can do it. The Royal Arena. For years, we have returned to these hallowed halls. Where only a few have made the walk to the tip of the stage. Chants, screams, and thunderous applause. A new champion awaits their coronation today. Eight teams of hopefuls came to Copenhagen, battling it out for a chance of glory. Heartbreak, disappointment, elation, redemption. For those who fell short, the end of their story. The doors fly open and the crowd rolls in. Thousands gathered to witness the roars of the mob for the villain turned hero. A trophy so close they can taste it. This legend's puzzle is missing this piece. A Danish wall stands in his way. Eight challenges started, but now only two remain. This is where heroes are made. team of the year, one of the greatest to ever do it. FaZe Clan going for gold once again. A whirlwind of Counter-Strike strategy and style that you can't ever count out. This team was assembled to win and it has done exactly that. Ending the year on a high would solidify an achievement that is only capable for legends. Roki, Rain have already won here before. Can the rest of the team join them now in lifting that crown, lifting that trophy, and continuing their year of pure domination? It's FAZE CLAN! journey has been long and tiresome for Heroic, but they have never given up. From the online era to the biggest stages in Counter-Strike, from bombing out of playoffs to back-to-back -to -back grand finals, some said they would never do it. But today, they stand before you with a golden opportunity. This is their chance to finally lift the first ever elite trophy. This is their chance to wear the royal crown. This is their chance to take their seat on the throne of Counter-Strike legends. This is Heroic! The 
stage is set, ladies and gentlemen. Are we ready? We have Cadian, the Dane that was forgotten about, creating his own path to success. Stown, the young prodigy, growing as a player and becoming a star. Tessez, part of the core that made this all possible, always delivering. Shush, anything but quiet on the server, warring when the moments needed. And Yabi, from the flames to the family, anything is possible for this young man now. On the other side, Carrigan, the Dane that did it alone. You believed in yourself when no one else would. Rox, ascending to new heights under his leadership. Broki, honing his skills, never scared, always ready, never smiling either. Rain, always trusting, always delivering. He is the beast. And Twist, given a new lease of life on a European team, rising to the top once again. Copenhagen, Counter-Strike fans, do you want this grand final? Yeah. Carrigan, this is the trophy that eludes you. How does this feel right now? How bad do you want it? It's first time I'm having so much uh, support here in Denmark, and it's just fantastic to be part of this. And no matter what, Denmark will win today. <laughs> that is very true, my friend. Now, you've got the family, you've got the crowd, you've got this support. You smashed Heroic previously in this same tournament. Is it going to be the same again? I think it's going to be a way different game. It's going to be on stage in front of this amazing crowd. And, and what happened in group stage is two days ago. It doesn't matter. It has to not be in our head. But we just play our game. And I'm just looking forward to a bang out of a final. That's what we want, right? Now, Cadian. There has never been a full Danish team win this event. It seems cursed. Is that in your mind? Not really. You know, we've just been focusing on having a good time. We enjoyed the crowd yesterday. We want to give it our all today as well. You know, we played the major final and we kind of left with a lot of regrets. So today we're going to go all fucking in. Now this is a packed out Royal Arena. This is a special event. But these guys, they've had your number all year. How is it going to be different this time around, man? Yeah, they are a very experienced uh, squad, for sure. They won uh, three very big tournaments this year and had an amazing time. Had a little bit of a downfall towards the Major, but they've shown this tournament that their form is where it should be. So it's going to be a very tough opponent, for sure. But I'm also hoping that my boys here will keep doing their thing, because then I'm sure we'll have a good chance. I'm sure you will. Guys. Counter-Strike fans, are you ready? Yeah. It's time to bring the hype! Well, God damn, Royal Arena. I've got to say, you guys look beautiful tonight. This place is absolutely stacked, and it is nothing short of an honor to be bringing you guys this Grand Finals. Tonight, a Dane will win in this Royal Arena, and wow, what a matchup this could truly be. Obviously, coming off of the back of the Major, heroic, a lot to prove, and, uh, well, Kerrigan, he knows. He went on this solo mission, gathered all the best he could, and has collected these pieces to try and bring that trophy home here on this soil. Yeah, he knows just what to say, doesn't he? Kerrigan, <laughs> he understands what it means to the audience. He understands what it means to his country. He understands what it means to his team. And even though he has this goofy facade when he comes on stage and plays off of the crowd, he's also a vicious caller in the server and makes sure to use every advantage possible to make it as difficult for the other team to stay composed. And that's what Heroic are going up against at every single round in this series right now. And now that it's a grand final, FaZe Clans are the, are the ones who have seen this. They've seen themselves lift trophies so many times this year. This is just another one. And just like Maniac said on the desk, as much as this would mean to Kerrigan for Heroic, it would mean twice as much. A team that 
many people would say definitely can win a big tournament, but they haven't proven it just yet. And they had their best chance at the major, and that's gotta be a seething regret. Look at Katie and go. Said he left Rio with nothing but regrets. Doesn't want to have to go through that again. It's a short ride home, but it's one that's gonna matter so much more. Oh, you have got to love that. To get off on the right foot, everybody matching the same energy. Phase more composed, knowing they're going to take this one round at a time, see if they can set the tone, see if they're the phase that should win today. And if not, will rely on their different strategies to get back into the game. Heroic, the underdog with a ton to prove, but they know that they can beat FaZe. But the only difference between your matchmaking game, a scrim, your first open match, and then a tournament match like this, a group stage game in this grand final, it's the same Counter-Strike, but it's only the circumstances that change. Yeah. But that's also what means the most. And for teams to prove it in these circumstances, with the intros that we just saw from James, with the crowd right here, all cheering for one team or another. This is what proves who are the elite, who are the best in the world, and who will be remembered. The chance that, well, Kadian has taken up. I want everybody to just think for a moment. One year ago, this nearly same roster rises through the stage. Some cheers, some boos. But they've been harnessed. And now Heroic seemingly loved. That's a whole new world of pressure. That's something that they're not accustomed to, right? That's been this tale for Heroic. Okay. <laughs> wow. Oh, we got... See, there's strategies and then there's strategies. Ah, there we go. There's layers on this. What is this? Call that a fake. We've never brought science to stages. Wow. That's something different. Kerrigan. Well, that, that's the thing with Kerrigan. It, he was born to play in front of a crowd. Yes. This is actually, you know, two, two of, I would say, like some of the best showmen that we've got in terms of trying to harness crowds. Yes. Fact is, they're both fighting for their own country. Yes, they are. And their own legacies as well. You know, this is Kerrigan's best year in his career, on top of a magical career with plenty of great wins, but this one, the closest to an era with a major and with so many trophies with the best team that he's ever played with proving that he as an individual can also stand in these pressure times and not just give the advice to his teammates to make sure that they're calm. And that's in the story of Kerrigan. And what an incredible cherry on top it would be for him to win at home in the Blast Fall Finals and take down the yes. premier Danish squad. Yes, the last chance of a fully Danish team to kind of hoist this trophy inside the Royal Arena. Tonight, history is going to be made. Tonight, a Dane lifts that trophy at the tip of the stage. And so remember that each of you are also a part of this moment in Danish Counter-Strike history. So come new Copenhagen, let's get rowdy! Yes, sir. And we've got a great veto. Starting off with Overpass. So much history on this one map alone. A map that both expect to win. There will be no freebies in this veto. Into the silence. Phase, gonna walk into the short water. Who, oh, who draws first blood? It's rain. You wanna talk about the shortcomings of Phase at the Major? Well, that game on overpass to start it all, rain played out of this world. You know, we look to him as kind of the pillar, the stone golem of Phase Clan. Sometimes he movable, and right now he's just gonna hang on to the exact same position that he started this with. With Stown, he'll get him out. Give him enough time. They'll get that little bit of space creation moving. Fountain is where Heroic reside, but it is still man advantage. It is still easy B control, and it is still a daunting task to push this bomb forward. Yes, that should have been a very important round changing refrag that Stown just got, but with that answer back on the other side of the map, it is a CT advantage. And then no contact again, man, this tension. But as they get to that A site, so do the CTs. Faye is going to stop that bomb. Brokey, he's the one. He's the one who's been playing better than everybody else. He's the one that wants to recover. And sure enough, with two kills inside this A site, Stown will be shut out. 
It is phase to draw first blood. Yeah, it's important to know. It's important to know. Brogy is the best player on the server. We looked at the top five players here in this final. It was four fifths of Phase and Stown as the number two. Uh, he is surrounded by incredible individuals. And the cool part about Heroic, of course, is that they seem to clear the entire year with Stown as that main carry. But no top one player, no top two player, no top three player even. And yet they all still will have lopsided scores versus all of the tier one competition. That's because they pitch in as a unit. And they move so fluidly, they can be hard to find. Pistols trying to vibe for control here, but it's just a meat grinder out of the M-Force. Brain's gonna find Shush. Turn, no chance. Hell, Gabby's still holding on to the few flashbangs they wanted to use to get something going. But now he has to walk by his dead comrades. And he too toppled in the exact same place. Connector control made way too easy. Phase the second round smooth. Yabby's yeah, a player you would never expect to be playing in a final like this if he had not moved to a new roster. Of course, the Copenhagen Flames did incredibly well to make top eight at PGL Antwerp, but them all splitting up could have been bad and good for different, different players. But for Yabby, at first, he had the most natural move. He played badly at first, struggled at Cologne. After the break, started to improve, and now has had his best performances so far and has already made a major final appearance with his new roster. This is an enormous day for him and a big opportunity. Yes, and back-to-back -back finals appearances now. Rob's gonna take early damage. Heroic, stoic, sit back. Leave a cache of grenades for Cadian. All the while worried about Rain getting up into some wild antics yet again. Is he pressing out? At what point does he fight? You'll never know, but shush. He'll be the first to tumble. An attempted push through Monster that holds off for the time being. Rain, lesser weapon, doesn't matter, finds the better timing. And with timing, he takes Tesses. Yeah. So yet again, Heroic, met by a brick wall, whether that's at this B site or on A. So far, it's a struggle. Yeah, their odds already evaporate, down to three players. They are a team that play these rounds through, and but they wait for an opportunity and find one. One presents itself, sure enough. Rain, not just sat back but plays it active, costs him, gives Heroic a little room to wiggle, and they'll throw that util over top. Not to mention going and making sure that they pressure into these A sites. Sounds trying to puff his chest both ways. Heroic trying to keep Faze stringy. A thin defense would bode well for an early T side win, but they lean onto that single smoke and flash. Yabby at the entry. It's gonna be a peek from the right side. His fellow Dane attempts to take him, but it's twists instead from barrels to just continue to turn this one back. A little bit of life offered up here from Heroic, but a little bit of life is all Cadian has left. Yeah, and now they'll have to turn away. Hey, at 50 seconds, there were no odds of winning this round. That 3v5, Yabby found a kill that made the difference, and it gave him a chance to go for the attack. All that happened is it ended up costing them one more, and Faze off to a fast start. Not one of the things I expected today. If anything, I expected Heroic to have a fast start. Maybe Faze still come back and win the map, but... They gotta be feeling pretty good about collecting the first three. And this timing. Deep monster smoke goes down. Kerrigan jumps over just as it plumes, taking full advantage of anybody who wants to try to sneak through. No tricky stats tra strats are going to work today versus Kerrigan. We talk about Kerrigan for his land calling. I think that's a big thing because he can play that very optimized style of CS, but then he might just himself send someone twist through a smoke to go for an entry when he feels the time is right, when he feels the round, an opportunity presents itself. And that's the tricky part about playing against FaZe. And Heroic keeps some of that energy as well. And you better believe that they've learned from a team like FaZe and a player like yeah, no doubt. Kerrigan, of course. One of the things I love about FaZe as well, right, is you talk about how Kerrigan will throw somebody else into that danger zone. Well, they trust. They trust him fully. Brain of the operation, commander at the front, and right now, Commander with the three-round lead. So Heroic leaned back into the double AK, that which was saved. Few more pieces of utility added to the tally. And the question will be, what can they get going? Yeah. They've like. been stifled both at the front of A site, inside of Connector, and then outside of Monster. So a varied effort so far from Heroic. Fights on multiple fronts. All of them slide the way of phase. Mm -hmm. Here comes Shush. Oh, that's clean. That's with a gun. Little Tech 9 headshot into Rain. Again, the first member of Phase to foray for fights. 
and Stown turned back. Oh, when you see that con pressure and Stown almost is able to couple up with a kill outside Monster and that just turns it into a very real round. Bit of a reset. There's still, of course, a couple of concessions here for Heroic. Nothing will be given, but Faze a little shaken. Still the numbers leaning B, and again, it's just going to be the sole body from Heroic to try and pressure this A site. Kerrigan going to have to keep things cool. Tess at a distance with the Tech-9, not ideal, but we know that Brokey can do wonderful things from this pillar, and a missed shot does not bode well for him, but Shush still toppled. Another missed chance. T's attempting to get out, but to close this distance is a daunting task. Tess gets the kill towards A, simultaneous with Jabby down on that B site. And unfortunately for Tess it's a near meaningless amount of HP left over. There's a chance. There's kills both in mid and over towards that B site. Yeah. But it is still phased to maintain control and a flawless start on overpass. Yeah, ideas win tournaments, and that round was full of them. I really appreciate having not only this play where they're trying to take con control, press up outside monster, sneak it at the same time, but then Tessa's coming out late long. He actually can win this round, you know, only having a Tech-9 being on that part of the map. If he shows himself early and gets that kill, and his teammates get one on the entry, they take out Brogy, for example, everything falls apart for FaZe Clan. Economic shortcoming for Shush. Already out of grenades and no gun. We saw the capability of the Tech-9 and the ability to steal weapons away just one round prior. Shush keeps eyes towards that A-site. Make sure that FaZe have to play this honest. Can't hyper-extend outwards. Rop's content to just keep eyes down beneath. He's got a lot of support back behind him on the bathrooms. This is his role. This is his job. This could be his opening kill versus Tessas. Corner's cleared. Trying to piece it all together. Looks like two bodies maybe want to drop, but now it's just Brokey to play the contact. And again, just like Rop's felt safe, Brokey could have the same. Every meter of this map being fought for slowly but surely, inch by inch, they get in through the short water, which we've seen occupied before, and now they're going to head up top. So what was once the three-man setup, just on the exit of this door, has completely transformed. We've got Rops back on site, we've got bathrooms occupied by rain, and those two individuals alone could be far too problematic for Heroic to press through with these final 30 seconds. Bomb gets toppled. And yet again, Heroic will find zero footing on this attempt to close the gap to site. Smoke in the middle gives them a little bit of space to try and isolate against Robs, but Robs, one after another, continues to chew through Heroic. Twist is waited along, and so sure enough, it's four kill off of Robs and a final one from Twists. Yet to die, Robs nine and zero already. We saw some magic out of him yesterday on Nuke. I think he won that series six times over with just his kills alone. On this one, he stands strong here on long. Now, of course, there's a flaw here. Heroic for so much time off the clock, searching inside of Khan, never finding that kill, but feeling certain that somebody is going to be there. When they get up to the top of stairs, they don't have info on rain. They don't know who's left on the site. And you Playing can try to dark. take A, but you can't do it without long control when a two rifle setup is like that. Rops has great angles, opened up by rain. Yeah, I mean, we can see what Rops does when he sees three people peeking at the same damn time. But they gave him individual fights and he won every one. Rain pressured by the Tech Nines. This could be the chance. Fastest round yet out of Heroic. And it nets them an opening kill. Costs some HP. Kerrigan deleted by Javi. That's another weapon grabbed. That's another weak link. The chain starting to crack. Brokey off peaked out. Missed shot yet again. More damage. This was nothing but Tech Nines. Tech Nines in armor fed into the beast that is Rops. And he makes it over towards Optimus. Awaits Jabby. Another headshot comes out. Wow. And what do you know? Heroic with only Tech Nines have managed to smash their way through. Hey, a couple of sharp shots there from Yabby inside of stairs and also towards A. And that's a lock off. Finally, somebody has an answer for Rops when 11 and 1 up until that moment. So the phase 5 0. Will it end here? Of course, one left from the CT side, but the op shots in from Tessis. It's easy. He's looking for a great event as well. Had a struggle with some Rio, which wasn't a problem until we look at the finals. Overall, has been an important part of the heroic story in the last two years.
this is a massive find. It comes at the hand of a couple of mechanical errors, right? It's it's Rain getting caught off before he can shoot back and then not getting his kill. Brokey missing a shot, even though he searches the right angle and has distance. And then Yabby shining through all the interference with that first Tech 9 kill and then his picked up AK to take out Robs. I think that round's a great reminder to the things that Heroic can do, right? It's been a rather passive pace. This is like the European Furia at times, right? Aggression, consistent prodding on that defense. Re-aggressions like nobody else. And while you have to sit back and respect the individuals of FaZe, I understand why you try to meticulously take them down. A game of chess out of the gate here on Overpass. That one, a little bit more bold, a little more brazen. And it pays off. Back to the slower pace. Yeah. Oh, we see the sliver angle being held here. Another slow approach from Heroic. Minted up. Just a little bit of damage done on both sides to the two oppers. Money's in a weird spot for FaZe. Nade's nearly non-existent already. Robs and Rain back to back. There will be fights on both sides of this bathroom. And as Robs tucks in, the bomb dropped to his feet. Rain, nice recovery. But remember, he still has his job to do, and there's an additional member of the Heroic Squad on the other end, that's Kadian. So, at least, the bathrooms now belong to the T's. And now the rotational game. Heroic with a great opportunity, 3v3. 20 seconds, however. Yes, they know what they have to do. They know that they must extend forward, and twists on high alert will await them. Uh-oh. Fire on the bomb site spreads to his feet. Shush! Able to connect with two, and Brokey, another missed shot, means Heroic have managed to both clear out the bathrooms and extend into sight for a second. These days, you don't see two riflers stuck top bathrooms like that. Of course, Shadow Advantage on both sides, good fights to take, and they get their first two kills. That's a great start. But then they're locked into that spot, and there's a split coming their way. So Heroic coming through with the same patience they did in that previous round, but finding those riflers inside of bathrooms where they had hoped to see them last time. And this time, not just coming in through the bottom of bathrooms outside Banana, but instead going via Long as well. So calculated. They're thinking pragmatically. They've already seen patterns emerge. They're starting to read into FaZe's game. Now FaZe are without a dime to spend. Rain makes a ruckus as he falls away, so... Everybody remains on high alert. Potential threat of these pistols, but in reality, it is just the vanilla USPs. Not one penny spent. Odds of winning this one as low as humanly possible. I want you to call this one, Connor. <laughs> okay, I will. <laughs> yes, Heroic, get a third. Okay. Heroic, find it. Bomb waits outside of Monster just to be safe. Better safe than sorry, they say. Ooh, what's going on right there over that heaven smoke? Kerrigan's got a really nice place to perch himself up. Shoot 30 bullets. One of them's bound to land. Kerrigan still lives within that okay. smoke. They release the tension. They found a good site to take. It's wide open. Bomb will get planted. Faze just looking for damage at this point, of course. No retake will be possible. No, no resistance. Okay, so there's expectations for FaZe right in this first half when you mirror these two teams. Heroic are the better T-side team. They score 10% more on their, C on their T side. FaZe Clan significantly better on CT. Both great overpass teams, and they balance out in this way. Heroic looking for a quota. Once the pressure's been taken off of that bomb plant, Heroic gonna go hunt down the FaZe members. Sure enough, each and every one of them will fall. Rob's looking for a reason to die, and Shush will give him his release. It is heroic to three. It is early still on this T side. We've got Rops up to 12 kills. That's what's going well for FaZe so far. I think right now, FaZe game plan, we're seeing Brokey start B very often, right? Okay. Two riflers on the A site. It's not weird, but for FaZe, you don't expect that all the time. Brokey doesn't want to always be the rotator coming up bank, getting mollied out, sitting behind it, waiting to retake into the site. And in some of these situations, the round is one inside of bathrooms versus Rops and Rain. They both seem quite comfortable and had a couple of good rounds for themselves, but it might be time to change up. A 
All that money, all those nades, not one kit here for FaZe. You want to talk about those important shots missed by Brokey yesterday versus MIP. He was managing to have a great score line, but also on a couple of what could have been important rounds, missed sitters. Now, I think we've already seen a little glimpse of that already, right? When he rotates into the A site, same deal. There's Brokey starting A. When he's holding off on B, pillar shots missed. Hasn't cost them yet. But as this map in this series go on, it could. Here's the monster push. Jabby holds off. Not the second. No, sir. Kerrigan's going to take a ton of damage, but still gets away with his life and gets away with a 4v4. But still, costly trade. It's going to keep Kerrigan on weak knees. And again, to reiterate, no kit. Retake could be a daunting task for FaZe if it comes down to that. And Heroic double back, ensuring that because Jabby has died, there could be somebody preoccupying Outer Monster, which means if you push out from Connector, it could still just be already cut to the end. So, protocols in place and time to do so. This round will be worth two for Heroic if they win. FaZe just trying to tread water. For now, they are afloat. And with a hope that Rops can hold it off, it's a kill and a half. It's down taken low. Cadian's nade. Oh, it finds him in the bomb site. And with that pressure on the B site, we start to see FaZe get pulled over when in reality, it's the wool over their eyes. Bomb heads A. Yeah, and now the CTs, well, they know it. But are they too slow? Again, no kit. You cannot be slow. You cannot afford to do so. Brokey pressured out, pushes inwards. And there you have Heroic continuing to cut down this lead. Yeah, he's a great call. Great organization. Step hard, by step. Hard map to read. And the pace was so good. I mean, FaZe even pulled themselves right there without all of the info they needed that they need to go back to it. Something was wrong. But even at that speed, Heroic just a few steps faster. So they get in, put up four. And again, that round should be worth two. We have a situation where FaZe just don't have money. Heroic won't have to look into the eight ball to figure that out. It'll be obvious. Oh. Nice shot from Rob still. What? <laughs> I didn't see the flick, did you? Don't you ever forget the individual level of the FaZe Clan members. He's been pervasive, hasn't he, Rops? Helping out inside of bathrooms. Starting B that last round. Kills on both sides of the map, this time with the scout. Ooh. But he goes down, headshot for headshot. Cadian's got it. Cadian says, I do this full time, son. Sit. Brokey picks up what Rops had dropped and awaits his chance to shine. Man, it doesn't even feel like it's the individuals of Heroic right now. It's just Cadian bogging down FaZe in the calls. Ooh. The contact into the silence, into the rotations, into the commitments. It's so smooth. An excellent overpass T side so far. Little bits to get through here. Nice position from Kerrigan to push out. And, well, Twist will offer up something. Kerrigan missed chance. He's going to set up rain, but that also gets closed down on Jabby with another double. Heroic with another round. Tied game at five all. Rotations were good. They even had a big flank coming in from stairs. They had Kerrigan in an unlikely spot. There was a chance that that could have been lost, but Heroic, they didn't lose focus. Kept full awareness. Here's that first shot, man. Wow. Doesn't matter what range for Ross. It's all easy for him. Kadian as well, looking for a great event. Even though making finals, it wasn't like he was the second star on the team. At Rio, at Cologne, he struggled a bit. As a caller, his value is proven. His individual consistency, inconsistency is there. A little bit of a faster one. Kerrigan's got to be ready for everything. Oh, Brokey comes out from Connector. We're tunnel visioned on this pressure from Heroic when in reality, FaZe have the answer. And unfortunately for Heroic, there's nobody in place towards party because Shush has gone that much deeper. Look Shush you. goes beyond, but oh. he doesn't go above the likes of Rain. FaZe to take this back with three clean kills. The right players in the right position at the right timing yeah. leads 
to phases six by the looks of things. Katie and Intessis, full recovery mode. And it's going to be a tough one to get past Brokey. And that's one where it looks like Rain is ready for him, right? And, and they're running back to the site thinking, let's get out of this con and make sure we can go to a normal setup now because we don't need middle of the map control. Shot goes through the wall on both sides. Brokey, he's still alive, but now he'll be taken down. 35 seconds here to make FaZe sweat. It's Rain and Rops in the bomb site. An additional piece starts to rotate upwards. It's Believe not it like... or not, it's doable. Tess wants that contact. The moment he sees someone, they're all swinging for him. But if he can get that much closer, well, he can pick up that, and then the box gives him cover. But that box not enough. Rain able to extend around it, and Kerrigan, cold-blooded, sits at the side of the water and guarantees phases sixth. The lead is back in their hands for now. Yeah. This is a moment where it feels like Rain just shoves everything in a suitcase as fast as possible, runs back to the side, says, I know I need to be here, and catches that lurk right away, I think, versus any other team. Maybe a less likely play to make, but for Heroic, you have to be ready for these multi-pronged lurks. That's what they do on T-side. They'll take a second timeout, and it was five rounds straight for Phase 5 for Heroic straight. And now Phase once again back in the lead. They've breached the end of Monster. They've breached long. They've taken A through bathrooms. They've attempted everything except for a full-on short play, and that leaves it very difficult for FaZe to try to figure out what may be coming next. I think one thing we've seen in terms of patterns from Heroic, of course, a lot of con control to start things off. That opens up that seven-second rotation down the stairs, a very important part of the map. But if FaZe don't want to participate in that, there are other ways for the CTs to win. But if it's free map control for Heroic, why would they turn that down? We'll see if they continue back in the same direction. Utility all coming out of this T-spawn. We get a quick bunching of the heroic players here outside of Monster. Again, attempting to get that early damage in, but no contact really made. It's Kerrigan and Twist inside B. Hey, that nade, I mean, that could have landed in a good spot. Not this time. We don't have those quote-unquote heroic nades just yet. Met by another smoke. If they were about to pull the trigger, they must wait. The thing was, some early information was gained from Brokey early on. Pushed out, saw into playground. Okay. Well, that's why Rops just arrived to the beast stack. He's meant to bolster this defense. Boy, it's not nice from Twists. Kerrigan's still alive. Fresh bag in, but Tess S's Glock will get that job done. And of course, all the while, Stown awaiting any kind of contact to come from Connector. It is not the case. Just as he looks away, Kadian <laughs> killed by Rops. Back and forth from Graffiti, the AK finds its headshot. And it's rain from up and above to look and hope and scour into this B-site. Tess at the half health, swinging with the op. One kill to his name already, and the star of Heroic, the hands down highest rated player for them on full health, waits for a chance to shine. And maybe he may not be needed as Tess tests them. Brokey and Rain continuing forward, spotted out by Stown. He pulls the trigger, smoke atop the bomb. Nade finds its home. Brokey can't. Oh, no, he can't, but he does. He simply sticks it. A retake from FaZe in a 2v2 that Heroic can't stave off. Wow, the smoke goes down on the B site. The spam isn't lined up. I don't know if that was on our end only. That's on. Yeah. Oh. That's that smoke could have gone to short and it didn't go on the site. That actually gave him a chance to be able to get that kill and win the round. Yikes. Indeed. All for Heroic, another full buy. Money to spend here in round 13.
Right back to that original style. Again, that opening set up last round. Brokey was deep peeking into playground. And now he gets some early info. Once again, from a new position. Not enough to make a decision, but... What? Oh, he's not ready! Tessas has a teammate ahead of him with a knife out. Rain shoots his bullets through both flashes on top of one another. And it's a tough call for Kadian to try and push through, even despite Rain being nearly dead. He holds, and Brokey, well, he's just picked up the kill towards Shush. Kadian, the only member of Heroic to bring this back, gets that angle through the upper bathrooms. Jabby decides to chase. Good chance, just as the smoke fades. Kerrigan, well, he dies next. Kadian and Jabby on an absolute recovery mission in this moment. What we've seen right here is Jabby, every single time there's low numbers, he's finding a kill that can actually change the course of the round. Eyes back on Brokey and Twist now. haven't converted all these opportunities. The fact that they've even evened this one out. All the while, Kadian's actually sitting outside the B site. Jabby, he's gonna try to sell this to set up Kadian's success story. This would be the two versus five. In a round after, what they need oh. is a recovery and Jabby's kill to twist is big. Brokey's stuck here. Kadian planting on the other side of the map and Jabby's just keeping Brokey preoccupied. The longer he lives, the better. Oh, oh my god! god. Oh my god! <laughs> Jabby, you didn't hear of him until this year. You know, he played at Stockholm, but he wasn't nearly as famous. And now he's playing like he's been in the Tier 1 for years. These last couple of months have been beautiful for him. Oh, what a shot. But it's the initiative that he's willing to take on a team that can be so hard to figure out. Joining a roster like Heroic, like you, like you drew the comparison to Furia. Imagine trying to slot into a system like this, so unique to the game. And that was a roster move that was criticized at the time. Refresh. We've seen far poorer performances not get replaced, but they said they needed somebody who could bring in a little bit of extra X Factor. Well, that's the X Factor. Yeah. Five Xs, five deaths against FaZe. 2v5. Wow. A recovery between Javi and Kadian. Damn, did they ever need it. Tessess refuses to go down. Brokey tries to peek out for the bathrooms. Rain hoping to end what Brokey got started because there are members of Heroic wounded, no doubt. And yet all five remain alive. Yeah, that's the perfect feel back right there. They escape. Rain, who was willing to swing as wide as ever to get that. But at a certain point, it does become dangerous even for him. There could be cover from a third T. So I'll have to just walk this one off. 50 seconds. 5v4 here for Heroic. Although two players are low, I think they'll take that exchange every day of the week. And once again, this round worth two for Heroic. Low HP players with still grenades to throw. Looks like Tess will be the head of this. An attempt into the A site that is quite understaffed, but Rain nicely done through that smoke. Five seconds to spare, bomb's gonna be planted, no way to stop this other than spam. And for FaZe, it simply will not connect. Not after that first one out from Rain. We get the long player pressing in, Jabby now a part of this, Robs eventually will flank, and as he gets closer, he finds a head turned. Executes Jabby with ease, to keep this 4v3 in the hands of FaZe, Rain presses forward, Kadian the next up, and Robs has got his number. Tess low HP this whole entire time, still holds on, just like Stown. Some say the best op in Denmark, Ooh. and while he lands that no-scope, it's not yeah. enough, but the time is on heroic side. 7-7. Seven, seven. He wins it, it's down to Stown. Give this kid some shine. That retake was going. Everything fell into position right there. FaZe had all the advantages they were looking for. They didn't kill the most important guy, though. Oh, and Stown 
pulls him as far away as possible. Just gives him the tip, sees the off, has to come get it, has to unearth down from his trench. And that said could be, or should have been for two actually. They still scrape together a very decent buy. But Brokey powering up. An overt risk to press into the fountain like that. And what's Heroic's answer? They're going to try to go test this B site. Kerrigan maybe in for a world of hurt. His countrymen press against him. Jabby catches Twist at the exact same time. That was a two man setup, and they get nothing. Rops awaits them over on short, but all around him, his team has died. FaZe with a 5 0 start have seemingly lost this lead unless, unless Robs can be cooler than ever, and that is simply not going to happen tonight. A one-round lead as Heroic will take to the defense in only a moment. Hello, everybody. This is the EPOS experiment, and things are about to get a little wild around here. We've got two players coming in, and we're going to be testing out gaming environments. Two laboratories, let's say. One with chaos, one with zen. One player will receive comfies, candles, and a noise-canceling headset, and the other one, well, complete and utter chaos. And so without further ado, I present to you guys our players. Yekinder. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> nice sound. Man. Always a pleasure. I'm gonna switch it up. You guys are gonna be playing a one versus one in separate rooms. Things are gonna get very different for each of you. And that's where we're gonna kind of leave it. I think it's about time we let the games begin. The first experiment's underway. The first experiment, it's not much of an experiment. We wanna let these guys size each other up. We want things to be even. We gotta figure out before things get crazy, Who's actually coming out on top when it becomes Yakinder versus Stown? Let's go. Clearly, it seems like Yakinder's got the hot start. Uh, but what Yakinder doesn't know is what's to come. So we'll let him enjoy his moment. We'll let things go as they do. Uh, at the end of this, though, things get interesting. This was the easy round, okay? This was when things were the most normal. All right, round. So, Stan, we're gonna send you back to your room. Some things stay the same, some things are about to get very different. We got the bathrobe here. <laughs> some candles. That's pretty nice. I'm down to play some CS. In your kinder's room, we're gonna start to crank the dial, so to say. Let's hit it. So, <laughs> what's this? <laughs> <laughs> if you think it's gonna distract me, it's not gonna work. Okay, maybe it does work. <laughs> Chill out, I'm losing! <laughs> Four. Focus, Tony. We need to win this. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> We're all wrapped up. I need to know, what was the worst part about that, Yekinder? What threw you off your game? Well, the sound, the sound that I heard was the distraction. There yeah. we go. And, and Stan, what was going on over there? Yeah, as, as you can see, I'm in the, this bathrobe, yeah, some nice slippers. Yeah, it was a fun game. Well, there you have it. The EPOS experiment all wrapped up. And uh, at the end of the day, it seems like that EPOS Zen room definitely fanned better than uh, the chaos we got up to in here with you, Kinder. I hold the here, yeah. nice. Give me a smoke, guys. Yeah. Roll out the bank, guys. Yeah. I cast a combo here. Yeah, roll out talk. Hi, I'm Okay. Pass for yourself. I cast a right for us. I can max two now. Roll out bank. I can't check it. Roll out talk. 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 Roll out and so Heroic set to begin the CT side with a one round lead. Very cerebral calls. Feels like everybody from Heroic's on the same page. And they followed through with what was a very clean and honestly collected game plan. From the start of that T side, it was piece by piece and map control. And they followed through when given their moments. So let's see what FaZe can do on their offense. Shush 
It's back into the site. Jabby's right here with him. And FaZe, unlike Heroic, not stoic. They get as aggressive as possible, straight to the B site. It's only Kerrigan to bring down one. And the Berettas of Jabby attempt to connect, but it's down up next. Man advantage, and all of a sudden the FaZe's members falling all inside this B site. Bomb nearly irretrievable. A quarter of Rops' health left over. And Heroic, they want blood. They want nine and they'll take it. Yeah. Where there's one, there's three. That's the story of Heroic and their CT rotations. They were quick to this, and Yabby does a great job of staying alive. I mean, he gets the two kills that he does, but when they can't clear back pit, they can't get that bomb down. That's usually the easy part of the round. Sometimes you can let that guy stay alive, but he was just such a pest. Continuously coming in from different angles. Heroic take a ninth. They've done enough. If we look at their history on overpass right now, they've, they usually win around 45% of their T rounds. They came out ahead numerically. It's FaZe Clan close to 70% of their CT rounds. So not an abject failure by them, but it might be a map costing half from what we saw. And now they don't get the pistol. The problems compound. Cadian senses an easy kill, and sure enough, you'll find it. Rain can sit and wait all he wants. It's Cadian to take an initiative, but check this out. We've got a really deep spot from Kerrigan. He's already slid into the bank. What in the world do we have here? It's down. He's going to get into the corner of the truck, and Kerrigan with the knife out. A sight is his. Draws blood in the Royal Arena. And Robs gets gushed, but Twist is able to find the bomb plant off of this. Now, Kerrigan's still hanging on to that M4, and Cadian recovers a little more real estate over on Long. That M4 hits the dirt, so all seems good. Twist's Glock up next, and really, they can just piece this one together. It's a 10-second defuse, but Brokey's so far removed from the situation that a Heroic will let this one slide. Okay, Kerrigan, get away with your shenanigans. Yeah. It's some money in his back pocket and a bomb plant on top of it, but it is heroic, double digits. Sometimes it's about the money and sending a message. So I think he got a little bit of both right there. Nice to do that in a round like this and just show the other team, well, you've got to watch your back, even in your own damn sight. And that can be a moment where it's down. Whoa, he goes, what, what did we miss? What were we not watching right there? And can we lose this round? And it was definitely possible. The bomb plant, though, is still a win. The $1,500 is still a win for FaZe. Yeah. And they come into this full buy feeling pretty okay. If anything, you're just grateful that that kind of a situation happens when your opponents don't even have armor or pistols or anything firing the Glocks. So it'll be an early warning sign that Heroic can certainly deal with. But here we go. Phase in with the buy. Chance for the T side to truly begin. Again, they struggle on T side. They do not like this side of this map. It's not like they've always been bad. T side overpass, but like it's been an issue for them. But again, no freebies in this veto. Heroic pick it, the expectation to win it. But if this is your best map to pick versus FaZe Clan, you've already got some problems. They know that. FaZe is going to be real meticulous. Caution, the name of the game in this first buy round. But oof, almost catching Tessas in transition. It's a little chip damage versus a little weapon, right? Remember, two MP9s here in the pocket. They're split between the rifles. And FaZe are starting to get dangerously close. And unlike other rounds where you sit inside of this bomb site, we have Heroic extending to the bathroom, so Tessas given a chance to shine. It is a good amount of damage, and yet Twist still stands. How about Jabby? What's he gonna offer? One kill only, as Kerrigan slides right through him. Kadian attacks off of the B site. We've got Stown inside of the pocket, and we've got that bomb trudging back to the B site. Shush silently awaits them, and he drops Brokey on a moment's notice. Rain picks it up, Oh. And he's going to try to plant inside smoke. He, yes, gets away with it. But still, still Kerrigan could take this from their hands. 
Where is he, they wonder? He sees one up in heaven. A slide off of the side gives Kerrigan another chance. He's worried about both ends. Oh. Insta headshot into Shush. Tries to get it off. Stown, a peek, and an empty gun. He holds, and time continues to tick. Stown goes silent. Kerrigan almost lost, but finally falls. It's the USP of all things. Ooh. Of all things, he finds him. That was... A battle of attrition. Right there, the amount of ammo left. Actually, we were watching that from Kerrigan's POV. Stown Ulta only had a few bullets, so he was trying to be careful about when he would click. Man, Rain walking into the bomb plant. How tricky was that? And not planting on default and not planting good for heaven right in the middle of it. Nearly set Kerrigan up for that victory. There was a chance. He needed that sick one tap that you don't always see from Kerrigan, and he couldn't put together. But there was pressure on Stown. Using that silence M4, running low on ammo. Had to switch out and barely put that together. But Heroic don't care how. They got 11. Two knife kills already this game. <laughs> Speaks to how scrappy it's been. Bai comes in with no sniper. Rops 20 and 12. Doing his best Brolin impression. Serious. Well, he was the Brolin of Nuke himself as well. Trying his absolute damnedest to go above and beyond. I think splitting pistols is the most interesting result for this map. But of course, with Heroic's great T side, they'll be over the moon. have this game three quarters one and we'll see if the pressure gets to him again not being able to see yourself as the champions that's the final hurdle for heroic flash into pop plays not going to complicate this one but it's even simpler for heroic it seemed a kill a piece from shush and jabby katie and quickly sprints over because of the pace of all this, Heroic kind of caught stunned by it. Relying on a multi-kill to come through. There's no utility here for FaZe, none whatsoever. And that frag grenade thrown out off of the bomb plant will do negligible amounts of damage. Kerrigan gonna be fine. What's the strat? What's the retake? Twists, commits to the closest of corners. Kerrigan falls back around the side. Twist regains his vision, lines up two! They try to press in and Twist shuts them down. And Cadian's life, his weapons, far too valuable. He leans back. It's a rapid pace from FaZe. They press in through the monster smoke. They run an overt risk, and it pays off. Yeah, so deep A control oh, on that round. It ever. Deep A control on that round from Heroic with three players all tied up. Very resource heavy on that side of the map. And the thing was that FaZe didn't test them there. So they couldn't get the rotation back, and that's what opened up Monster. Of course, they have to go 2v2 through a smoke versus two players waiting for this hit to come in, but successfully they do it. You know, Yabby, even with his last bullet on his last frame, gets a frag that could have been even worse. So FaZe with still some tricks up their sleeves. They siphon the economy out of Heroic. Robs is going to catch SS. Pistols meant to do nothing. Destined for an empty-handed round. Here comes Brokey, right back in it. And so Heroic's measly attempt at a long push nets them nothing. Man, great map so far from Yabby. Great map so far from Kadian. A lot of the players, of course, on the team have put together kills. Even Stown, this time at the bottom, which is not a regular feature here at the Fall Finals. He's been the standout player for the team. Had that really important clutch in the first half as well. Kind of the only standout, right? That's the formula for Heroic. He is really just leaps and bounds above the rest. When it comes to phase, it's always who pops off this game. Yeah. Feels like skill ceiling Almost always Almost which equal. two. Yeah. Yeah. Brokey and who? Brokey and Twist, Brokey and Rops. And sometimes Rain. Sometimes Rain. 
And if we're really lucky, Kerrigan. Kerrigan, Kerrigan sometimes, too. There he is. Came out the first time uh, last year with the Batman mask off. This time, yep. full-on Danish flag. I think most people I've talked to here said, yes, we love Kerrigan, but a full Danish roster, that's won us over. Right. Yeah. No matter how popular is for Ker Kerrigan is more popular than any one player on Heroic. Mm -hmm. But they've got the country behind them because they are all five. Are you guys having fun? Good. Yes, I am. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Counter-Strike in the Royal Arena. It's exactly where it belongs. So let's get back in it. Off of the tech, or excuse me, tack pause. We get guns on both ends, and look at this. Heroic. Wow. Ooh, they want to run the risk. Oh, they want that fight. A potential bloodbath inside the playgrounds. And Brokey, thinking he can throw the nades, is suddenly just caught off by Shush. But Stown, fully blinded out by Twist, won't make the difference. Fight inside Connector possibly as well. Kadian immediately pulls back. They've done enough. They've got enough. Twist thought he could take his time. They had no idea about how deep those two CTs were. I thought, if anything, it was just the long fight, right? Seeing yeah. somebody extending out long, that's one thing. You don't anticipate the players pushing beyond the fountain. And this is psychological from Heroic. We just talked about how resource-heavy that A setup was last round, and then they got punished by that B attack that came in. Well, Heroic, go for it again, and they call out FaZe for not doing it twice. When we saw FaZe play on Nuke yesterday, how many A attacks did we see going in succession on those upper pops? So that takes some nerve from Kadian to say, hey, they're not going to try it twice. Right. Called out. I do love that we get this battle, the Danish in-game leaders. You know, one who's proven so much and another who's been doubted for so long. Shush. Trying to finish off this fight towards Long and he keeps it nice and clean. Sure, he'll fall to Rain, but now Rain's got to double back, grab that bomb, bring it back into the site if he even wants a chance to try and grab FaZe's 10th round win. There's some money on the side of FaZe, so he could run this risk. Rain gonna go ahead and try to shine, but Kadian puts a very quick end to him. First shot, first kill, and Heroic, a three-round CT lead. Yeah. It's a big 12. Still money here, but again, I think we could look at these last two rounds as setup victories for both teams who won them. FaZe Clan really taking advantage of not pressuring the A setup while there were too many people there, and now this time, running into a full-on A setup where Heroic might have been afraid to do a push like that. The Battle of the Mind Dames continues. Round 22, what look do we get? The reason the stats for Heroic can be all over the place sometimes is because of how fluid they are on their CT setups. We're going to see different people in different spots, and their mid-rounds are so dramatic with the way that they rotate around, do it in pairs, reclaim map control. It's hard to even call one spot, one players. That also means you have to figure out how two different people will approach the same situation. Added value for Heroic that they're comfortable in that uncertainty zone, you know. Faze look to try to figure this out. Again, the battle's set, the trench is occupied. And Stown's the first to go over top. But all the while, Kerrigan extends on the other end. Stown is still inside of the pocket. They think with that kill, they can press into the A site. Kerrigan doubles back, loses out to Stown. It was his turn all along. And with a double man advantage, Jabby comes up, executes Rops. Faze getting circled and bogged down in the muddy battlefields of bathrooms. Brokey, a missed shot over towards the site with no bomb on his back. He feels as though his time is limited, and unfortunately, son, it is. Oh, it is. Wow, they get surrounded in the most unpredictable way. And in this position, they forget about Tessus inside of the bathrooms, don't know that he'll be there. And it almost feels like with Kerrigan getting his kill on the player with nades, it's like that false confidence face thing. Yes, this timing, it has worked out. Brokey under siege. And do you believe it? Three kills in an instant. Have you painted him into a corner or are you just in that corner with him? He holds. <laughs> he holds. Hey, it, it, it might be as important as it was impressive, even though it was just exit kills because 
It's the one gun they save into this next round. Nobody else has money. And it's a lot of value down as well. If this game goes away a phase, of course, at some point, the economic impact will matter. But right now, I mean, now Heroic just tell themselves, yeah, we couldn't get that op down. No big deal. In fact, looking at the odds, if they buy behind it, if that's the world we live in, well, they've got a crappy buy behind that. We know it. And if they don't, then we're playing an anti-eco. Either way, we have nothing to worry about. But did they jump at him with an op? I think so. Yeah, so they lose theirs. They just threw everything at oh, that. Okay, okay. No that, caution. That's actually the third side to the story. We'll see if that makes a difference. Bro, he's so flashy sometimes. And FaZe no, right? They let Brolin get away with a gun versus NIP yesterday. And it cost them around, so harness that energy. Harness that fresh reminder. We've got an MP9 pressed against the wall. Tess oh, he lines up both! A phenomenal flash from Tadian! Exactly what Tess needed to go above the just one oh, so, and take away a second. So well placed. Tess isn't blind at all. Comes out right after his first kill. Couldn't have gone better. And making the most of the smallest weapon. You know, that was the liability on Heroic's round. And it comes up wonderfully with two. That's trust. Tess dies for his captain. Drops Twist and Kerrigan in the meantime. Yeah. Make the most of an awkward situation. Leave it at a 4v3. Looking for 14 rounds after a full investment from FaZe. And the money will be clear as day to Heroic. That this was a desperate buy. Tessus nearly makes more money than he spent just getting those two kills. Oh, nice Kadian cool. with the off angle. He sits, he awaits them. Even while blind, he's fine. Of course, there is this chance oh. that the bathroom's player can crack open the bomb site, and then Kadian's compromised on both ends. Down to the 25 second mark, Kadian's smoke soon to fade. It's him versus Rops, who has a lesser weapon and who's already cleared out the corner but loses his head the moment Kadian has vision. The little bits left of phase. It's an attempt to press into the A site. They know that Kadian's over on long, and that dumpster player doubles back over towards bank instead. Kadian still hangs on, but Rain gives great cover, and we've got the bomb plant. You've seen a Brokey clutch before, and he's got the smoke to his left side, a slight gap within it. That's the pocket. He opts to play, but damage is in early, and Heroic will find 14. Yeah, they do it. Shots in from all sides. And another sigh of relief. The important rounds this game, Heroic, have been the ones to win them. Devastating for FaZe Clan. Now listen, most of the time, if you were in the middle of a half, then you might think, oh, we don't invest. We don't have quite enough money. We can't get that off on Brokey. But they're playing against 15. This is also psychological. Do they want to let it go to 15? Or do they want to try to stop it now? We'll have to do it with a handicap. Another bad buy. Fast push. Gabby wants a piece of this. They're not giving FaZe a chance to set up. They're not giving FaZe a chance to reclaim any kind of territory. No map control, no info. Just death and destruction, and at least for phase of trade. At least. Still so little. We've got numbers pressing in again, heroic. This is what they do, right? This is that, that classic heroic look. Re-aggression upon re-aggression, and while Rob turns his attention, Shush slides in. He looks back towards connector and Kerrigan double headshot. It's a recovery for phase. It's a man advantage. A slight victory and a slim chance but a rare chance that they've had on this T side. Yes, this is the best they've felt in a while. To keep Heroic off 15, to keep Overpass from simply slipping through their fingertips like sand. FaZe have lost their grasp on this game. 5-0 start, need I remind you. They can't turn this hourglass back over. They've got to do it now. With time running out, they're going to opt for this B site hit. The defense lies in wait. Who other than Kadian to keep that scope up? But if C watches towards short, he's not going to find a target, no. 
with this utility. They can simply fixate inwards. Tessa's still cautious up at A, but oh, and over face. Twists, offers Katie in a gift. And with Bomb down, we've got ourselves a critical 2v2. Smoke and a flash, no kit. Had a fall back off of the bomb site. They're gonna try to double this up. Kerrigan leans on short, tucked behind the bags. Tessa's down, dirty, in the water. And an instant headshot as they try to transition inwards. Still remember that utility. It could be so incredibly key. Look at the impact already. Brokey blind, hoping for a chance as Smoke denies his vision. But no kit. A 10-second stick. Halfway already. Heroic on the brink of 15. And Tessess will grab it. Woo! Oh, the crowd is on their feet. It's one of the most excited that we've seen the Royal Arena in a grand finals. Twist Peaks logs, dies to Kadian. Kerrigan beat short, dies to Tessess. 2v1 retake advantage. After Kerrigan's 2K. And they still don't do it. No 3v2 conversion. That's not a stat we often look at, but I guarantee you that's converted more often, times, more often than not. Twist low, so much utility damage. Ooh, and Shush, just like last round, kicks off this party inside of Short. He's not alone. It's just a delayed play from Jabby. Him versus Rain to take man advantage. And Rain is inside of the smoke. He's going to try to emerge. And Jabby anticipates something like this. No, Rain, beauty of a second headshot. Man advantage isn't enough. Kerrigan. All the while, gonna try to test the waters inside A, test S. Nope, Ooh. not this time. Kerrigan with a deep hook on that A site, and with Bomb back in T-spawn, it's gonna be a long recovery. But it's a long, tumultuous road to the top if FaZe wanna bring back this map no matter what. So this really just an indication of the journey that needs to be here on Overpass. Yep. Six rounds consecutive, just to force OT. Stown. You'll find the back of rain. And the economy's not blossoming for Heroic, so this op, this AK, they'll be saved, and this one will be conceded. It's a five-round game for FaZe to still try and reclaim it back. There's something intangible but nice about being able to get 10 rounds and say you did. Just get it to the double digits to make you... to have people agree the game may have been close. Of course, that's not good enough for FaZe Clan. This is Heroic's map pick taking overpass. But they know that phase on their best day could easily win it. Right now, they've proved so much and have five more chances to play. The persistence of this op being carried forward is huge as well. Again, Kadian, great map. I gotta say, though, Yabby, top frag here in Grand Finals on map one for Heroic. Yes. And it's been unreal kills every single time. Never, in fact, have I seen Yabby swing out with two people and get a refrag. It's always been him by himself going slowly off of short. We had that 2v5 situation in the first half where Yabby gets a kill with no help. They picked him up to bolster the team, and he's stepped up to the challenge. He is moving rounds forward where there would otherwise be no hope. Kadian said it, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, or at least they have to think of it that way. Who knows what the state of affairs looks like the next year here in the Royal Arena. Of course. When they left a major full of regret because they had the chance to beat a team who wouldn't likely have been in finals and still lost. Yes. And that could be the only chance at a major that they ever get. I think it's, it's something that was very fresh on everybody's mind after the pandemic. You never know it, when your next chance is. Never take anything for granted was yeah. the attitude across all of Counter-Strike. And Kadian looking to embody that tonight. Yeah, he said playing against Furia in Rio was the hardest thing he's ever done. And they survived that challenge. And now he has the crowd on his side. But what he doesn't have is an arsenal for his teammates to swing with. We've got three pistols. Kadian's up, Stown's AK, and FaZe, whoa! FaZe try to push, and the pistols tear them apart. It's still winnable. It's absolutely winnable as they clear out those pocket positions, but still, a quick reminder to keep FaZe on the tips of their toes. Well, 
FaZe are scared. They have the site, but they have not moved. Stown slides off. Brokey concerned about the long flank, and that could create the timing that would give them a chance. It's a trade. At the very least, it's a trade. But listen, it's the three pistols that they've lost, and they've still gotten into the two versus two. The lesser weapons Whoa. did exactly what they needed, and if they leave that B site, Oh, if they walk away, then Kadian could deliver. It's a knife in the hands of Rops. But it's not as though he's pressed for time. He's simply unready. And so it falls onto Twist to try and save the day, to try and keep Overpass going. The only North American to take up the task of coming to European soil to compete with the best. And he puts that bomb down uncontested. Heroic. Kadian and his right-hand man. The tension is thick. The stadium silent. Twists, rounds, back. And with Kadian holding on to that smoke, it needs to be another 10-second stick. The question is, where is he and what will he do? Spotted and stowned down. Kadian, this is his moment, a chance. But again, it's time. Time is the most critical issue. And even though Kadian wants it, oh, he simply play. will not get it. The kill is his, but the time is not. And FaZe continue the comeback. Ooh. Good movements from Mr. Canada. Twist in that 1v2 after Robs dies. You know his heart sinks. Everything comes down to him and both of his exit points are locked off, and they also know what FaZe's idea was from that point on. He has almost no advantages besides the respect that they gave him to get that bomb planted. Kadian playing from heaven but not watching down on the site. That was an open shot for him, but he didn't want to throw the round away. Twist planted, 17 seconds remaining, and made that happen. Guns Kadian back up. maybe a little nervous this there. Dropped his smoke. Sure. Back pit. Sure. Oh, wow. Oh, Tess has this is information. Oh, he's opened the encyclopedia. Oh, they ran. He's learned everything he needs to to go absolutely huge. And that means that Kadian can play on high alert. So, of course, he's ready for that first one. And the bomb goes down. Tess buys time, strikes. And when the pistols in the last round made it so close, it's guns in abundance and a recovery here from Brokey. Highest rated player for phase across the event. It wouldn't be the first two versus five. But it would be the first for FaZe. Tessess, just as he quietly snuck from party onto long, retreats away and gives that space back to FaZe. But think about their nervousness. Think about their shaky hands. And sure enough, now they tremble. Now Brokey stutters. You can take that bomb, you can continue on, but this journey about to come to an abrupt end as Heroic will hold all fronts. Bathrooms is theirs, Playground is theirs, A site belongs to Heroic, and on Overpass, it seems they've done it. Brokey's gonna try to chase this. If he's to unravel this, this incredible puzzle, he needs the kills and he needs them now. Just like last round, time will make a difference. Except the biggest difference is unlike FaZe, this one belongs to Heroic! We're here in the El Giganten store where I'll be doing the Hidden Talent Challenge. I'll be joined by S Attack and Shoes, who will have to see whether or not they're as good at spotting talent outside the server as inside the server. Each will get 60 seconds to run around the store and find some hidden talents. They'll have to bring that talent back to me, where I will be delivering them some tasks they have to solve. Once the time is up, I'll be the judge and give out points to either Shoes or S Attack for how well they've done said challenge. Hey man, can you help me out here? Det er ham, der skal afgøre øh, vores kunst. Ja, hvem der har det flotteste af mig og Isis her. Okay. Så jeg vil meget gerne vinde. Alright guys, so uh, we found our two hidden talents. Let's see who can make the best artwork inside CSGO. 
Is that a tank? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, building, we're building a tank. <laughs> it looks really good so far. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's a tank. What do we got over here? I mean, we're building a tank because, you know, Elgiganten is, you know, rock solid, yeah. really strong, really a powerhouse, I'd okay. say. So, uh, obviously, we're the winners. Not too bad, not too bad. Not too good either. What do we have over here? We have a masterpiece here. I don't recognize what that is. Right here, um, oh, you, might, you might have seen it around, oh. actually. Um, yeah, yeah. Right here, we made the logo. I feel like the fact that you didn't recognize it makes it kind of bad, no? All right, guys, so I've seen both of your attempts of, of doing art. At the end of the day, I got to give it to, uh, to Team Heroic over here for actually, you know, uh, nailing it pretty well, I'd say. The logo is, is somewhat beautiful and, and the execution, A plus for effort, but uh, the point goes to uh, Shoes and uh, the Hidden Talent. Now that we concluded this point, uh, I'm curious to whether or not the captains are ready for the next channels, which will be uh, a blindfold channels where they'll have to be guided through a map by one of the hidden talents. But uh, I, I don't know this map, so you have to be pretty precise. So I need someone to guide me. Can you help me? Of course, of course I can do Sweet. that. Sweet, follow me. All right, guys, we are ready for the last task. Let's see how good the hidden talents can uh, guide you through the map. So put on the blindfolds. You guys ready? Go left. This is so hard. Uh, go left, you're going left. Left, left, yeah. Forward a little bit and then to the left. Okay, to the right, sorry. Forward and right. Now go a lot left. A lot left. Yeah. More? More, yeah. We good? No, 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 like we, we're stuck by the door. A little more. 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 And you need to stop, take off your blindfold and uh, let's see who got the furthest. You got into a green room over here. I think you're all the way where you're supposed to be. Yeah. So once again, the point goes towards Team Shoes. Thank you to our hidden talents and thank you to our two mentors as well in shoes and s -Attack. That will be it for the El Giganten Hidden Talent Challenge. Despite a hot start from FaZe, someone called the Fire Brigade because that initial blaze was extinguished by heroic FaZe, trying to reignite those embers. But from the Danish defense, absolutely no letting up. They seal the first map of this grand final series, 16 to 11. And now Jacob, just one map victory away Ooh. from lifting the trophy here in the Royal Arena. That was a very convincing win coming out from yeah. Heroic right here. A very strong performance as well. FaZe up to a 5-0 start. You thought to yourself, uh-oh, we talked about it. Them starting on their strong CT side so far it's been impeccable throughout the entire tournament but heroic fought back and i will argue if you have a 5-0 start ct side overpass and you only finish with 11 rounds you were nowhere clear nowhere near nowhere near whatsoever winning this game and i love that you mentioned the start for face because this was the hardest level of difficulty for heroic to being able to withstand the actual Tempest, the forest, the rain that was coming from FaZe Clan. And we had a beautiful mic the moment from round seven, which illustrates the pressure for Heroic. there are a few moments that dictate the pace and the destiny of a game, and I would argue that this was a moment right here for it, Rory. You can feel it. It's 5-1 to one scoreline for FaZe. You can hear the level of information. They even contradict themselves halfway through the execute because they are struggling. They are struggling to get in it. But the fact that they can actually hold their nerves and make that execute work, I think it's all they needed to just run away with it. We talked about it, right? That's the strength of Heroic, this unity, this synergy, this communication, the fact that they're all in the same book. It, it, it's just a, a team that never makes communicational mistakes, I would argue. It's a team that never seems to be stressed out, even in the most stressed situations. And you said it as well, meaning a couple of days ago, it does feel like Heroic thrives well in I would say chaos that is somewhat controlled True. by himself, right? It's not necessarily un undisputed chaos when no one knows what's going on and it's a big mess, but when they control the chaos, Heroic is at their best. But that's what's crazy, right? Because usually if you are going to go up against FaZe and your trump card is playing under chaos, you're not going to make it work. I take you guys back to the game against NIP yesterday. We had a couple of crazy moments where FaZe pulled ahead. Look at the last round in this game. It's so chaotic. Tezis pushes behind, comes in from long, Brokey's getting a double kill, and somehow Heroic 
managed to keep their cool, keep their calm, and negotiate these rounds. And that, to me, is growth. This is where the heroic of yesteryear would have completely fell apart. You know what we talked about coming into this game? We talked about the individuals going, against, going up against the team. And a question was raised, can heroic win without the star player playing well? Look at this scoreboard. It's down at the bottom of the scoreboard, it is once again the team, the unity, the synergy between the players. We have Yapi playing well, we have Tessa's finding space, doing exactly what he's supposed to do. Kadian having a great appearance as well with the AWP. Everything that could go right for Heroic in this matchup went right. Yeah, we certainly got the answer to the stun question poised ahead of this grand final series. I want to stick on the theme of that first half, though, just for mm. a moment, because Machu brought up a very good uh, momentum shift around for Heroic. We experienced another one of those later on in the half. It was like FaZe, they actually fought back a little bit in that one, so we may as well bring up round 13. This score is 7-5. to five. FaZe still in a decent position, especially after Rain getting a nice double entry right here. Goes for one more. Rain has not about to stop, smokes himself off. Kadian getting an answer back right here. You have a 2v4 situation. You're supposed, sorry, a 2v5 there was. You're supposed to lose this one if you're heroic. Yabi comes in, gets a bit of a cheap kill on Rain, who overstayed a little bit. Should have fallen back, but it is what it is. Kerrigan missing an opportunity, and Kadian loses a nice shot. And all of a sudden, you have a 2v2, where once again, heroic is outplaying their opponents. Yabi is taking all the attention towards himself, winning the first duel, and now all he has to do while Kadian is planning the bomb on the B bomb side is staying alive, and he even ends up winning this duel. There's a world of difference between being 7-6 or down 8-5. to five. This was the momentum changer, and FaZe didn't win a single round after this one in the first half. Couldn't agree more. And talk about impact for Yabi. Yeah. Talk about the moments he's had in this clip, crossing the smoke, taking the risk, and then playing that 1v2, that virtual 1v2 on the A side perfectly. But there is another element that we see in this round, exactly what we pre-faced. FaZe with the multi-kill abilities, that's Rain first hand, but also FaZe making mistakes. It should never have been possible for Heroic to turn things around. Kadian punishes Robs, who's unaware, naive on that toilet position. Kerrigan is caught off guard in a 3v2 situation. I told you FaZe were making mistakes. I told you it wasn't the smoothest of game plan. But what we didn't know was were Heroic able to punish it. And in this round, it's a perfect example. And that continued uh, the same train into that second half as well. Obviously, FaZe uh, flipping on over to the T side of things. There were some almost miraculous moments. I'm thinking of that potential one before the Brokey could have been clutching in that toilet's mm. position. But it just seemed like Heroic, they were one step ahead coming onto the favored CT side. FaZe were never close in that second half. I know there was a couple of rounds that got close. You have the Brokey moment as well. It was a nice saving uh, yes. occasion for him with the AWP. But when you look at the game, you look at how the rounds unfolded. Whenever Heroic were winning a round, it felt like they had control over yes. the situation. Whereas FaZe, they really had to fight through everything right there just to get close to winning rounds. So, to be honest, after that first half, after winning the secondary pistol round, Heroic were in prime position to close this one out. And I'm happy they did. I'm happy they did in the fashion, right, that makes us say, okay, that was a convincing win. We cannot argue that FaZe were better here. We cannot argue that it could have been a close game. Heroic were the better team on the server, and they shut it down when they had to. It's this decisive factor of Heroic that you were uh, posing as coming into this Grand Fire on series. This was a must win for Heroic. Completely. No about it. Uh, completely. Listen, we have seen many teams make map number one competitive against FaZe. We have seen that it has happened in this tournament. But if Heroic had allowed FaZe to come back and pushed it over the line on overpass, I'd be standing here telling you it's 2-0. It's over. Everybody go home because FaZe are not losing that second map. The fact that Heroic were able to withstand that pressure and when it's 10 to 15 and FaZe trying to be execute, it's 5-7 straight in your face and not actually crumbling. That is what makes me believe that Cadian can actually lift the trophy here because they have withstood that pressure. We've seen a lot of teams fall short to putting FaZe down. Not this time around for Heroic. It's also part of the story, right? Just to keep the viewers accounted for as well. This was not a surprise. Heroic were, by paper, favorites to yes. win Overpass. It's their map pick. There's a reason they did it. FaZe, as of late, haven't looked that impressive on the map of Overpass. Heroic have. So it's not a, a big surprise right here, especially moving into Inferno. I still think this game is a 50-50, but I agree with what Matthew is saying. The fact that Kadian and Heroic were able to win this convincingly gives me a little more hope that they potentially can win it on the third map. So Pim saying he thinks this whole series is uh, now a 50-50 coming into things, but I guess we're not saying that specifically for the map of Inferno. Look, FaZe is a favorite on Inferno. Yeah. There's, there's no way I can stand here and tell you guys that, you know what, I already have this and that going for them. No, there's none of it. But here is how I see it. If there was ever a time for Heroic to stop that five map loss streak that they're on, this would be now. Because they have survived Overpass, because they haven't faltered in the same trap that other teams have against FaZe, I feel like this is the moment. I think if you're Heroic, you have FaZe on the ropes. If you're Stone, if you're Cadian, if you're Tezis, you have Kerrigan in the ropes. If you allow FaZe to bounce back on Inferno, if you allow them to find that flow state again and we move to map number three, I don't think Heroic can stop them. They have a golden opportunity. They're 16 rounds away from their first 
S-tier trophy on land, here on home soil. And they should absolutely not diminish that opportunity. You don't allow it to go to three map. That'd be too dangerous. They've got to keep their heads cool under exponential pressure here in the Royal Arena. But uh, last time around, if we were to spin this track once more, Ooh. last time they faced an Inferno, uh, 16 to 5 for FaZe on this ground. 11 rounds from the T-side for, for FaZe Clan. Ooh. That was a, a very strong T-side. All the players were activated and Heroic were nowhere near making that game competitive whatsoever. So yeah, I agree with Matthew. There's no doubt that FaZe are the favorites. We can't even discuss that. But I just want to point it out. I said it yesterday, and I'm going to say it again today. Every single game in Counter-Strike live its own life to some degree. Sure, we can look at the stats. Sure, we can look at what makes sense and what should be happening. But we've been surprised so, so many times. And especially when you're on a stage like this, Kerrigan, with the pressure of playing in front of his family, playing in front of his crowd, Kaden with the pressure of the Danish crowd here as well, all these games live their own life. So I agree with you, Maniac. The problem for me I have is Heroic have lost five in a row, and three of those maps on Inferno weren't even competitive. They were in single digits to teams like Furia outside etc. Heroic are not great on Inferno. All heroes need a dragon to slay and I think for Yabit this is the moment. When they faced on Inferno he was at the bottom of the pit. He only posted eight kills in that entire game but he's had a blunder. He's had an amazing game on Overpass and now he is back. I think Yabi is going to be the difference maker. He's making his legends right now. 100% while well, Soul proving a great wrong way for Heroic to be starting off this series but now it comes down to FaZe's map pick of Inferno. We all know what happened last time these two teams faced on this ground. Let's see if FaZe can repeat the same. Thanks. What's going on, guys? I'm here with my good buddy, Scrondog, and we're here to watch some of the most legendary plays in CSGO. Yeah, lots of clips to jump into, the best that Counter-Strike has to offer. I'm stoked, let's get started. This right here, that's true innovation. Let's see what they've got. Oh my god, genius. We've got layers on this one. A solid move and so refreshing to see. It's so wild. He just cannot be stopped. Effortless, a true work of art. To come out on top, you've got to really lose yourself in a whole new world. It's intense, so smooth. You've got to Hold on tight, so nearly there. If he can just get inside. Ice cold. A taste of victory when it comes to the crunch. Nothing else can feel this good. So this grand finals is about to get back underway. Map two between FaZe Clan and Heroic leads us to Inferno. It's a map where Heroic are having current struggles. It's a map where FaZe should be able to bring this back. But, you know, this is also a first real chance at Heroic to lift 
a trophy on Denmark soil. So it's kind of a question of what ifs. What if they can truly cause this upset versus what has been 2022's best team? What if they can do it on a map that they have shown these recent struggles? There are questions that need to be answered, and I think it's about damn time we get one step closer. That's right, folks. It comes down potentially to Inferno. Again, no freebies in this veto. Heroic will be happy to play here. They've lost their last five Inferno games but maybe it's more unlikely that it'll be six in a row. Stown touted as the star of Heroic and the reason that maybe they'd be able to out-talent the very much stacked FaZe Clan. In reality, it was Jabby who went massive. So how about we get this one back underway? Inferno between Heroic and FaZe. Off to the races instantly. Faze with a chip on their shoulder. A bad loss in their rear view mirror. A chance at redemption. And an opportunity to make these Inferno stats even worse for Heroic. Stown thinking maybe it's time to take an initiative. Good amount of utility here for Faze's T side. They've got to shake off the beating of Overpass. Heroic have to shake off the past of Lost Infernos. So Kadian at the helm of this hold, tries to peek down into the short side, ends up killing Twist a step behind. Nice cover from Rops, but the corner occupied by Tessess. Double headshot, man advantage, still kicking, still fighting, still surviving. Ooh. There is some strength behind that. A lot of chances right there to phase run over the site. Missed shots from Arch. Left things in question, but look at Tessas. Second HP, second player, low HP, still gets the headshot, of course. In true Tessas fashion. And Shush right there. One of the best supports this year. Getting some shining rounds. A quick start, man. For Hork, they look at this and they go 15 to go. Phase, when do they get into the game? Well, the buy happens now. Brokey, whoa, that was, that was expensive for his health, but he was looking for an opportunity with the scout at the bottom of Banana. Rain ambitious, but not suicidal. Doesn't come out of that smoke just yet, trying to just hammer home a lucky deke shot. No, Kadian's going to obviously erupt no matter what happens, right? Because that's, that's who he is. But to do it as a captain is one thing, but also as an individual at the same time, he was a core fragger on overpass. Ooh, but he goes down first. Rain sends a message. That's one Deagle shot in. Rain would love to add another. Heroic a little cautious here, but they'll take a glance. And that smoke, just for the time being, is going to counter out Jabby. Man can barely breathe. And look at this. Proper rotation out of phase. They're going to send it into the B site. Bomb in the back. Pistols at the front. Oh, they're making Scout a move. In the middle. And while Rain will be toppled over towards Arch side, it is still, sure enough, a bomb plant. So it's one of those moments. Oh, okay. One of those moments that phase can be already be happy about. But you know they want to go much further. Deagle shot out of Kerrigan off of its mark. Jabby, MP9 quickly coming up on Banana. And every bit of damage that Kerrigan can offer could end up being substantial. There is the talent that we say resides on phase. Twists, rops, headshots each. Wow. Little bits of HP left over. Three M4s and an immediate robbery yeah. in round number two. Even looking at an overpass, that, that is the most convincing of a rotation that they've been able to score out of Heroic right here. Making the move like they were the ones on an eco round. And that can be a gift and a curse on Inferno, right? Your rota rotations get punished severely. It's not necessarily the length of the rotations, right? It's the fact that once you get B control, for example, and you get top oranges, you can see to the back of spawn, right? That's what slows down the rotate so much. That's what makes the retake so much more difficult on top of all these beautiful right. angles within the site. So that's not the position Heroic want to find themselves in. Of course, right now is a chance. Just break from this action. Head over to the Blast Premier Twitter. Get your guys' votes in. We do need to crown an MVP. 
We've got a lot of candidates on the side of FaZe, and I feel like in yes. that pistol round, we just felt it. Right now, yes. I mean, this could be between Brokey and Stown or whoever else. A lot of contenders at the moment. You know, recency bias, but a grand finals performance, in my mind, always always matters more. It'll weigh more. It'll weigh more for sure. So, Well, it's up to you, I guess. Chances there. So it is a story of five losses in a row for Heroic, but versus very good teams. You know, this Inferno only finds the best. Each of those losses a chance to learn. SS not able to capitalize on what was a very blind Kerrigan and even the double nades that come out. I love the bits of protocol there, right? A flash deagle peak plus a double nade. That's enough to kill two or three if you're yes. lucky. They've shied them away from Arch, right? But they still don't necessarily have the best sight. And we'll continue to try and come out this Arch side, having left for a moment. Not dying to Tess not dying to Stown, and trying to continue inwards, but Kerrigan to jump up in clear corners. Jabby reveals himself from the porch. Shots come through that smoke off of Robs's end, and honestly, FaZe are getting corralled. Being drawn slowly towards this A site. In reality, they could go CT, but that kill from Rain alleviates a lot of pressure. They know that there's still an MP9 back here, but it shouldn't be enough to hold them back, and so sure enough, it's not. With damage on three of the four, they'll get that bomb plant down, and follow through, a force by win in round two to a conversion in the third. Yeah, gave him some good chances right there, but uh, FaZe Clan figure it out. Good job applying the pressure back to those two who are pushing through Arch, and like you said, they keep repaired. What's he cooking? Kadian, I think, was the better IGL on overpass. Saw really great T rounds, first of all, scoring eight. Won a few good mid rounds where they were player disadvantaged. Sometimes he can always credit the players on his team. It does feel like there are five minds on heroic at times with the way they play their 2vx situations. But of course, you can credit him for the trust that he gives them as well. Oh, a gun! Oh no! Oh, wow. Rain <laughs> catches him. <laughs> hey, that would have been a big find. Good effort. Good effort. That would have been the one, one rifle right here that uh, FaZe don't have to worry about now. Well, he can't keep it for this one. At least he denied another. But Faye's about to reclaim a whole lot of money. Double MAC-10s versus pistols. Ooh, hold on, folks. We got five grenades on the side of Heroic. Okay. Yeah. Someone's get, getting blown to smithereens. Something we didn't see was Heroic grenades on overpass. The triple nade to yeah, the wood wall. But they are known to have a combo like this. Oh, Chuck and the nade's going to kill. Yeah, it's Kerrigan who ends up dying to it. Oh! Wait a second. WSP kill the fights right here, but nice spray, nice recovery. And a nade back the other way to ensure that that one goes down smooth. Yeah. But Heroic, they crank the dial. They get three kills. Yes, if that was anything starting towards alt, of course, there would be no use to those grenades. You wouldn't be zoning anybody. But in this situation, they were exploding up towards banana control fast, and Heroic met them at the pass. No laughing matter. You know, three kills here that should never happen. The one at the end of the round prior. That's four deaths versus phase. Chips away at the cash. We'll see now that the gun rounds get going, whether always, that has an outcome in the end. Always think about how far your money can go, right? Maybe it isn't best upgrading those pistols into deagles like you want to do so badly. Yeah, buy gold. <laughs> Someone's been talking to Anders. Gabby, nice. Peeks out, finds Brokey. That's clean, because he, he peeked first, right? Got him participating, facing forward, expecting the re-peak. Flash comes in after. That's quick as lightning. While he's blind, strikes him down. I think that's making the most of a, of a pretty kind of bad situation, all things considered, right? Double FAMAS, MP9, lesser yep. nades. Yep, and they know that's the, that's the main ingredient of a low buy. But look who's finding gaps and continues to find gaps. And a push down. Oh my god, well, that's with the bomb. They see that. It lands right in front of him. Rain. Look at this pack of players. Yeah, he jumps to the Call of Duty. He's here ready, but he can't get a good angle to defend this. Trying. trying as he did in the last round to recover the sticky situation. We're gonna get two CTs pinned against that back wall. Rain still wanting to help, offering assistance, but it is kills the way of Heroic. Every single duel goes their way. Kerrigan finally gets something back for the FaZe Clan, but his single kill versus Kadian, his counterpart, means nothing. You cannot pin Heroic down. If they have a part of the map, there could be anywhere from one to five players there. And that is proof of it. How are you supposed to expect a re-aggression in this way? We just saw a tactic with a molly behind Yabby and a flash to show that there were at least two people on A, probably three in this situation, and he's coming from March. 
They're not going to leave halls open. And then all of a sudden, everybody on the CT side is running down Banana. Like, that's how they started the rounds. That's what they do, right? Heroic. So tough to contain. Kadian's going to do it his way. That's why he's the captain. That's why he's the leader. That's why he's hit rock bottom and come back. If you play with Kadian, you have to believe in Kadian. Bit of a cult following. But it's got them this far. FaZe can be shaken if they want to. But that was kind of a brand new situation. They know that's not going to happen twice. They set the stage for this round. Playing it slow. Oof. Costly. Oof. Kerrigan jumping around barrels and boxes and gets burned down to half health. Yeah, they respond with their own utility. Smoke comes up at the top of Banana. Utility advantage here to Heroic, of course. And it's now time for decisions to be made, and that goes for the defenders as well. 30 seconds, that's the golden number. Big pop, rambunctious. Oh, Kadian. Looked like he was gonna get back around the corner, but he shoots out two shots. What? He just snaps right down. Brokey and Rops recover, but with those two deaths, do they assume incorrectly that this bomb site is clear? Tess, he actually does stop bomb. Time. Rops picks it back up, and now hands busy. Plant comes through. 48 HP versus two. Gets back around the coffins, and with that bomb plant position, they're gonna know that he's leaning on this side, but he needs to keep it clean, and it's not gonna happen this time around. The newest additions go head to head, and Yabby comes out ahead. 16 HP, but he wins the duel through the coffins. Puts Rops in one. And if needed, shush right there behind him. Look. This first shot from Katie and a sliver. Watch the this snap one. on that second. Not even a wall bang. He's still fast. Wow. You can almost feel that Rops clutch coming. You know, eight kills. Great Such a performance map. on overpass. Yeah. Plus a great yesterday. Definitely set up to succeed in that situation, but Tessas does exactly what he needs to do. Bomb is on the back of Brokey, who is up there camping the quad, looking at Emo, trying to figure out where Tessas might be. But then they had to get that bomb planted because they cross that 30 second mark. They try to execute on the site. It doesn't go the way they need to. They don't get enough trades fast enough. And they simply do not have enough time to clear everything safely and take a risk. Tessas finds the timing. Mixed by for phase. Heroic fighting hard right now. Pretty even for them between CT and T rounds one. And again, only great teams played their last five games. They all lost. Liquid phase, Nip, Furia, Cloud9. No shame in taking those losses. A couple double digits. They have lost some single digit games. It doesn't feel like this is going to be one of them. Rob's on the entry, dives out quick. M4 shots for Jabby, find their mark, double kill from him, nice and easy. A rumpunctious pop out of the apartments, meant to do something. There is still life left on this. Twist and Brokey, pistoling it back, but then just as quickly as they kill, they fall at the hands of Heroic, who now have a lead, four over three. Oh, and they're having fun too. They're enjoying it, they're soaking it up. They're leaving everything on the table. chance to win an S tier land. You know, it's the event that they won. The next best team was Astralis. The team after that, I think, was big. There was no one there to really test Heroic in a way that they could be tested like they are here at the Fall Finals, like they were at Rio. And that's their only land win of the year. It might have been meaningful, but the farther we get away from that, the less meaningful it is. Maybe it, maybe it showed them they could do it on land, but now they can do it on land versus the best. The absolute pinnacle of Counter-Strike is here at the Fall Finals.
No forward play from Heroic here. Very much letting FaZe kind of slot into their strat. They're really good at peeling back and playing forward, leaving nowhere in between. So it's hard for FaZe to know what space they can take for free. And you can see the clock is against them. They're working slowly, right? On high alert with expectations for somebody to try and throw that left hook out of nowhere. They're trying to scare Kadian out of this rotation as they come back towards B. He's going to make a move. Kerrigan's going to try to go through. Oh, he beats down oh. and Rain successfully in through Arch. But, but Tessus. third piece of the puzzle, Tessus. 40 HP left over. Smoke at his feet means he loses vision and soon his life. Brokey hones in on him with the spray and Kerrigan's entry coupled with Rain's wraparound. If you give FaZe space, they will make it happen. Shush and Jabby to take a shot at this. We've got bodies on banana and corpses the way of the CT. Three stand strong for FaZe. You gave them the room to work. Yes. And they will take that away from you. Man. Tied game at four. Yes, but it was a little slow, wasn't it? And then they were setting up for the arch split, but they had rain on that lurk. This is a pocket strat from FaZe. They do this, have done this more than once, but Kadian goes back to clear the smoke in CT and misses a shot on Rain. That could have very easily been the round. The entire split stops, no lurk in place. Tassas with a 2k hold. It kind of comes down to one missed op shot right there, but for Kadian, he can be proud of the fact that he read that strat. It wasn't an arch wrap that he wasn't, that he didn't rotate back into the site. He didn't go and look towards halls, stare at nothing. He very much gave his team a chance and he probably told his B players, we know what's coming. I think there's a bit of a confidence win here for Heroic. It'll be them to take a timeout. Chance for Exist to get into the mix. This place is packed out. Off of the attack, the pieces come back together. Jabby again at the top of the board, right alongside Tessess. So that's one in. I think we have a situation where FaZe have not done anything fast. Maybe earlier on we saw slightly more aggressive plays, but it's mostly on the anti-ecos. It feels like on the rifles they're going for these feeler rounds. when that tempo change is going to come. Still feels like they're figuring out Heroic right now. Ooh. Ooh. Could have been much worse. But they do chip up all three of the players here for Heroic. And that was one of the most, I think, passive setups from Heroic. Leaning back. Allowing for FaZe to find the cracks in the setup. Got twists stuck in this corner, and they're gonna send a player forward, but he's not ready. Still reacts. Oh, Whoa. Twist might have been looking at radar right there. Doesn't shoot fast enough. Has a really good fight for himself, but loses out to Stown. That is meant to be Twist's opening kill every day. Stown fast enough on the trigger. Swap to the AWP. Barely even a liability with this thing, so. They, they didn't hear this gun. They could walk unsuspectingly into their death, and sure enough, there it is. Stown hits home. Frags Rops. Leaves Rain to chase. Angle after angle, he knows every step of the way. That op looms near. Meanwhile, Kerrigan catches them. Two CTs pressing up into the boiler. Another fight at the B site. Kerrigan draws bomb back, but the push out, the push out from Tessess gets punished. And you'd think that A site's clear, but who other than Jabby to stop it in its tracks? Wow, there's still two more there, and there's just no way. They didn't even have time to get to that plant. This round ends. I'm not feeling a lot of communication coming out here from FaZe Clan. They're sort of waiting around. You know, maybe Twist is here looking at his radar. Maybe he doesn't have that fight exactly where he wants it to be, and Stown just approaches slowly enough that it's perfect. But then after he gets that second kill, it doesn't feel like there's a real world where this round can be won. And they could credit the fact that Heroic, they stayed aggressive both on Banana, but also had this 
multi-faceted play with the Hulse control, lane pressure as well. And FaZe just hoped they were pushed back at least at one part of the map, but that wasn't the case. Wow. Not comfortable not knowing. Always keeping eyes forward. AK immediately down, so if FaZe had any hope in this one, it's not going to be coming from Kerrigan. And it's non-existent Kevlar on the rest. Crossfire set excellently. They'll press out and try to recover the gun, but Kadian's op is quick. And FaZe effectively culled. At least they got the AK. Silver lining here for this moment. Yeah, that's something. And as they have, they're going to try to milk every moment for every possible kill, for every possible opening. Take your chances. Barring that second round of Inferno, Heroic haven't fallen victim to moments like this. Yeah. So sure enough, they keep this one clean. Yeah, they as don't... clean as can be. They don't leave. They don't peel back. They stay inside of mid the entire round. No reason to move. No reason care. to doubt. They don't care if they have five alive. They've been winning their duels late into the round with numbers up. It's the hardest thing to play against. Hayes are getting no respect. Another force up again. No recent tempo changes here for FaZe. What's the new look? Feels like it's been a bit foggy. That's not the explosive phase that we know. Kind of stunned by what is so far a successful CT side. Again, we look at those four rounds, but by way of force in the second and the conversions after that, it's just been the one rifle win out of phase. So there's an asterisk here as we get into the last five rounds of the first 15. Brokey to try and take up the health. Think about how passive that setup was here for Heroic, the crossfire on middle. Well, if you want to run it against the guns, be ready for FaZe to come kicking and screaming towards this A site. An attempted right. spray, no target. No damage. No pressure on B, and it looks like Heroic are readying for this exact attack. Kadian comes over. Shush from the pit offers the first kill. Jabby fired his feet. Robs has got the entry. Things starting to go well for FaZe, but his body's trickled down. Shush will be given a chance. Flash goes out. Kills Twist. Finds Robs. And through that smoke, it's damage on to Brokey. They've lost track of this off. Oh, but Kadian comes around the short side. And guns versus guns, heroic on top. And that was one of the most compelling hits that we've seen from FaZe recently that they have only done themselves with the molly that lands both on the balcony and below, and it still doesn't kill their target. They can't dislodge Pit, and honestly, looking at that set of heroic, they were cheating their fourth player over. No pressure on B. They weren't worried about that hit at all. Shush's chance to shine. Yeah, and it set up Shush in such a big way. That spray transfer is massive. You know, Shush, a player that... I think kind of just falls underneath the radar, right? Yeah, but, uh, listen, Heroic has to be feel so good because it feels like they're reading the game perfectly right now. Everything's going their way and their individuals are shining. And this whole head-to-head, -head, this matchup, this grand finals set as the talent of FaZe versus the team play of Heroic. Superb A setup. Kadian said in the interview with James before the game started, it's great to have the crowd on our sides easier when we win some rounds. That'll buy the fans that weren't there. And for FaZe, we don't have Kerrigan getting involved with everyone here in the stadium. He's focused on that first task. Slower than molasses in these last five. Of course, this round, not much to go into it. Besides the utility. But what's the thought? Again, it's a lean back out of Heroic. This is the round that didn't go so well for Heroic. And oh, oh, Kadian just gets swept away by the Tech-9. But remember, it is just measly pistols. Jabby bombarded by utility. And Shush is only able to come out with one. FaZe Clan fight tooth and nail to press through the defense. 
Kerrigan leads the way with that quick calamity versus Katie, and, and there's a chance for Tessess and Stown to still recover. He gives himself a smoke, he will have a flash, and he even has a teammate. He tries to dive down, gets caught on the railing, didn't get out, Brokey awaits him. An additional flash comes through, Tessess sees the fight, wins it into Graveyard, and it's rain inside the quiet corner. The stoic giant of phase denied by the flying Tessess. It's a sketchy situation, but it's Heroic's eighth. Or is it? Oh! And the light turns green. <laughs> Down wow. to the wire. Tessess finds it. Oh, that was messy, but he, look, he cleared that bike peak so well. Man, this is making up for the two Tech Nine entries. The strap from FaZe, actually, it's great. I mean, they, they decide to kill Shush instead of throwing the Molly in the pit, letting him smoke it, and letting him rotate around that smoke, and then stopping all of their lane pressure by themselves. Instead, they use their HEs to kill him. You can't react to that. That's great. That's supported by that running Tech 9 kill from Kerrigan. He's ready for someone to be holding it. He hits two on the dome. Oh, and now they try to get hyper-aggressive, and they're going to continue this onslaught. Far-range fight for Tessess, keeps his head down. Bullets pummeling through. Brokey. They did not want to allow Heroic to get away with that audacity. How dare you take that fight to us? Wow. The disrespect in mid and alt upended. Okay, that one was a little bit faster. They said, we want apartments at least. What a clash. That's where we draw the line. Well, we'll see. Shush is in the corner. That's an easy pickup against Kerrigan. I mean, he was nearly on the brink of death. And Shush sticks around. He could, he could even go into twists. Not the best, but he does still fall back. Oh, oh. and Kadian is ready, but that's both members. So, of course, the bigger picture phase realized A is occupied, and they could have left. Oh. Heroic think they left, when in reality, they come right back. Oh. They, they prey on the fact that Heroic love to make those rotations. They walk into an open site, and now Heroic will hear the utility coming out from the other side of the map. They've left the site that they could have won from. They've been played. And if Heroic truly want to fight for this ninth, as it seemed like they did out the gate, well, you've got to topple two of FaZe's best. That's a great snap call. Moto Smoke should be the end. That could find twists. That's gonna hurt, or nope, only 9 HP, not a problem. The two members of FaZe just keeping their head tucked, keeping Heroic guessing on this quest of a retake. We've got Shush pressing in, Kadian finds the quick kill to twist, and confirms Brokey's position. Bomb ticking fast, Shush wastes no time, and Brokey, oh. the gremlin in the corner, delivers his third. <laughs> FaZe have five. Prioritizing the clock because that bomb was ticking, planted good for both Big Pit and Mini. That's well done. Phase score one. Great to see a call like that. It's a brave one to make. Walking back into lane after two were spotted there. That's huge. Showing they're still lucid. They're still playing to win, not just to be safe. Not running into B, potentially getting off on the cross. That'll inspire confidence. You think it kind of knocks Heroic down a peg feeling themselves, riding success, but running rampant down middle last round. It's crazy how close even some of these retakes are, so. We're rounding up the half now, round 14. They've been winning so much on Banana. But in these last couple, FaZe have given it up and still found a way into the rounds. Kadian better be careful. He's got an onslaught inbound. Oh, oh the walk-up. They don't window flash. They outgame him completely. He could have been up hard scoped on that like we saw Stown. Sure. But they didn't flash it, and he was waiting for that to throw his utility. Sure. That's another game plan victory here. Another great call from Kerrigan. Out answering range. back. No warning for Kadian. Hits the dirt in an instant. And with it, FaZe Clan secure themselves a sixth. Brokey on gun control. Thanks oh. for the op. Yeah, they made him look silly right there. Back-to-back -back rounds. That's nice to see. I feel like we've only been able to say good things about Heroic so far this game while FaZe have scraped by. 
Well, now they're showing us why they're here. One with four relegated to their site as we wrap this half up, half up, and FaZe have a chance to get to seven. Anyone's game from that point on. Five rounds may not have been enough. Seven, they can figure it out. Yep. That's when you got to take on the chin. If you're the one player in a 4-1 setup on B, and you die like that, you know it's over. You can't even give an op over to the quad player at a post plant. That's already too much. What's the risk? Yeah. Mind games back and forth. Katie going to be kicking himself for that jump. Heroic will shoot for a ninth. Remember, five map loss streak for Heroic. So the fact that they're even keeping this competitive, we praise it. Losses versus strong competition. Phase is on that list. Set up to now three members over there. Utility pressure shush, but he's fine to sit inside it. Jabby will be far too preoccupied with the thought of a Balk push, so there is no crossfire here. Numbers could be the answer to dealing with shush if he had stuck around. He'll need another set of utility to you know, really scare him, but at this point, he guaranteed some information. Saw no one cheat up. Tessa starts to dump his nades. Let's see if this phase machine starts rolling. B players from the offense fall back. Miss stack sight. A lot of pressure here on Shush and Jabby. And they're split up. Two separate fronts, two separate fights. Can either of them deliver? Shush and Jabby, each with a kill apiece. What more can they do? Jabby into the corner, but Shush goes one better. His second kill shaves off Kerrigan. Robs him Brokey to the two versus four in a post plant. And that three-man B-Stack now tasked to retake with utility. Brokey's op hunts hungrily for impact, for blood, for flesh, and it gets ever closer. Right on the cusp of this, he sees it, and he takes down Katie and priming rocks, a bloodbath on the short side. FaZe takes seven, and Katie's crew stagnate on eight. Welcome everybody to the Doritos What's Your Flavor? I'm joined today by Kerrigan, by Rez, Hooksy, and Rain. Gentlemen, we gotta figure out what's going on inside of each of your teams. Who's cheesy, who's cool, who's spicy? Hooksy, I'm putting you on the spot. You're gonna start this one off for us, man. Who do you have up first? My goofy teammate, uh, Nemanja, aka Honda. Okay. Uh, he is going in the cheesy category for sure. I'm actually just gonna start with the obvious choice. Okay. We have uh, Robin Rupps, last name Cool. <laughs> it's so, made for uh, this. I think we just, I don't know where I'm gonna put him. <laughs> He's the cool guy. I would put myself on cool as well, beside my boy Imagine. Cool. Yes, I would say I'm, I'm a very calm and collected guy. Okay. And I've been told that a lot oh. through my teammates as well. You've so. been told you're cool. Yeah, very cool guy. All right. <laughs> Bokita. <laughs> okay. He can be spicy. I'm gonna do my, my last, so that's gonna be easier one. I was gonna say, yeah, you guys haven't done yourselves yet. No, do that's kind of like, that's a <laughs> challenge, isn't it? <laughs> Same for that. Yeah, right. I yeah. See Building the up the confidence. How the board looks, <laughs> you know? Mr. Russ Fan Cheesy. He can clutch, yeah. he can entry, he can secondary call, mm -hmm. he can op. That's many layers of cheese. <laughs> you need a cheesy guy. <laughs> Incredible. For the cheesy, I think I'm gonna go with Kerrigan. Um, he has a lot of uh, cheesy jokes, dad jokes, so I'm gonna go with Kerrigan for the cheesy. A cheesy guy. Yeah, who's your cheesy guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I guess the Dane is a cheesy guy. Ooh, mm -hmm. taking shots. Yeah, I guess it's Danish. It's just Danish. <laughs> yeah, you leave I'm it there. <laughs> but you guys are getting closer to yourselves. Yeah. Things are getting stressful. No, I don't know what I'm most scared of, myself or Nico. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Don't answer. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm getting sweaty palms here. Yeah. If I put him wrong, I'm gone, dude. Uh, I'll just be cool with the cool guys down here. All right. The cool guys. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like I'm pretty cool, calm, collected. I don't know what people think about Nico, but uh, he definitely have a cheesy personality as well. Rain. Ooh. Mr. MVP. I'm gonna go next to 
Hooksy over here on the cool side, oh, playing it safe. Just a couple cool guys, huh? A couple cool guys over here. A couple here. cool guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Counter-Strike, man, we're real cool. Have you ever heard him complain? No, because you never listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very easy to say he's a cool guy. Gentlemen, we've placed everybody. I'm gonna introduce the X Factor, the fourth flavor. Rez, I want you to change one player from FaZe. Kerrigan, I want you to change one player from NIP <laughs> based on your he assessment. He starts. Yeah, always uh... Oh, she's man. Yeah. I co-sign that. She's. <laughs> <laughs> A couple cheese balls. Of course, not cheese balls, man. Now we can be cheese together. <laughs> yeah, all right. There we have it then. The what's your flavor all wrapped up. We'll see how things all come together in the server here for the Blast Ball Finals. Thank you guys for joining me. And thank you guys for tuning in to the Doritos. What's your flavor? I didn't hit you for now. Just hit you. Sorry, as well. Okay. Almost default. I'm holding. You can have the Taking grave soon. Grave, grave, grave. Thanks, oh, guys. Nice. 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 Let's go! I knew we were taking a few of this. Good call. Good call. Collected clutch for the FaZe Clan side, and honestly, things were getting a little sketchy in that first half. Heroic running away with it, but a beautiful little recovery at the end. FaZe Clan of their seven rounds, three at the very tail end yep. of that half. So, Heroic, they've put up some numbers, but they've also got a chip on their shoulder. Many losses here on Inferno, even with Overpass in their back pocket. This is where things are meant to go the other way. And Rops, he's gonna try to guarantee it nice and early. Hyper aggression down mid out of the FaZe Clan. Jabby sits down beneath them. What's his moment to strike? He pops up, he kills two! And with Tessas over towards Alt, oh, Jabby! Triple kill for him! Whoa. Sickening recovery from he, Heroic. He just kept running forward. There was a guy at the top of middle who could have swung on him at any time, but him as a soldier kept moving in. And Rain was wounded at the very start. He'd hoped his fully health teammates would keep him alive and kicking, and instead, he sits on 12 HP as Heroic have found that open B bomb site. So that's both pistols this map. Well, seemingly. Yes. <laughs> Take it down. Wow, Yabby. Take your hat off, man. That was a beautiful round. Running forward into that push that was spotted. Everybody coming down. Yabby popping up. First of all, aim is one thing. But again, look, he gets spotted for top mid. Keeps going forward. Knows he has teammates behind him. He's just ready to refrag. That's selfless play. Stunned by his own success. Don't forget, Heroic won the last pistol. Got hit by this force buy from FaZe. Can't allow that to happen again. It'd be too good of a start to let go. Too important of a match. We'll see what kind of pace Heroic brings to the T-side. But the last time that they played, they won one round. It was the pistol. Then they lost five straight and lost the map. 16-5 for FaZe last time they played against Heroic on Inferno. But it's clearly a very different day. Their T-side last time ran through Heroic. That wasn't the case this time around. In fact, it was phased to only wake up later on. Those last three rounds were great, and they said a lot of good things about Kerrigan, that he's still in this and wants to win. But Heroic were locked in the entire time. They only started to get outplayed because they were probably so shocked at you know, how poorly FaZe came in. They started off on the wrong foot. But I do have this thought. Only a pistol round on T-side last time. Stack is in the right place. Heroic inching ever closer. Desert Eagle, the warning sign of what's to come. There's a smoke on Rain as well. So if they boil down the time and he decides to block off Arch, or if he blocks off Apps, somebody's going to get taken out of this equation. But ultimately, it's Jabby who's going to get smoked off. Flashes to pop inside. Sight twist. Instant Deagle still fighting. Rain finds one on his own, and they still don't know. Brokey, he's able to pick up one kill off the Fomis. Rops' MP9 still sits inside the corner. And unfortunately for Heroic, they're getting torn limb from limb. Okay. Phase back to back halves with second round wins. Yes, history repeats itself and twist with a great shot on the first player jumping, just meant to displace their aim, trying to get into the site and clear cold. They don't even get info on that last guy who's there. They don't even know how bad it was. How many T's they ran into. Wow, that was quite a shot. And Twist 
He was a guy who had a 1.96 rating the last time they played. He's a bottom fragger right now for the team, but he has a CT side to be able to bounce back into this. A tough pill to swallow and a broken hope of an early T side start. Brain leans right into that smoke, not afraid to get dirty, to play it dangerous. Kadeen will call from the sidelines and if Heroic try to press into the arch, well, they've got members of FaZe ready to meet them, nades at their feet as well to make things uncomfortable. Jabby back to the abs, shush, nice deep, but he's only gonna get that one, it's down to pick up the next. Brokey tries to quick reposition, opts not to go graveyard, but rather sit sight. Smoke ahead, leans so that Heroic can go over top. And Brokey, yet to fire off on this AK. They've lost track of him. And they wait for some kind of a fight. They anticipate a wrap. That doesn't happen. Spray off the mark. Oh, wait, another SS could have died. Down, two, it's just down. Down. He's left it on Brokey. 78 HP, he lost his rotation, but he does still have the kit and a huge health advantage and a weapon over top of Tessess. But Tessess, he just sits back, he leans, oh. and he plays with the dolphin jump. He holds, and Brokey, he wants this kill, he wants this clutch, but Tessess, nowhere to be found. Time is gonna be critical, but remember, Brokey has that kit. Tessess comes right back, 15 health, will it be enough? Brokey jumps on top of Bomb. And he's got this. Oh my god. Surely he's got this. He's actually this. got it locked in. Surely it's wrapped Jesus. up. Jesus, there's just so much time to play off of. So many chances for Brokey. Wow. Tessa's had his work cut up for him. The amount of times he had to bait him into that. But Stown, what is this round? The Tech 9 kill into the picked up AK into two more. Unreal for Mini. Tell me that doesn't get FaZe wow. sweating. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, Tessa's played that as best as you possibly could, considering the HP. Even calling out the fake at the right moment, jump peeking every single other time. He won rock, paper, scissors like four times in a row, basically. And now the score is tied. And Heroic are going to have an investment just like FaZe Clan. FaZe will be spending all their money. Now, after watching that nip game for FaZe Clan, no matter how bad it gets on map two, they've already shown. At least right now, as Moses said, they bend, but they don't break. They can get themselves out of the trickiest spot. Stacked with star players. That's why they're world class. That's why they are the most successful team of 2022. Whether Heroic likes it or not, just looking for that fifth trophy. Looking to redeem what was a failure in Rio. Yeah, I mean, people remember what happened last. That's a sad reality of things, and FaZe know that too, and they don't want to end the year week when they had one of the strongest years ever. For sure. To kick things off. When Navi had their time, it was simple. And almost every single other point where there was an error involved, there was one player you could point to at the helm of it. And with FaZe Clan, it really hasn't been that story. And somehow, in a time where CS has been the most competitive. Brokey's been great, but he's still not... Yeah. He's still not coming for number one in the world. Had his phases. Yeah. And you could argue, of course, that FaZe are incredibly stacked on talent, but not relying on any one person specifically. Had his moments. Had his impact, and they lift their trophies. Olaf Meister for Fnatic, Cold Zera for SK Luminosity. Brokey will be in that 5 to 10 region, maybe in the top 5, but certainly not one. And they still achieved earlier in this year what many thought wouldn't be possible in this era of CS and have dominance. But they haven't cleared every event. And Rio stinks. Yeah, looking more mortal than ever, yeah. honestly, coming into this event. It was just, it was the fashion of which they won their opening games here that made us think like, yeah, FaZe is back. And I feel like everybody's so ready to accept that because we know what their highs are. 
But NIP kind of reminded us again of their mortality. Mm -hmm. So many chances to win that second map of Nuke. I feel like after that match, every member of FaZe, you know, kind of recognized it on the social media as like, man, we got pushed to the limit. Yep. Credit to NIP where it's due. Full respect right there. So many youths in the crowd. Is that Monacy? It's awesome. <laughs> I think it's Down's big brother. Ah. Nice. Listen, we're back into the action. So here we go. Returning at a 9 9 game. Guns in all of FaZe's hands, but not quite the same for Heroic. Back to the middle setup. Rock wants to go for the peak, and Kadian gonna give him a reason to sit down. AK from downtown. Remember, one of two guns here in the hands of Heroic. So for FaZe to offer that opening, Heroic will take that every step of the way. And what's the next step on their way to this upset? Well, robbing away the gun. Yes. It's that, a win within a win. That's the priority number one. It is still behind enemy lines. And FaZe at least know that. They didn't send someone down on a mission. Brokey will pick one back up. That's down, down. He stands in front of the Molotov. They're going to try to press through. Brokey missed chance. And a lot of real estate taken. Look at the pace here from Heroic. They sense blood in the water and they want to follow, but that cross does have a player on it. 0 for 2 on the off shots, but Rain, he's got backs turned. And now Brokey has to deliver and still no kill. Kadian offers three. And yeah, B. Twist on the flank. Yeah, he's waiting for this perfect crosshair placement. He's up top. Heroic. Are they going to touch 10? Kerrigan, one on three, coming in slowly. This could make up for that round two loss. The fact that happened in both halves. Pistols not cleanly converted. And Kerrigan, a tough time so far, goes down at the hands of Shush. Kadian stands tall when they need him. Wow, I didn't expect that to happen, especially after that Brokey frag that came down. It felt like it was calm for FaZe. This opening kill, look at this. From downtown, wow. taps into the head of Rops. And that does speak to the fact that, of course, it's still not over just because you get that opener. But I think they were caught off by the fact that Heroic hadn't made a move up until that point. They just waited out after the last kill. And opportunity presents itself. No guns here for FaZe and an opening right away from Yabby. Carrier Round has barely started. Tried to extend down the mid wall by the looks of it. More pistols in play, but... Heroic, not likely to let this one happen again, although we are talking three of their players at that half health point. Rain and Twists, a position of peace. Rain peaks as Twists gets killed, and now he runs for the hills, tries to hide in sight, delivers a what? Oh! Good stone golem with a triple kill, and now we're down into the 1v1. They give him the smallest margin, the slimmest piece of cover. And he connects with a triple deek. Both players run the opposite way. Brokey doesn't catch him. Oh, by a hair. Timing to a T. Katie and hands busy. Brokey encroaches, comes around the side. Shots missed both ways. Katie and falls. <laughs> and FaZe will pick up 10. Oh my God. Let's watch that back, shall we? Of course, Rain gets a buff in the fountain. We've got to see this triple. Watch this. Whew. He makes it rain. Oh, man, that's that third. Wow. Everything is going yeah! well. 5v4 in the opening moment. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are fucking insane, rain. Holy hell. A glimpse of the Antwerp major MVP. Immovable inside that B site. He had all of Heroic chasing him down Banana, and he gets on top of that fountain to hold.
suddenly heroic. That's two Ecos for FaZe Clan versus Heroic just in the second half. Three across the map. Still enough tools to work with. Yeah. Kerrigan almost caught out, but who other than Rain to offer us another hold. Kerrigan's MP9 finds a bit of damage, but it's another flood forward from the Heroic players. That might be suspicious, you know? They sent him forward after he just fell back, and Rain made that cover take place. Oh, from rain, but right into it. Damn, that's costly. He's trying to figure out. Front side smoke comes down, and they don't have info. What a no risk. one CT to spot, and a heroic. The Was there tactic, a flash? the tactic just pulls that out completely. He's just trying to get ready because he thinks the exec is coming in. Instead, they weren't even worried about the op. It could have been in CT in that position. Oh man, oh boy. We know his skill ceiling, but right now he's more so on the floor. So if he can step it up here and now, that would have been a wonderful thing for FaZe. Instead, with a few lesser weapons, Heroic go back to that B site. Imagine having to try and go take another piece out of Rain. But in this case, Rain just offers himself up. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame for Twist, of course. Could have made that potentially winnable. It still would have been difficult. Heroic's tactic right there is the swing kill. The rotation, final one comes out towards B, leaves Swiss and Pit with a Falmus. It's not been a great game for him. He was, of course, the most impactful player by the numbers the last time they played against Heroic uh, on this map. And Twist, throughout this year, unbelievable consistency. Imagine getting carried by a North American. We had Rain, who Imagine. was the Antwerp MVP. We have Brokey, who's the best player this year as their offer. But Twist with a rifle is right on his tail. But it's not been a strong day so far. Tess man, that got messy. Trying to fight over top of the smoke. Kerrigan looking to get the MP9 into the kill feed, but... sets up giving them more banana space. The same space that Tess leans on when Rain comes around that corner and falls victim to it. So back and forth we go. Heroic, a one-round lead. Regulation coming to an end. Head-to-head -head delivers. Desert Eagle for rain. With that recent 3K, still a threat. A little bit of damage here off of Jabby yet again. Constant pressure being applied to the top of middle keeps FaZe leaning back. But it feels like Banana's been their calling. Yeah, they've got a lot out of it. Rob's just tucked into the corner. Oh man, they leave him on his own. Jabby, back turn, the flash. They see him solo too. Yep, draws Jabby's attention. That could open up a rotate. Question will be, do Heroic decide to hit that gas pedal before the third member comes over? That smoke should deter them. Rock, should. Rock in a hard place. You know, they're, they're set up. Kerrigan presses in. It's the lesser weapons, but the MP9 point blank is good. Desert Eagle back at hand. Rops wants to come through smoke. Easy pickups. Kadian answers, but there is Rain again. <laughs> Once again from his favorite spot. Loving those angles today. Another Deagle kill in. It's that search right at the top of mid as soon as they have Yabby look. And it's early enough that there's still a chance that Hura could come back to mid. Go through all the protocols again, maybe exact eight, but of course, it's the more unlikely option. So they just cheat three over, re-smoke banana. And importantly, they put Kerrigan up front, right? Because if you stand in the path of the execute, then you can get ahead of the utility that's coming to blind your teammates behind you. And sometimes that's why people are dropping a flash behind them. But in this situation, that MP9, it was the perfect position and perfect timing. The investment. They're gonna be working with less. But still, Tess takes Rops' head. Unfortunately for him, those Desert Eagle players are also unarmored. But at least the M4 gets retrieved, so it's just a bonus. And nonetheless, aim punch considered, Shush will still take up that AK. Tess a stiff breeze from death. And twists, feeling antsy, tries to rumble down mid. Pressed against the smoke, Heroic want to lean into B. Rain's gonna have to do it again. 
stop Shush first and foremost. That one was unarmored, and there's more where the first one came from. Kerrigan goes through, stops Bomb, and now they're stranded inside pit. Flash is fantastic, the pressure is on, and Rain holds them off yet again. Well, they all get swarmed, and Yabby goes down at the end. That's a solid hold. to fight for every single inch. Just barely let him through the door. But look at the great flashes that come in to support, right? Two players inside of the pit, they have their aim displaced as hard as it possibly could be. And they have no chance to get their wits back together, and they are claustrophobic in that pit, trying to cover both CT cross, any kind of Kaufman swing. They don't even have the full sight cleared yet. to a half by looking for some ingenuity here from Heroic. They've got to get some of these rounds back over phase, right? It's happened to them. True. They've got to harness that energy. They've got to pull off these upset rounds. Then it comes back to phase as the team who have much better Inferno stats are winning these close games where Heroic can't. It's been the tail of phase throughout this entire event, right? Close second matches, push to the limit, and yet still they prevail. It just feels like those little slip-up moments, it, it, you'd think it's too much. Not converting each of their pistol round wins, losing to that Desert Eagle of Rain. How much can one team really survive? Because as they try to get into this A site, it's their half by round that falls absolutely Ooh. flat. Oh, that's a clinic. Not one opening, not one crack in that defense. Flawless from FaZe on A for 13. It's taken FaZe a couple of rounds into each half, but look at the timings now. Everything's favoring them. They're reading the game perfectly. Their CT side is coming to fruition. And their stars are shining. Even less investment now. Three rounds on islands here for, Faze, or for Heroic, including the pistol that they couldn't convert again. Impressive that they score these rifle rounds, but at the same time, losing the easy ones to follow. Those are the ones that are going to hurt the most. And if they were well prepared from that first half, the last time they played, because they had so much information on FaZe's T side, it makes sense they figured it out, but they didn't even get to play the second half because they got beat up so bad. Only six rounds in that half, you know, two rifle rounds. FaZe didn't give them much data. Twist force forward. He hears these footsteps. But it's a peek from the opposite end. Still held on to with ease. Twists. Triple kill. Goes down nice and smooth. Activates Rops and Phase. Yeah, they sense that this one is theirs for the taking. Heroic can try their most to make something out of nothing, but poor Jabby and his unarmored P250 not destined for this one. 14 to Phase Clan. A CT side that keeps on delivering and has stabilized. We're no longer looking at bomb plants. We're no longer looking at man advantages. FaZe have survived Heroic's test. They have indeed. At least so far. So far. Should have confidence in them. Again, slow start in this one, but... <laughs> Two tactical geniuses right there. And a third trying to make his name for himself on the other side of the server. Round 26 dawns upon us. A really healthy looking FaZe Clan looking figured out. Being as aggressive as we know that they, they can be and doing it confidently, winning duels with their MP9s. Not letting this bomb go down on the B site. Very few post plan situations now. All the elements that you want to a resilient defense on Inferno. One chance to defend here against match point. Quick clumping inside of middle. Will this setup prevail? Rob's not boosted on top of porch, but rather the closer wall. 
Looking to make the most of that MP9. Rain comes down from Banana. Heroic are going to know that their back line's compromised, and you'd think that leans, of course, into the A stack, which, sure enough, is starting to be pieced together. Yeah. So at a time to still unravel all of this. It's really important that that Molly came in response. Really scary here for Rops. Jabby soon to be left on his own. Rogi postured on the angle. Flashbang's gonna make him uncomfortable, but he's not alone. He still has rain, so he can run a bit of a risk. He can stick to this. We hit the 42nd mark, and Heroic still grouped closer towards A. Again, justifiable stack as Banana belongs to FaZe. Here comes the pop at a moment's notice. And there it is, a delivery from FaZe, but Jabby at least able to come out from the apartment, still working with such little help. Twist gets cleared out. They've managed to unravel that hold, even despite Twist's and Rop's best efforts. Jabby and Stown bring it back. Bomb planted, and to deny FaZe 15. Do the CTs press in? They have a flash, they have their kits, and they've got rain getting closer. But it's an uncomfortable one for Brokey to try and press up beyond that moto. He's not gonna get his duel towards Jabby, who plays tucked with such little bits of HP. Stown's gonna have the corner of cover and the first point of contact. He takes Red's head off and Brokey decides to fall back, doesn't have the balls for this. Wow. Doesn't have the goal. He concedes, and Heroic will fight for 12. Let's talk about Yabby. Let's talk about Yabby right there. Another round to mirror the multiple rounds he did that on overpass. The round was over, and from the halls, one of the hardiest, hardest entering positions, gets his kills and drops that flash to turn the attention of the lane player so that Stown can get the kill. A beautiful mid-round where he's in the middle of it. Again, looking like he was a thoroughbred Heroic player. Stets up down beautifully to have high HP coming into that post plant. And they do the unthinkable. But again, no two in a row here for Heroic. That's exactly. what they're looking for now. This is the first time. It's not the second time. It's the third time Heroic have been given a chance to break through. But then they get countered right back. And oh! Punished for trying to go over top. He takes a peek. He shouldn't. And with that, 5v4, but remember the low HP here from Shushin Stown. Jabby now also added to that same situation, nearly caught on the fallback. Rops, further damage, just to remind Jabby that you are on the brink of death and defeat. Nice shot from Brokey. Kadian tries to jump over, his teammates push through, but a missed chance, recovered, and no third. Stown into the AWP because he has such low health. We talked about those three low players. Well, that is all that's left. Rops, he sits in sight, Kerrigan's surrounded. Timing. Yeah, Kerrigan's time is a little slow. Rops is completely alone. He has to think about uh, so many things at the moment. Oh, it's silent. Oh my god. Kerrigan, seen, but not yet smothered. Stown's gonna walk this around, try to get the guillotine around his neck. Oh, oh my god. god. Alert. Shoots him in the side of the head. Rops, all the pressure in the world, and he just can't find anyone still this situation silent. They are thinking a thousand miles per minute. Heart they pounding. Piece together. Three players less HP than any one of FaZe right now. Twists, big position. Sits on top of new box. He's gonna drop down plus the bomb. That's immediately gonna start to call Rops over. And again, it's that huge health advantage on top of only eight seconds. And again, Shush falls. Nate at his feet, but there's no hope for Jeremy. Oh. Twists, holds strong. Doesn't matter where he's anchoring from. Whether it's A site or B right now, he holds his nerve. Put himself in a beautiful position to multi as well, staying up top on quad. And he had such a quiet start to this game. Yeah. Twist was right down there with Kerrigan at the bottom of this scoreboard and on the CT side has recovered. He surpassed Rain and attempting to catch up to Rops and Brokey. Something like five kills. Not what we expect. I can't, man. From Russell Van Dolken. Heroic almost organized in the most impressive way ever. Here Taking it comes down again. Kerrigan. Fast. Oh. oh, it's fast. And with the gloves off, Shush tries to open everything up, but Rain just caught another kill. And then they continue to falter. Tessas with everything left to do. Heroics five loss streak on Inferno extended to six. And while on one side of the server you have Heroic, 
on the other, the greatest Dane. What a game from you guys there. I've got to start with this back and forth. It seemed like it was a, a war of mental fortitude. These four spies, these crazy close rounds. What did that take to win? Was it just about breaking them? Uh, holy frag movie, man. It's insane. Like, the guys are stepping up. It's insane shots. And uh, yeah, it's a crazy atmosphere in here. So yeah. And what was that kind of hype doing to the rest of the team? Is that what spurred you guys on to be able to actually take it? I mean, of course, we're really hyped, especially when people are like, the, the guys are doing something like this. You know, it's crazy rounds all the time, so we just have to keep going. Now, Mirage, you've only played it twice so far this tournament. This year, you have not played Heroic, despite the amount of games you've played. You've dominated your opponents within this event on Mirage. You must be feeling confident. Of course. Mirage is uh, a good map for us, uh, but it's also a good map for them, you know? Uh, we know how they play, and they know how we play, so we just have to go out and uh, smack them. Well, that's what we look forward to seeing. Robin, good luck. Thank you. Very nice. Now, how do I get in? I don't have a ticket. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I made it into the Royal Arena. Holy shit. <laughs> I won! I won! Hey, you! Stop! <gasps> Wait, it wasn't me. I'm just a fan. That's what they all say. Anomaly, why? surviving and phase thriving throughout the chaos and the carnage despite having their flays doused on the map of overpass they absolutely reignite coming back into inferno and at the most crucial moments certainly a war of attrition and man matthew we have a grand final on our hands now we absolutely do that is exactly what the doctor ordered and this is what i was afraid of on behalf of heroic it's this moment that phase hit in the game where you start feeling like they are invincible they're undefeatable you can not put them down doesn't matter the situation doesn't matter the power play you have if you have better weapons if you have better timings they're gonna find a way to put you down and they did so on that second map 
I branded her heroic as firefighters on that first map. I <laughs> yeah. think it's fair to say that FaZe were thieves coming into this one. Uh, and it begins off with a back-to-back -back eco play. Yeah, heroic winning both pistol rounds in this game, but couldn't convert the second round. So we can start with the first eco play we got for you, which is already in round two. Heroic was supposed to get off to a good start. They lost Mirast, uh, sorry, Inferno five times in a row. Unfortunately, some nice opening coming in from Rain right here with a Deagle and some back, but again, Face Clan and Kerrigan out called Heroic in this scenario. They got in towards the bomb side, broke you with a nice kill with the scout, and all of a sudden Heroic is nowhere to be found near this bomb side. It's always tough to retake, especially when you're going up against Deagles in good position with the bomb planted. This was a great example of what could not happen for Heroic. But okay, if it happened once, we can live with that. But Matthew, it happened more than just once. It didn't happen just once. We have to command Heroic after this mess up you just mentioned. They still managed to put eight rounds on the board on the CT side. They move on to the second half. Yabi has a beautiful gun round and then another eco play and another one because the trouble doesn't stop here for heroic slow paced methodical a execute but with a lack of information and a lack of pressure on the b side all of the players from phase are gathered up on the a side the deagle do what the deagle will do headshots on top of headshots and just like that heroic have put themselves in a horrifying situation if you are willing to put down phase if you're willing to lift a trophy you cannot allow these guys to win these rounds heroic have made life immensely hard for themselves. And this is a problem for Heroic. We saw them do it against Team Liquid as well. They won six out of six pistol rounds, but only converted three of those. Same here, they win two pistol rounds, doesn't convert a single one. Yeah. This is a massive issue for Heroic, and they need to fix that for Mirage. Yeah, it's a whole one thing happening once in a map, but it's a whole other thing, it happening twice. I want to hear what was going on in the server in that second one. I get sight. Smoke swap it, smoke swap it. Coming short. One more low. Go high, high, high. I'm holding, holding, I'm holding, I'm holding. I'm holding. Short, 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 one more. Short, one I'm more. Holding, I'm Abs, holding. I think. Abs on short, I think. Abs yep. on short. Yeah. Abs on short. Headshot on short. I'm short. Oh, headshot, headshot, headshot. Nice! Yes! 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 <laughs> Man, so much hype coming out from Carrigan there and thoroughly well deserved stealing that one away. Uh, the thievery just kept on coming though from FaZe. Let's uh, roll it back to round number 15. Daylight robbery once again from FaZe in this round here. We see the execute is being stopped bravely by the likes of Hillary. You can see the trades are beautiful. The crossfire is right in there. It's a 4v2. And then Freya, let me present to you the fear of winning, where the perfect is the enemy of the good. You try and do a run boost in four versus two. You didn't need to do that. You just had to go in together. You just had to have a good spacing. But this is why we say the difference between winning a semi-final and a final, the difference between the trophy or not, is keeping you cool in these moments. Why did Heroic need to do a run boost in a 4v2 situation? This is when you get in your own mind. You want to do the perfect play because you want that victory so much. But sometimes you just got to take it easy and be simple. There was no need for that. That is so disappointed over there, huh? Yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah disappointed. I'm disappointed because I think they played good Counter-Strike. Yeah. But you have to limit these moments. They have allowed FaZe to come back into this game. And when you have Giants like these, they'll seize all these opportunities. Matthew, you might want to look away because we're just going to roll the similar track one more time in round number 20 because I come Storm or Shine, Rain is here, and he was showing up. It shouldn't be possible. What you're about to see right now shouldn't be possible. At this point in the game, Heroic is about to run away with it. It's a 5v2 against two Deagles. That's it. Some absolutely insane shots coming in from Rain. Not only one, not only two, but three Deagle kills and then Brokey comes into the situation as well. Ends up in a 1v1 that theoretically at this point is a 50-50 because none of the two players have any information as to where they're going. You may think that Brokey missed the timing right here, but he can hear Kadian right now planning the bomb in a situation where Brokey just have to hit the shots and look at this as well. The nerves are getting to Brokey as well. Three or four missed Deagle shots finally connects towards Kadian and once again we see Faze steal another round. How many rounds within the first 20 did they steal? How many times were Heroic supposed to win this game? It shouldn't even have been close. It's horrifying, but you know what? I'm not that that disappointed this time uh, because you just have to recognize the brilliance of Rain. Okay. I don't think in this very example that Heroic did so many things wrong. Arguably, a flash or two could have been great. Are they rushing? But it's just the Norwegian god, the architect with the Deagle, and that's the brilliance of Counter Strike. Well, we do now move on to the third and final deciding map, and it does come down to the grounds of Mirage. Let's see what Danny has in store for us coming into this one. Coming into this final map, Heroic have actually played this once in the tournament so far against G2, and I want to highlight this strategy that they ran. So first we're going to see five towards mid. Tess says he's going to throw this smoke here that lands towards triple, but it actually lands on the bench here instead. And by landing on the bench here, it creates a bit of a one-way because if you look at the CT's point of view, they actually can't see any C uh, any T's coming up from connector. But for the T side point of view, he can actually see if his, T if his CT is peeking from that area because his feet are showing. This ultimately allows T's to run up here without 
without having to worry about CG spawn. Now the next thing you'll see here is that Kadian, he's going to toss this smoke here towards jungle, ultimately letting these players coming out from connector, not having to worry about the right side. And then a Molotov that's added in towards that default side to block any peek towards that connector side. Ultimately, these three nades allow Heroic to basically push all the way up. Shush doesn't have to worry about CG, doesn't have to worry about towards that site area, neither does he have to worry about jungle. He can focus all his attention towards this left side here. And this is a strat that I'd be expecting Heroic to run. So it's up to FaZe to see if they're ready for it. Yeah, they're going to have to be ready indeed coming into this third and final decider. And man, Machu, it would be an understatement to say the pressure is on. It's going to be the hardest map that Heroic have played yet in their career because Kerrigan has Kadian exactly where he wanted to be. That means that Kadian could almost feel the trophy, but Kerrigan just rubbed it away from him. Now we get to reset the cards, and I don't know if they have the stamina, I don't know if they have the courage to actually push it through the finish line. I think FaZe, they're on course now. They must have a plan though, because it was Heroic who said no to play Nuke in that third deciding map. They prioritized playing Mirage, despite knowing the fact that FaZe have played it twice at this tournament, winning 6 16-6 and 16-8 yesterday against NIP. So if I'm in work right now, I'm expecting them to know exactly what they're doing because they had the opportunity of playing Nuke, but they decided not to. Well, everything comes down to this and it all falls on the final battleground of Mirage. After this series, it will either be FaZe or Heroic lifting the trophy above their heads. And when we are back, it is time to truly raise the roof here in the Royal Arena. I'm excited to go to Abu Dhabi for the World Final. Try our best to succeed and win, and at the end of the day, hopefully raise the trophy. Obviously, the event is really big, the prize money is big. Oh my God. We want to achieve as much as we can and play our best. You can't hide. I'm just looking forward to winning the tournament. I don't really care who we play. Faith, Navi, the heroic teams that I want to play against. I think Navi are our biggest rivals. Where would I put the trophy at home? Put it in the front, nice and shiny. Put a light on. Face Clan are going to win the world final. We've been grinding it. Make sure you take down the king when you come for the crown. And this is the time. Well, Royal Arena, it's about that time. It's a bittersweet moment. We only get to come here once a year, and it always ends up delivering. You guys have been wonderful so far, and so this is your moment. This is it, our last map for the Fall Finals of 2022. 
phase, heroic. They take each, or they take their own maps, and now we end this one on Mirage. But we saw something similar yesterday, Mo, when NIP took this challenge to phase on Mirage. That's when we saw phase rebound in the series. We saw them find their groove, and we found them here now today. And this can be a battle of stamina to do it late into the night. A best of three in front of a crowd. That's more exhausting than playing a match from home. And we saw that phase yesterday. They didn't get tired. The real irony of that match was seeing Brolin do so well, but the rest of his team not be there. Right. In map three, and it's I, always kind of like who delivers. Exactly. In map three, it's come to who delivers. Now, when it came to the best of fives, oh my, heroic. They kept that stamina. They kept it. And hopefully your stamina is ready too. This is your last map of 2022. Come new Copenhagen! Come new, bro. Let's go, Mirage. The ultimate battleground. Honestly, it's been a great map three as of late. Yes, it has been. You know, I, Most played map in CSGO. It, it's, it survived the Anubis switch. The one that everybody knows the best. More glory to come. Kadian starts it off. It's action packed right out the gate. The in-game leader holds, but loses out to Twists. Palace Peak, that's the success for FaZe. The ramp player's actually stunned for a second. And Brokey slides back over towards the firebox. The bomb gets its way over towards ramp. We've got layers, we've got time. Oh, this is an interesting play, of course. I mean, this is, you know, map control one. New ideas coming to CT's left guessing. <laughs> Brokey's just hiding. Jabby trying to sniff him out, but by the looks of it, it's an execution. This bomb site falls so quiet. Oh, and Brokey ends up picking up a second. Rain on his way down. As he pours out from apartments, finishes it off. So a T-side pistol win for FaZe. Now listen, pistol rounds mean jack for Heroic when it came on to Inferno. They picked up both those pistols. They lost to both four spies. Yes. You no know, desk touched on those mistakes. The mistakes that Heroic simply couldn't afford if they were going to close this series out in two. They have to harness that power and do it themselves. Both these teams are more even on Mirage than any of these other two maps that we saw previously. Their CT and T win percentages, unlike those other maps, actually mirror each other. Leaning towards CT, but not relying on it. Still doing well enough on the T side. Phase small edge, of course, winning their T pistol. We saw them eco heroic two or three times that game on Inferno. Heroic won a little bit of revenge in that regard, investing into this one. Oh, window peak. Not quite. Twists the recovery on Inferno. Has to be noted the 3K from Quad, the entire CT side come back, the bounce back in individual form. And Kerrigan, as well, the last time they played Inferno, was the second highest rated player on FaZe Clan. He may be needed. Got the bodies in the right place here for Heroic. It's real quiet because of that smoke. But as it fades, the scout will find its mark. Another chance, but this time a miss. Shush, Deagle to the face of Roth. It's a big kill to get. Kadian finds a no-scope through the smoke. Oh, a magical moment. Think about how many times this was done to them, but the recovery already starts to unfold. Jabby's on the flank. Shush adds another. Rain on the reload. Perfect chance. It's a one-shot execution. But where is Brokey? That's what Heroic have to wonder. And he wastes no time getting all the way around them. They go ahead, smoke off ticket, but he gets dropped to 2 HP. Oh, that's it. We're talking 10 seconds stick down to the final seconds. Oh. And Jabby, well, what do you know? Adds his name to the list of the heroic players that do to phase what was done to them. I hate looking at Yabby as a lurker, but he is so often by himself. It's usually just splitting off at the right time. Here he is on the big flank coming into a ramp. And obviously, some crazy stuff going on through this connector smoke both ways, but mainly in favor of Heroic. And they actually pull off the eco. Well, that's someone we house. recognize. Make some noise for Sonic! <laughs> and find his book at a store near you. <laughs> Shush. Top mid, easy hold. Again, we've got armored pistols, but it's a quick clash. 
Stown out of the bottom of Connector. He's got teammates around him. So confident here in mid. You've already got the first kills trickling your way. And it's a dunk to the top of middle. Not to mention damage on the two members in apartments. Yeah, so phase very quickly to the wayside. Yeah, they stamp him out. Own in mid. Twist does have an investment. I mean, they spent money here. But they got eviscerated. Not even a single point of damage dealt to Heroic. No map control to speak of. Walking it back now. Looking for a second ride. They don't want to have to deal with Shush. Sit. Drops will get the AK in hand. Final chance to do anything. Well, we've got 500 HP on the side of Heroic as they continue to convert it. Oh, Shush good. will take a little, but hey, time for him to offer something up. Yeah, a huge fifth kill. Clean one. Again, no casualties for Heroic. No money for FaZe. A chance for Heroic not only to win that second round, come back into it with the tempo, having money saved up, but then the next round, five alive, and now no investment. Man. Imagine the start Heroic could have if they clean up on this round. Right. They're going to be rich. You know, the building blocks falling into place for a strong CT side. And unfortunately for Kerrigan, he can't say we can just think about the next round. They have to try to get something out of, of this. Course. Even with no tools. Just bodies and glocks. No advantages to speak of. Saw what Heroic did with five nades on Inferno. But not a single piece of utility. Yeah, no, no reason to move. It's not boring, it's tactics, guys. Jabby, ooh, dies to Glock. Hey, there's a kill. And great then in there, that's when the push comes through. And that's when ooh. the push goes down. Heroic gonna hold off versus the Glocks. And that late onslaught attempt into A. That was slow because they recognized the opportunity at hand. I mean, they weren't even thinking about winning the, winning the round, but any kills. 5K off here, 5K off there. But instead, they just get one down. Shush reinvests, KD gets the op. Round five goes live, and there is so much in the bank already for Heroic. This is the last map. This is what it all comes down to. Time to recover. Smoke stop mid, no overt aggression, except for that inside the apps. Twist just wants to throw a couple pieces of utility here. He's not looking for a gunfight, especially not versus two players. But Tess S will be locked into the corner nice and early, and we already start to get a move towards top mid. Twist wants to go join them from beneath. Good amount of map control here for FaZe, but Tessa starting to get a little curious. Feeling lonely in the apartments. He's looking for love. Heroic being aware of late mid takes here. Not putting pressure down, but taking space elsewhere. This could be round defining. Got one on guard. Nice. Walks right into it. Brokey's awareness. Wins them this kill. That's and patience. at the minute mark, that's huge. Meanwhile, everybody else just still sitting in their corners. You know, this isn't one of those rumbunctious, exciting CT rounds out of Heroic. They want to play responsive. Wow, they don't move. Twist is still just keeping that head down. Javi's starting to get curious. They want an answer. But they're starting to piece it together now. Shots both ways. The MP9 goes in. Kadian, he's caught Kerrigan, Deagle's out, and it gets away from Stown. Now they know that Kadian's back here, but he already dropped the bomb. And with that, Woo! tries to push out. We've wow. got FaZe with an early answer. That feels good for Kerrigan because one player goes down in Tessus. They waited all that time, expected Heroic to respond in some way. So in some sense, Heroic out, oh, mind game them. They stayed, they had four alive. This should be good enough for a hold. You run this back enough times over, the CTs are going to come out ahead. And yet they still are able to brute force their way through. Kerrigan knows he has some good soldiers ready to play map three. But again, that money that was made from Heroic will come back to benefit them now. It'll have to be enough. two rifles in a row for FaZe to get an easy round. 
Earned reward. And Jabby, thinking about it, starting to get active. Just has to move a couple feet forward, and with the flash off, Brokey dodged. Wow. Kerrigan walks straight into his death, and in an instant, we've got Jabby back, but we've also got Robs out on a part. He's gotten out of Palace. Shush! He gives up the A site because he's going to take T spawn. Yeah, but they still know Robs will be lurking around. But will they expect him to be this far forward? We'll see. Shush. He's got a chance, yeah. Kadian lucky to be alive. Shush recovers it. And now, all that's left over for FaZe is to try to run this into B, met by Tessess. Brokey nearly dead, and the weapons that Heroic are able to afford because of the strong start nets them a fourth and pushes FaZe back to economic dumps. And it's another five alive rounds. The money is stacked or the same. high. Economy is playing a factor in this lead right now. They had everything they needed to. Jabby, amazing flash dodge. It's coming in from mid. He gets up far enough to hear it. He turns at the perfect time. That could change the game. Raw small opportunity, but it's missed. T timeout comes in. Oh, money once again. This will really test you. All the brain power you've got, Kerrigan. Some of the least fun rounds to call. I'll pick up some deeks. Probably play this slowly. And again, just look for damage. Things get very real. Grand Finals delivering thus far. Shush 10 and 3. Again, right? These anomaly type moments. We know Shush has it in him. It's just that he's kind of a. He was a backline player. Oh! <laughs> there speak he is. of the devil. We call him a support player because he's so good with the nades. Finds a home for that frag and an easy pick up here versus. Yeah, he has an interesting story this year as well. You know, one of the best support players. And just like in his name, kind of quietly slotted in, never did anything wrong. I mean, his teammates speak highly of him, but yeah. if it's a map where heroic or just kind of running rampant, you know, it's never shush to get that hyper aggressive play. He's yeah. not going hunting. He's not the guy who gets set up. No, he's content to just do his thing. But he makes do. And when he does his thing well, you will watch him climb that scoreboard. So. It's great thus far from him. Coming alive in the most critical moment. Most important map. Yeah. And you know, these finals frags, they mean more than regular ones. Oh, Jabby. Good sign. Keeps it clean. Speaking of finals frags, Ooh. well, Brokey and Yabby. Well, they've done a bit here. You know, don't get me wrong, right? A major trophy lift is the most coveted moment for any Counter-Strike player. That's yes. what they all play for. But next up for Heroic, specifically would be this one tonight. Yep. 5-2 start on map three. Ooh. And Robs with the quick little reminder. That's not small. Eagles are deadly. Grabs an M4, smoke, Ooh. and an Wait. additional kill. Oh, he wished he had more time on the clock. Right. 14 Imagine. health right now, and he's moving. He'll take an AWP, oh. but then he gets caught out by Tessa. So still two up. Had a three-round lead for this CT side, but it's still a long road to victory for both squads. Yeah. Uh, those kills are not small. Just the money just seems to be such a big story right now. Heroic after that eco. He's always kept that off buff on rifles. Nothing here from Kerrigan so far. He's the last guy we want to talk about in that department, but he does, he will come up, you know, when we look at some of the big tournament wins. Kerrigan is there individually. See a couple of different approaches here on mid in terms of timings. We've also seen Heroic be comfortable giving it away when they take space elsewhere. Of course, the most natural way to play the map from the CT side. But right now, they're 50-50. They still have this player pressed up, Palace. They still have eyes somewhat on mid. But look at what's empty. Look at what's empty. They've actually left this one part open to strengthen the rest. Oh! Clean. Jabby still sits back. And that's the guy who pulled the goalie on the B site, came back to it after getting his kill. Oh, yep. Walks right into the line of sight of Jabby. Wow. These they clearly have talked about this. Jabby lingering inside the window, post smokes, waiting for his opportunity to get a kill. 
Normally it's your con player that draws attention for that smoke to come up, and then he peeks out. This time it's Katie off Cat. Leaving Phase to just try and lean into this A site, but in desperate need of an entry, and Tess Not the first time we've seen this position played. It was just, just a moment ago. Different members of Heroic, and yet the same result. All is good. Drops looking to just get one kill here. This was a full and gun round out of Phase Clan, and it nearly falls flat. One kill is all they'll get. Heroic holding on to this substantial lead and continuing to collect round wins. Yeah. Continuing to smother FaZe, to push them back to pistols. And look, it's confident, it's calm. I mean, look at the makeup of that map in that round. I mean, no one was inside a B, they were waiting for a late mid attack. Both Kadian gets his and then Yabby helps make it even worse. They were looking for a late connector play. They got what they wanted. If that was a full-on B rush or a contact explode, that round was over for Heroic. Oof. Oh, drops. Howdy. Yeah, maybe find some leverage back. I mean, it's still only a half investment. He's been getting kills on rounds like these. But flashbacks. But they're not converting. Yeah. Right. True. One of the key elements to losing Inferno. Yeah, he hit not that same shot yesterday. Able to stop rounds like this. Those mistakes in these kinds of maps cannot be afforded. And it's only one death. Still plenty of players to pick up that slack, and seemingly they do so. Everybody trying to trickle into the B site, thinking that first frag meant it was theirs for the taking, but Rops' scout kill in vain. Nothing more for FaZe. Seven to Heroic. It was a quick and effective calm right there. You see Tessa is not even worried about the van run out, even though that's a threat to him. He's got a teammate behind him. That's covered. He can focus on the window region. Shush has his back rotating in. They've got trust on this team. Guns oh. back in, though. This is the phase that should frighten you. This is the phrase, phase that rips up many teams. Yeah, as Robin said, the team to beat before that major started, and they don't feel like that anymore. We'll have to earn it every week in Counter-Strike. The last thing they need is a new challenger. And it seemed like going into this series, you know, four of the five highest rated players at this event, FaZe Clan. Dismantled of their opening opposition. Is Yabby in the same position, or he's up in ladder this time around? Yeah, slightly different. Just a little variation here. Don't want to get stale. Tess, oh, about to have a problem. Good thing he moved. It works out wonderfully. Tess, given a chance at a second, but instead it's Shush from inside sight. We have played in 10 rounds of CS, and Shush, 17 kills. Little recovery, but they give up their backs, and by doing so, an eighth. Wow. Heroic will continue to collect CT round wins. And it's not that classic hyperextension. It's not this uncontrollable aggression. It's just varied positions and performance from Jabby. I mean, the transposition there from Yabby. All he does is go up in the ladder. He still has eyes on window and underneath window. He's still involved in this connector play. Kadian goes into Palace. They're waiting for it to end A every single round. And they're right. Faze are trying to dress it up in different ways. But it's still the same pig. Heroic are feasting right now on the CT side. All of these frags look easy. They're walking into them. These late con plays are not paying off. And now they're back to a half by once again. The maximum amount. Javi wastes no time. Quick jump onto the catwalk. He will be under siege, but able to deliver. Bombs over towards the apartments. May try to press into the B site. We know what happened last time. Every single member of FaZe was called. And before they can even try to press in, there are two members in mid, dead men walking. It's down. Gonna waste no time. Gets aggressive. Drops bomb. And Heroic are giving FaZe not a chance to catch their breath to find any kind of crack in this armor.
Kerrigan fights tooth and nail just for one kill, for one attempt, for a damn hope at bringing this back. Robs will do the exact same thing. A nade meets him. He falls to 76 health, and as he runs back towards Apps, he will be caught by Tessess. No matter where you run or hide, Heroic have Phase's number. Look at how many positions are being played by the different members of Heroic. Tessess pushing up or B last round in Connector. Getting these kills, and this time Phase, they try to go for Connector again, but it's a fake. They're trying to make it Connector control into maybe a kill on this half buy, mind you to draw attention away from the B-play, that could have paid off for sure. It's been so under-attended. There's been not enough pressure in that direction, and they thought they could condition Heroic, but in order to condition, you have to have fear, and right now, Heroic are not scared. They've won all of those other rounds. Gabby, nice spot, but this time, empty-handed. We're gonna get three players out of the palace from phase. Well, two, in fact. One does stay back, because the bomb plant should come through. We've got pressure up from the top of Connector, a double up over towards Ticket. They anticipate Rops, then they could kill him close. It's Shush who tries to go over, and he's gonna get shut down. Phase trying to press along towards Ticket. Rops will add another to the tally, and we've got a double man advantage. It's taken some time, but they've done it. Breaking through Heroic's defense by way of Palace push. Yeah, fast out Palace this time. Hoping Heroic just spent too much attention inside of middle. They get rewarded for that. One kill on the exit. Phasing to tighten up. They don't want to drop too many players here, even though there's no retake coming in. It's a decent punish. And better late than, ne than never, but you know, what never late is better. And we. Oh. Could be uh, critical in the yeah, buy-ups. We've lost majority here. Next rounds, but two will hang on here for phase. But the thing is, these late starts, <laughs> and you think eventually they're going to pay for it. And it's not Inferno. You know, it's not heroic on a five-map loss streak. No. It's a decider. It's much more even by the numbers for both of these teams. And right now, heroic are already shooting on par, maybe even slightly above what they normally do. Nine CT rounds here on map three. Their first timeout called. And they've phased to earn some respect a little bit. The strong play that comes out. It's not a sustainable type of round. It's not a default victory. It's a pocket strat. It's something fast. It's fiery. That's on brand for Kerrigan. And there will be lots more of that that he could potentially do. But only three rounds left in this half. And they have yet to break the composure of Heroic when it comes to that 5v5 in the default moving slow. Heroic have been very strong, using Yabby so well. Shush to carry in those early rounds. Down right at it. Fast one. And knocked to the avail of FaZe. Off of the timeout, trying to keep it quick. Rain could trade, but at what cost? Down to a measly 9 HP. Had a chance for the connector peak, but Stown opts not to. Holds back. He too low after that first engagement. All the money for FaZe on the line. An absolute smash of a CT half if Heroic can clear these last four kills. But through the chaos, you know, Tessa does the, takes the same space. Stown, you know, that's very easy for Stown to die in that situation. He is pre-aiming top of mid, has to adjust, hits a hard shot. 13 and 5 on the CT side, but... Faze, this is one of their better positions. Low on rain, but the same can be said for Stown. Oh man, are they walking into the majority again? Mm -hmm. Once more, Javi will sit beneath that palace. He's got a smoke if that one Molotov on Rain can somehow find him. But if Rain goes down, which he should on only nine points of health, they just lost a ton of utility. An incendiary for Brokey. But again, Jabby, he's got the util he needs to just hold this off to stave off the push. An attempt to get back in. A 2v4 equalized. And they know that Jabby's back here. There's a hope for FaZe. But time is running thin. And the flank coming in. 
Tessas, it all boils down to timing. He loses track of the first one. Seven seconds, Robs is planning bomb, and that goes down on default. Tessas gets his kill, 12 health left. Flash over top, he looks for the up. Where the hell is Brokey? And he sat back waiting, holds oh. the angle, gets the clutch, and strikes him from the skies. Yeah, pulls him down to the earth. Wow, the time was good there for Tessas. The two kills from Robs, though, into the site. Imperative, both of them. And the second one, harder than the first. Good patience, the amount of time left on the clock, man. They, they did walk another split into the three-player stack. Tessas, the solo guy pushing on B. Again, this is bronze, not brain from FaZe. Brokey hunts yet again. All that struggle, all that fight, a two versus four to get a fourth. They need what's left of this half. Heroic have met that quota. This phase just with a couple more chances to remind them who is boss. Rops slides out, silences Cadian. And once these smoke fade, we could very well have a fight on our hands. Down, up, above it. Rain walks right in, but he took out a nade. Playing with utility, Stown capitalizes on the moment. Brokey just stuck inside the corner. He's gonna have to fight his way out. It's still being held. Here comes the onslaught into the B site. MP9 for Tessas. Haven't seen much from him. Haven't needed to. And they've lost track of him inside of the smoke. Heroic pickup man advantage. Jabby goes down. It's another recovery coming out of phase. Tessas versus Rops. 30 seconds. Where has Cool gotten off to? Woo, trying to so create a timing. Tessas sits over towards the arch. A critical one versus one with 15 seconds on the clock and a lesser weapon here for Tessas, but he does have health advantage and he does have just enough cover. Rops walks closer, concerned with corner, but now there's no time. He simply needs the kill. He's outgamed himself and that's heroic with 10. Oh, that's how they lock it up and now Rops can't die. Oh man. He nearly created that time, but you see internally from Tessas, no pressure on Cat for just long enough. In that situation, you can give yourself one chance to get a kill. Look at the movement from Rops. And hey, saving man. this time, we see that Tessas moves forward just as he passes by. I don't think he clears get right in that situation. But cool Tessas movement. is too smart to just chill. But a little too icy, man, frozen in fear, trying to find that last kill. Time expires. And Heroic will take it. Stown back into the feed. Kerrigan hit. Shush top ladder. Drop. Rops trying to respond. Twist between the two. Kadian burns out the palace play. And it's going to have to be another unthinkable two versus four. Heroic are putting up a defense. And Rain trying to collect the recovery. He'll fall away with Bomb. And Rain with Brokey oh. will attempt to get away. Yeah. No. Plenty of time on this clock. Yeah. Yabby comes in real early right there with the clear to call out space. And interestingly, he doesn't cut off the rotation, so that makes it a little bit more difficult here for the CT side to make a move. It's a gun. Silver lining. Kadian posted, makes that contact. Tess can just sit beneath. Smoke for Brokey. No way to pressure Tess out. What if he jumps? Nope. Knows better. Goes deeper. Wants blood. Rain concerned with that massive T-spawn flank, but it's not really there. So he decides to double this one back, and all he wants to do is try to join Brokey on Palace, but if he just falls victim to this MP9, if Tessas gets this, then what is Brokey expected to do in the face of heroic CT side? You have 15 seconds left to try and reclaim something to be proud of. But instead, we will switch to the last half of the Fall Finals with Heroic on an 11-4 lead.
Welcome everybody to the World Team of the Year 2022. I have five great names on this list. That's a real mix. So the only player who would have been in top five. Like determined to just try and win a game on his own and he does it. It's either he's got the ball rolling or he's just another domino. Number one player on the team stats, entering with a rifle. Destructure a uh, bomb, bomb site, go in and take the jewel and win it. Easy choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the crazy part. And I want an event with him. You want an event with him? No. His consistency in that realm, it you really can't be an accident. Maniac, you're the official Zaiwu expert here. I do. <laughs> We are the trophies. Yeah. That yeah. bothers me. Like, why is he not winning? Come on, man. Open your eyes. Doesn't matter if you like him or not. You gotta respect him. <laughs> you gotta respect what he's doing. You know? like... I'm really, really, really hoping that this was just a first step. One hell of a rock solid defense out of Heroic. It's a hell of a test on a big stage after heartbreak in Rio. But that ground finals could be a lesson to what to improve on and to how to actually close. And this time to close versus 2022's very best. One final half, Royal Arena, let's hear it! Let's go. Thanks for being here. You've been a great audience. And you get better and better each year. Yes. And now for what might be this most spectacular finish in a Royal Arena with a Danish champion. <laughs> Either one or five. Yeah. Either one or five. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Rob said one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Canadian canceled. Splitting pistols. That would create for the best situation. Drops Not for a phase, of course. Ooh. More than one chance, in fact, but if he repeeks it, there's two. They're coming for him. And he gets cleared back. The man advantage is lost. And Tess has this whole time. Oh, oh, sees twists. Yeah, they could, now they could clearly see the plans were to lean towards A, but really was it? Look at the rotations here. Wow, an excellent call. moment to collect themselves, their thoughts, and their composure. Faze are believing. One flash. Stown throws it. The bombardment of Heroic commences in B. Jumping Glock denied. Brokey, Kerrigan, clean headshots, bombs down. Two versus four. Oh, they even it out, but there's Faze. There's Faze to stop the early hopes. What a call. What a call. They kill Rops. In underpass, they see Tessas also coming in from top mid, putting pressure down, and FaZe rotate one more to be. Heroic gave them every reason in the world to believe that that was going to end up towards the A site, something slow, something a bit later on, and they don't split the difference at all. They trust the call. Massive move in the final pistol of this grand final. Again, Kerrigan definitely called their way 
out of Inferno. Drops. Whoa. Tries to come at this. Ends up dying. Uh-oh. Heroica just jumping around merrily, having a good old time. Make it away with an opening kill, plus a chance to fall back. What if they do it twice? What if? Oh, man. Right? A taste of phase's own medicine, wow. perhaps? And the CTs are scrambling. They're incredibly spread out. Well, this is one where they haven't made up their mind. Heroic also have an armada of utility. Wops gives them an opening kill and an MP9. Crazy that Stown's actually going to hold on to that. He's got 6 HP. So the others swing with the techs and off that util, here we go. A hope to rob back early momentum, to really kick FaZe into the coffin. Tessas gets inside of the ticket smoke. He presses right through. There's a player on top, serves up an excellent distraction. Rain draws attention, twists, draws blood. Cadian plays off onto the side of the bench. Brokey fired at by the Tech-9. And Stown, who started it with that one kill onto Rops, is now all that's left over. He will take his chance to leave. Listen, it's a bomb plant, it's a frag, but it's FaZe not making the same mistake as the first half. They'll convert for a sixth round early. Yeah, that was a little scary, of course. There was a push behind it with Rops to try to help him out, but it wasn't close enough to actually get a refrag. They, want, they think they felt like that was going to be an anti-eco towards A. They just wanted to clear out B. Just get that over with. But luckily for them, trying to push through into CT spawn, it can be a fine play. They had Twist Blind, but the guy up on ticket wasn't cleared by Tessus. And then when they found out about him, Twist could join after the flash wore off. Five round game now. Imagine Zonic's laws in effect in the Royal Arena in the Grand Finals. The players talked about it with at the halftime. Yeah. They put it in all chat. That's a bad omen, man. Don't talk about it. <laughs> Zonic's in the building. He is in the building, too. He knows the outcome. Drop sitting in the open ground at the bottom of middle. Heroic could just try to go for that burst into the B site. Who's to stop them? Well, Kerrigan and Brokey, maybe. Look at the attention maybe. here. You know, they are reading the intentions. Mm -hmm. Kerrigan pressed in. That's going to allow them to jump out, hit the ground. And then once they run into sight, Kerrigan's meant to stop them. Meant to. What? Loses to Jabby. Twist and Rob bring back some kills. Down, still swinging with the AK. But it's low HP for him. And three opponents still to topple. Bomb down. Actually, excuse me, no, Shush holds on. It's this moment. Stown versus Rain. Not to mention Twist starts to press up versus the catwalk. If Stown sees him, look, 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 a free headshot. Oh, it's meant to be. But Twist keeps himself low, and they figure out where Shush is at. Another round for Faith. Ooh, that could have got sketchy. Stown probably should have tapped right there. Missed an opportunity. No telling if that would have dictated the round, but look, Rain inside of Connector crouches. comes out for the trade. Look, he crouches. Right as the bullets come out, yeah. man. Maybe he dies from underpass. Who knows? But do you want to give up chances like that? Game gets one step closer. Here we go. The half now really begins. Full guns for Heroic. Full credit, I think if we look back, we're going to see Heroic did plenty of damage on eco rounds, made things scary, even if they didn't always convert. Sure. They've had footing in each of these. Oh, wow. nasty! I mean, Robs hits him in the head, too. That's 5v4 for Heroic. AK simply better. Roki holds on to one, sitting inside of Connector. We still have a good amount of mid-presence for FaZe. But can Kerrigan survive this test? Kerrigan about to be met by a world of pressure. And he sits at the bottom of this scoreboard, 3 and 16. Funnily enough, it's been called to B so many times, but Kerrigan has always had additional help. All right. This time, there is no additional piece. Twists isn't too far off, could get drawn back. Or maybe Kerrigan just decides now's the time to shine. One kill already, and he gets Kadian. 
Brokey finds Tess elsewhere. Shush tries to answer. And Shush played lights out in that first half. But when push comes to shove, when it really truly matters, Kerrigan holds the line. Yes, he does. Dane on Dane action. They decided to walk by. He kept full vision, not looking to play anti-flash, just looking to frag. And he gets Bennett. He benefits from that brashness. Now Shush, with 10 seconds, I mean, basically looking to die here, walking out into the crosshairs of Twist, and he will go down. Uh, now this game is close. Now that lead almost doesn't matter. And now we do look at the fact that FaZe, just like Heroic, are better on CT side. Hell of a time for Kerrigan to pick up two. The story of this match very well might be, could Heroic truly see that finish line? Was it on the horizon or on their front step? Did they believe today was their day? We're starting to see a couple of shots getting missed here and there. And suddenly there are FaZe fans in the building. Yeah. Starting to believe. Understandably quiet after that first half. 11 and 4. Ninjas got the Mirage treatment yesterday. Right? Just another team with a new logo to phase. A team that has an affinity for this B site, which means a consistent test for Kerrigan. Jumping and spotting and now seeing Kadian, his counterpart on the other end. He's got Twist to help out from the catwalk side, but Kerrigan inside of the smoke shuts down Tessess. Mac 10 and Tech 9's finally answer. Kadian tries to double pack. Kerrigan gets another. And by doing so, enables this retake to come through before Bomb even goes Ooh. down. They don't lose their footing. They don't lose composure. And honestly, starting to look like they don't lose grand finals. Yeah, five in a row. And Kerrigan looks like he's been fragging all map. <laughs> These kills are clean. And he's, he's playing with confidence. Overstacked in the right time. Left alone there, but gets all of his nades off. Oh! Twist was there to support with one of the Molotovs from Cat. Works around it, doesn't die. And now they're powering him up a little bit. So FaZe had an affinity for A in their T half. Heroic definitely leading B on so many of these rounds, but not winning on this game plan. And again, if you don't win, you can't condition. All you do is expose if you're one-dimensional. They haven't even felt out the A site apart from that eco strat. We'll see if they have a lot to learn. They well, just wanted to keep bullying Kerrigan, but honestly, he's surviving that challenge, so maybe it's time for a different look. Maybe that nets them a different outcome. But oddly enough, they're not stacked outside B, and that's when Kerrigan dies first. Chance for Jabby to go one better, but look at this freebie from Tessess. He just slides up. There's a gap in it all. Rain, he also gets executed thanks to Shush. Oh, nice kill from Brokey. Not gonna let this site fall for free. But you'd think Heroic have done enough. They pick up the kill into Sandwich. They find the player under Palace. They unroot what was meant to be a solid hold on this A-site. Yes. And look. They had every Faze player. On the fallback, they wow. walk away, a gap created. How does that gap happen? Yeah, I mean, they had every single player from FaZe looking in a different direction after one kill happened. Like dominoes, they toppled. The split came in. They ran into a very overstaffed site. There's three players ready within smokes with the opera, prepared to stop an attack. But once one gets confused, the other does. Then the opera has limited impact and heroic topple the site. Extinguish that flame. Deny phase from getting to 10. And keep a small lead, three round game, but still some money made off those five rounds straight from phase. Good luck, my friends. Let's go. You make history. Let's go. I hope you blues your favorite color.
That wasn't very brave by me, by the way. <laughs> Didn't even try to call it. We know what the devs are up to. <laughs> been there, done that. But you know what hasn't been done? A Dane lifting a trophy here in the Royal Arena. And Heroic right back on that quest. Let's make history. That's one. But listen, it happened on Inferno as well, right? Heroic given chances to break through on that T side. They'd get a round win, and then they'd get stuffed. And look at this adaptation. Rops, Brokey, double op. Last round was a very quiet, kind of walk around, size up type environment. That's how they found one in Sandwich and the other over under Palace. Well, I dare you to walk around corners quietly again. These scopes honed in already. We've got nobody deep on ticket, nothing inside of the sandwich. A is actually primed for the taking. And two ops suddenly can become a liability if you're not playing for the site itself. Potential post-plant situation inbound. This could actually end up being a mismatch in the favor of Heroic. If they smoke out the two CTs over towards Connector, if Rops can't find any kind of an angle, well, that's one thing that could certainly lean the way of Heroic. And while the palace smoke goes down, Rain, pressured by the utility, Javi instantly takes that space, but he doesn't need to see him. Rain catches down first and foremost. Javi tasked with picking back up that bomb. Rain opts not to run through smoke just yet. Man advantage, the way of phase. I think Shush jumped over the gap. No, Rain watches Heard. it. Heard. And the hurt applied by Rain. Two kills. Despite them not made easy, but Tessas down beneath the crocodile in the pit. Chomps on Rops and twists. 2v2 with Jabby low, but Kadian given a chance to shine like no one ever has. Brokey up above him, sees his head, and smashes him against the wall. Oh, the tap from Jabby, and the answer oh. right back by Brokey. Phase, take, 10. And there was no time to play if Jabby went up on the cat, jumped to the bottom of connector, he had that locked up. Brokey with his one chance, locks down the punish. First shot, incredible. And it's been nothing but incredible. Oh my god, wow. that kill is unreal. That's the only way they win. Oh, it looked like a careless mistake, but you see how little Brokey had to work with. Unbelievable that he hits that. What a return to form. Dominated at the start of the year. Was the reason that FaZe were lifting trophies when absent. The other stars pick up slack. And after Rio, we get a new Brokey. And he's been vocal in his interviews here this week, right? He says, I forget about it. Rio doesn't matter. I'm gonna fuck up Heroic. Yeah, and he honestly, with that shot, trying to keep this one rolling forward for FaZe. Oh, just like Inferno, a one-off round. But that one's so close. Wow. They maybe set up the cat pressure, trying to maybe go test Kerrigan, this time from a different angle. Robs thanks to Brokey's flash, but it is traded right back. Tess has been good for answers. And Twists looking to piece together a spectacular moment on the catwalk. Heroic start to retreat. Oh, it's so lurky. They all start to fall back. We've got 35 seconds on this clock. Bomb inside of the spawn. Twist presses in. Back turn by Tessas. And down he goes. The hopes of Heroic continue to falter unless... Unless. Javi, what can you do? Who can you trick? Who's convinced that this is B? A players start to peel off, but Kerrigan wastes no time coming right out. Broking missed shot, but how about Rain? Sits behind triple, bomb being planted, easy shutdown, and Heroic inside of the A site will fall! Ooh. The FaZe Clan comeback is real! We've seen so many appearances from Yabby in moments like that that have changed the course of the round. And in one case, the entire map here, he has an opportunity with space, they can't hear him, he gets out, he establishes some nades, but Kerrigan jumps to it. Doesn't let that problem get too big. Rain is about to peel back from CT as they swing Palace and immediately sticks himself to the back of Triple and waits. 
Kerrigan disrespecting that utility in that moment saves his A rotations. Very fast. Heroic. Oh! Try to pull out something quick. And just as fast as they emerge, they collapse. Now just leaning back onto the pistols. We're staring at a tight game, folks. 12 apiece. Jabby and Katie and all that remain. Kadian trying to bring his troops to what would be their most glorious moment, and he has fallen so incredibly quiet on Mirage. But a bomb plant, a bomb plant on the B site with a deagle in hand, no armor, no chance. This is nothing but a dream. Or, and you know, Kadian has been dreaming big, but <laughs> not today. Can't stop Twist coming in from behind. Face Clan, they tie up. They were denied a 10 in a situation where they could have taken a lead. And now they could potentially take their first. Heroic's third timeout. Rops, you know it had to be those AKs, yes. right? Pistols behind it, but they task the two rifles with running out ramp first. It's a key play. Brokey, Rops, and Twists. Money's fine for Heroic, but is it fine for Heroic? Is Kerrigan staring into your soul, Heroic? Have they woken up just in time? Twelve, twelve. Six rounds of regulation left. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Dreams on the line. It has to be underscored. Literal dreams for these Danish players. For phases year. are looking at so many recent round losses. They find an opening. Yeah. Huge gap left here by FaZe in middle. His B-site, remember, generally bends but doesn't break. Twists. Good amount of damage. Tess gonna get cleaned up. Kerrigan with a chance to add more to the tally. Nice clean shot from Twist. Kadian's got some kind of an answer. And we've got Jabby trying to apply pressure out from Apps. They've got Kerrigan zoned. But yet, he holds on. And as the bomb falls back, Stown picks up Rops. That's a kill at the A site. And FaZe, well, they just lost their in-game leader. And Yabby alone once again gets out of the holes, gets his frag. But bomb for Cat? In the open? Oh, Kadian under pressure. It's him versus Rain. Nate takes him down to half. And Jabby, how the hell is he going to get over to this A site? Kadian finds Brokey. Rain hit over top, but a chance yet again. 1v3, two more kills, all he needs, but no smoke. So he swaps out to the op and hopes they overface. All Heroic have to do is play it safe. Rain gets on top of Bomb, down to the two seconds, and Stown will connect. Heroic maintain a lead. Yes. They'll never give it up. They refuse. Heroic threw away. They test that B site. They pressure twist. They keep Kerrigan in the corner. And Kadian sees a chance to run this bomb all the way back to A. The plays that Yabby has been making this series. Staying alive in that position. Getting that one extra swing frag for the rotation. Feels like Stown with some of his presence. And Stown over on A does the exact same thing. They coalesce in the perfect moment to put so much pressure on FaZe that they break. Oh, and they missed their smoke fired? running through this oh, on a full rifle, but they take Aragon out. I was going to say, that hurts. But winning the round nonetheless Can you feel way 45? better. Bomb easily planted here for Kadian. Do they have to give this up? Do they? This, this is the worst case situation. Kerrigan doesn't oh, delay, dies instantly. Finally. Heroic immediately spread for all the control. Heroic, is this how they get 14? How many Before times? we can even start talking about them? How many times have we seen B-Site tested? 
How many times have Heroic faltered on the front line of it? But not in round 26. One kill makes the difference. And they had to run through a molly after missing their smoke on Kerrigan's. The early flash is perfect. They finally get what they wanted, B, taking Kerrigan out by himself. This entire time, the early rounds, trying to end on the site, Kerrigan always had help. Doesn't get through. And they find the moment where Kerrigan's alone, and they take him down. But now do they want to overstaff B? Do they want to overreact? Do they want to take control here? Now, conditioning is real. Heroic, can they abuse it? A shiver sent down Faze's spine. What does Kadian think Kerrigan will do in response to that? Benefits heroic in this moment to draw this out for as many seconds as they can for every little detail. One bad step could make the difference. The intensity now. Heroic probably lulled into a depleting feeling that this map was getting away from them, and then they finally string two together. And when that last round's so easy, it's truly like, what do you learn from it? What can you take away from it? How do you adapt? How do you avoid dying now on the doorstep of victory? Not one single aggressive move being made. Middle clearly there. That nade is immense! But Twist, taken down, it's gonna give Rain a great chance! Oh! oh! Norwegian annihilation! Inside connector, Heroic have been stopped, shushed! No, not this time! FaZe keep the game going. They had their cake and they ate it too. Not only did they have fast rotations to the B site, but the double cap play to take care of mid. Rain knows he can simply walk out. Sound got the hard kill. He knows Twist is a usual suspect and he's there. But now there's a new cameo. Right back to winning ways. Money still both sides. Round 28, gonna mean a lot. Either a 30 round game or heroic secure OT. Looking like a faster execution. No longer wanting to go get a piece of Kerrigan. There's gonna be pressure here on Rain. He's had a tough start to this map, but after that last round, into the kill feed yet again. Smoke's creating awkward pockets. Jabby, oh, he sees them. Twists have been taken out. Rain tries to pressure through. Holding off to what he can, and Tessas has been hit. So at the moment, Heroic and FaZe don't know where they should go or what they should do. Playing in the dark, Rain walks forward. There are people they can't find. It is totally unclear to FaZe what's going on right now. Some audibles are being heard. Some players are getting called. But they have this site surrounded. And they could use Tessas as the jackknife to try and crack it open. What if he just has to hold off on Cat? What if he allows for Jabby to fixate back on site? There's a single Molotov here for Tessas, so they're not going to be able to get that onto the feet of Rain. For now, he can hold this position and hope. Oh, but a player spotted. Rain awaits the fight. The bomb drops down beneath, and Rain, the stoic golem, waits and delivers. Tessas dead, and FaZe, oh, so close, so close to denying Heroic their dreams. 14 all. We're going 30 rounds. A fitting finish to a fierce battle. As Freya said, the two heads of state trying to prove whose day it is. The calls being great both ways. New individuals joining the server. Rain showing us he doesn't care what time of night it is.
He'll wake up when he feels like it. A last timeout called in round 29. Oh, and they've got more than strategic decisions to be made. They've got economic ones to be made. Think about the tension of this moment. Every single one of you feels it. They have to decide whether or not they're going to play for overtime. Here we go. The buy comes through. A little curb purchase. They'll keep some money in their back pocket for a rainy day. This may be the very best decision that they could have made. Heroic have shown a lot on these mixed buys. But FaZe have been relatively steady about converting. The utility is so low for Heroic. They're gonna try to get out from the palace. This could queue up Rops. He's gonna see the Tech-9 drop down beneath. They don't get the trade right away, but Stown with just a pistol, picks it up. A third weapon now in the hands of Heroic. If you're gonna recover this, that gun could be so damn instrumental. But they don't rush this, no sir. They're gonna go over top. They're gonna try to still continue to piece together the bigger picture to give Stown runway to take off. But that just gives time for Rain. He comes out wide with one. There's the answer back. Jabby, Stown, Brokey, Kerrigan, four members left. And a Dane goes down. Will Brokey rip it from them? First shot connects. And it's Jabby on the full health, giving space to work. Both players separate. Both players leave. And Jabby plants that bomb the newcomer to Heroic. When they were here one year ago, when this very same crowd booed them, Jabby was not a piece of that puzzle. But now, given his chance to shine, surrounded by his countrymen, he sits in the back underneath and waits. Brokey not with the trusty op, tries to press this in, figuring it out. He's That's the loudest eruption that we've seen so far for the new guy to the team. The newest of the Danish talents. The man who's proved so much right before your eyes today. And a clutch for the 30th round to come into full effect. They have the money behind it. Two AKs went into that. And now it's FaZe in that same position. Two M4s. Heroic's best chance to win this tournament. The road to Rio led to the road to redemption. FaZe Clan, 0-3. Heroic, a lost grand finals. Kerrigan gonna kill Kadian. Jabby tries his damnedest, but now his teammates need to step up. And it's not going well until, until... Stown and Shush, individual kills, different sides of the map, the stringiest round yet, and we have individual duels to be had. They need to collect themselves, their nerves, and all the pressure falls on them here and now. Utility given over. Stown, a young man touted as one of the best that Denmark's ever had, and Brokey, not yet around that corner. Didn't oh see him until. And phase into the 1v2. Oh! oh. oh. No, sir! Kerrigan keeps the dream alive. It has to go to overtime. It's only meant to be. <sighs> it's only fitting. Oh, my God. That potted plant. Bought time for Stout to maybe clear that. What a shot from Rops on Shush flying across. And Kerrigan has bought a second chance. They separate and a shot to the back of the head. Royal Arena on its feet. Are you not entertained? <laughs> it's a big day for this crowd. It's a big day for this team. And a bigger day for Jabby. Yet again, in with the impact, catches Brokey quick. Not much chance to catch their breaths, and beautifully, the timeouts start to run dry. Twists, trying his damnedest, but it's down instead to find that headshot. Wants to go a little better. K9 
Kerrigan, his chance. He holds him off. Double kill, looks great. Kadian able to answer Stown on the retreat. Fights and fires and holds. Oh, oh bang. And then Twist with the chance to recover. Yet again, every step of this way, FaZe find a way to just continue and survive. Twist has to put this together. So much time is bought. That natural rotation to get caught off is cleared. Twist hoping. This lands in his lap, but it won't be the case. Over time, this rifler. And Heroic started off fast. They put this one. Trying to steal away Heroic's magical moment. Dead, oh. dead at the hands of Jabby. Can it be anything other than a headshot with this kid? He's been cleaning clocks all day. When it absolutely matters most. You see him for two frames and you're dead. Dude, shout out Kerrigan. And he's not getting tired. They thought that they were just gonna be able to easily run up that catwalk, but they met the ladder presence. Heroic gonna take the first round of OT. It's not every round that we get FaZe taking these risks in middle. And it's not every day that Heroic decide to come emphasize Palace. But here they go! Shush! Walks out, tries to catch him sleeping. Twists down beneath the trade back from Jabby, who has been instrumental on every single round. Heroic managed to pick up on this offense, but they've let this go. And they wait. Twists hold. What's happening right now? They've left the bomb down beneath. Twists. The troll beneath the bridge waits for his chance to strike. A magician hits his mark. And with Rops right there with it, they rip it away from Heroic. They take this away from Kadian. He peeks back into Brokey and goes down. Tied game again. Just couldn't figure that one out. Twist stayed alive for so long. He was just, I hope I don't get timing. That's all he could hope for. But he got his opportunity calmly. One on default, one under Balk is not what Heroic are ready for on this Palace walkout. We saw them call a strat like this earlier on. People are literally dying right now. <laughs> this is not a game. In Denmark, this is life. Javi, hit by a smoke. It's a risk. Bullets whiz by. Him versus Kerrigan over towards that site, and Javi plays it cool. Twist down to the same position. You'd think this time that does not go unchecked. You'd think. You'd think. Utility shown back from Ticket. Kadian's op rings off. Twist reveals himself. This time they cover. They cover. They have Brokey. They're not as scared about it. Heroic's early tactic fails. Still plus one minute by the time they're done with it. The guy they know who's always there awaits some assistance. His chance to shine again. Chappie hasn't moved a muscle for a minute. Kerrigan yet to truly recover that scoreline. All the utility for FaZe. Well, it's up on Catwalk, because Rops, again, remember, double op setup here for FaZe. And he doesn't have line of sight on Windows, so if they trickle down beyond the van, look, they found a way to get past. Stown kills Kerrigan. Sight seemingly clear for the taking, and Shush continues to tear up turf, moving closer to Rops. Brokey the second top. Oh, Rops has gone down. He actually tried to extend out onto the catwalk, looked to get into the corner. Instead, he gets clamped down on, and all of a sudden, FaZe are gonna have to try and fight this back from market yeah. if they choose to fight this. But it's OT, you have to go. We get the walk back around the cat, replacing the dead body of Rob's, looking for the impact, but it's heroic into the kill feed. And it's heroic with two rounds on a T side in OT. Ooh, yeah, no more regrets for heroic. 11-4 CT halves. 
So two rounds in OT does not mirror what we've seen. Yes. This is a stark improvement. And they improved their own flaws, getting into the B site, full on the entry, and showing that they have layers. Their first tactic fails, falls flat, doesn't, they don't find anything. Arroy can respond however they'd like. The Kerrigan goes down without his. The site gets run over. Down plan. with another key entry. Saving two timeouts until this moment. Let's go. Let's go. Immediately into the attack. Phase plan call a timeout. 19 does it here for either team. 18 for another OT. Now, Kadian was pervasive when it came to opping, but he's 14 and 21. Still had key impact frags on this op on CT side. And in general, was very good at honey potting phase into the site that was overstacked. For sure. Will that continue to be the case? Oof, early damage. Quick clash. Brains found safety somewhat. He's taking a beating. Oh my. Grenade after nade, but here comes the B hit. They're gonna waste no time. Kerrigan also smashed by Utility. Tess off at the arch side, gets the opening kill. Jabby's looking for a chance to feast. And what do you know? He's got the best of Kerrigan already, and Rops. Big scalps, big moment, and it's heroic on the brink of 18. Brokey looking to bring this back, doesn't see Jabby. He knocks them out. The power in that left jab. Broken nose for FaZe Clan. Two attempts to win the Fall Finals. Gabby looking for 30. Showing he's a two-way player. Great attacker and now defender. They put everything into stopping anything fast in middle and FaZe tried to buy time for that attack to come in towards B. Heroic has seen that numerous times in that first half. Rain was lucky to be alive. They were on top of all of it. Runs a risk again towards mid. This was the battleground that cost Rain a bunch of health in the last time. This time, though, he's not there. Kadian anticipating them, trying to cheat this map control. Sticks his face in underpass, leaves on 9 HP. They know he's low. It might be inconsequential. But again, it's about sometimes these game plan wins. Look at what's happening to the map right now. Tessa has sudden individual oh. duel. A straight up head to head 1v1. Kerrigan now going to have to call from the sidelines. Commander leans on his stars. Rain gets out from Khan. Wants to try and join his teammates. A double back from jungle. Brokey sees the hands, gets his shot, oh. but Stown survives. Shush looks towards Khan. Two kills left. Twists, rocks, recover. Jabby back at it. A ton of damage done. Everyone's yet, low. Yet they hang on. 30 seconds to the clock. The pressure is so real. The dreams are alive. And Twists wants to rip them from their fingertips. Down in with the up, and now Robs is dead. They've done it. They've done it. They made their dreams come true. The first aid is team to win inside the Royal Arena. A historic day. History for Danish Counter Strike. The emotional man of Cadian. Somebody who has hit rock bottom unlike so many others. He's gone through it all. And Yabby, the most unlikely roster move to come out of the Copenhagen Flames dissolution into heroic benefiting to a trophy lift. They couldn't do it at the major and wondered if they'd ever see a grand finals again. They tried to return to form. They dispatch of the ninjas in pajamas. Heroic heartbreak in Rio. Tragedy that they couldn't lift that major trophy, but sometimes heartbreak is where you learn the most. And heartbreak is something Kadian knows so much more than others.
This is a player who's traveled continents to try and make this dream a reality. Five young men dreaming of the thought to lift trophies in a competitive esport versus the best team of 2022. They won those S tier tournaments online. They now yeah. look to prove they've made that transition fully to land at a tier one event. In the very same room that they were booed one year ago, they come back. And like so many say, we'll be back stronger than ever. And in this case, today, it is true. His critics call him the comedian. But this man is a world-class jester, entertaining the royal court inside the royal arena for the first time in history on Danish soil. Give it up for your fall finals champions, Heroic! I don't know. Um, obviously, FaZe is a really good team. They have so good individuals, so it's hard in the clutches sometimes, but I'm so proud of the boys. They played amazing. Oh, fantastic composure for sure. Ayabi, the newest to the team, the young one, your big stage once again, your second grand final. What does this mean to you? It means so much. All the hard work we have put in the last couple of four months is just. Yeah, it pays off, and I, I can't describe this right now. Uh, I don't know what to say. you got to let it sink in, brother. Sis, it's been quite the journey since you joined Heroic. You guys have battled adversity and everything else with it. How does this moment feel? Oh, it feels amazing, especially being home as well. I have no words. This is incredible. Thank you. Sis, you, you've been on this journey for a long time. You were in a grand final not too long ago in Brazil. And now you're in the same situation, but that game looked like it might have slipped away. Yeah. What was going through your heads? How did you feel? Well, it was an amazing game. FaZe played really well and we played well. It was a great final. Last time we lost, uh, when we lost the final in Rio, I said, I'll never let this happen again, to lose a final and see another team lift the trophy. And here we are, I prevented it, and now we're lifting the trophy. So that feels amazing. I bet it does. Stown, you put up huge numbers. Every single game, you put up a star performance from start to finish. You've been on this wild ride with this crazy man next to you. Talk to me, what does this mean? It means everything. Everything. I mean... So, this is what you... This is what we... This is why we do this, right? The most insane game I've ever played, like... 
the rounds, like it's insane. I mean, it's filled with everything I love, and uh, I mean, I'm just so fucking proud of this team. So proud of how we can. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. Honestly, I'm speechless. You did an amazing job. Kaden. Finally, this is a winners' interview I get to do for you on this stage. I know how hard you've worked for this. We spoke about it many times. But you've actually broken the curse. We've broken the curse. We've shown we can do it on land. It feels amazing. And uh, I have one thing. You know, we've been talking about doing this meme, and since Jacob doesn't have the guts to do it, all I want to say is, that's a uh, royal a uh, claw. Yeah, you know, that was, like Stown said, such a tough game yeah. from start to finish. The way they won Inferno as well, back and forth, was so tough. I want to appreciate the face guys as well. Like, we just took down a team that won a major this year, that won Katowice, that won Cologne. They are an insane team, a worthy opponent. So we appreciate the game a lot. But, boy, have I fucking waited for our time, man! And talk about that, right? Your time. We've seen individual pieces change within this team. Then you bring Yabby in. We spoke at the beginning, he didn't quite hit the mark. But this, this performance in the grand final, insane. Was he the missing piece? He was the missing piece, but I also think, you know, people said in the beginning, na 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 na, like, we played two tournaments early on, like, look, he's already mad, you know, like, he was whining so much about it. From day one, he's been there in practice. Also, I want to say a huge appreciation to Kasper Straube, Lasse Sven, Michael, who's done the videos, all the people that you don't see on stage, who's helped make this project work. Thank you to all the Norwegian guys from Heroic as well. You know, they've built an amazing organization in such a short amount of time. And, um, I mean, Royal Arena, can you give one last applause maybe for my teammates? This is your championship winning team. This is the team that beat the curse of the Royal Arena. This is Horowitz! The Danes truly heroes, not just by name, but now also by nature. Their second grand finals in a row, and this is where they get their hands on the gold. Their first tier one land trophy as a squad at Maniac. We, not, we could not have written a better narrative if we tried. It is so poetic, the heroic lift it here in Copenhagen at the full finals. One of the most legitimate way to put your hands on a trophy, Freya. There is nothing else we can say about heroic. They slayed their dragon, they overcame their obstacles, they proved their growth. Man, I said individuals would have to turn a new leaf, they would have to show a new face. And how poetic is that, that Yabi, the man that we doubted at a time, comes in and acts like the hero he was supposed to become here in Copenhagen. How can you not feel for these boys? How can you not? Absolutely amazing performance coming in from Heroic. Absolutely amazing coming in from Yavi. You spoke about it. We spoke about hero. it. We said that if this Heroic were to win any trophies, it would be when Yavi was fully integrated. It would be when he was ready for Heroic. And this match, he showed up with big cojones. The amount of massive plays he made in this final was absolutely outstanding. Without a doubt, for my money, the MVP of this final. And great to see Kaden, and great to see Heroic finally win a trophy and on home soil in front of all the fans. It's it a is. story of defeating the odds, Freya. Yeah. It's about defeating the odds. We said if they're going to beat FaZe, it would have to be 2-0. Kadian would have to put Kerrigan to bed after two maps. Surely, if we go to three, it would never happen. They would never have the power. They would never have the resilience. And when they get that good start on Mirage, we say you have to close it now. If you allow FaZe to come back, you will never win. And time and time and time again, they defeated the odds. They proved us wrong. They go to overtime. And they, actually, against the Giants, the most experienced players out there, they performed their best Counter-Strike in overtime. How fantastic is that? It truly is a story of that mental resilience, that mental fortitude, which we were doubting, to be fair, from Heroic coming into this. We saw them, you know, on an exponential run back at the Rio Major, then faltering, fumbling at the final hurdle against outsiders in the grand final. The fact that they can bounce back from that, I mean, we saw just how much Kaden and co wanted it in this one. Kaden said it pretty well. They had to take down face in a final like this. They had to take down the Giants, the team who's been winning everything throughout the year, the team who won the first major, the team who won Cologne, Katowice, etc. They did it in a very, very legit way.
It is absolutely beautiful indeed. So many incredible scenes, so many emotions going down in this one as well. And man, it would only be apt to get our Maersk MVP up here. It's Kadian. Um, man, so many emotions going down on that very stage. I hope you can hear us with the atmosphere <laughs> yeah, that's going on at the you. moment. Yeah. Um, can you put into words exactly what was going through your head in that final moment? Because it went to overtime. We, everybody was saying, you know, this is FaZe's one to take after that streak. I mean, we, we've had a good record of OTs in the past, so when we lost Inferno, I feel like surely not twice in a row. What was going through my mind in the last round? Don't peek, don't die. <laughs> no, I was really just praying for it not to be some kind of awkward situation. And uh, I don't know, like Stown said, there was such a crazy final. I hope you guys and the crowd enjoyed it as well. I think, yeah, what a final, what a fucking game. It was absolutely spectacular. Back at uh, the Rio Major as well, I saw you guys, uh, you know, after an unfortunate loss there, you were consoling Stan there. There were so many emotions going down on the stage. We got to see a replica of that, but for an entirely different reason. Couldn't you put forward the emotions that all of you guys were sharing in that moment? Yeah, I mean, it's just really nice that we finally get this land victory. We've been fighting really hard for it. And obviously, you know, we had our time in the online area where we won some trophies, but the feeling of doing it in the stadium is completely different. And there's no secret denying, you know, me and Stown specifically have has a special relationship. Yeah. Prior to what has happened and after what has happened to him personally, we're just really close. And that kind of feeling is something that's like uniting the team as well. The way we treat each other, the friendship, the camaraderie, you know, it's just not something you see in a lot of teams in any sport. And I'm feeling so lucky to be a part of it. Kaden, you've been around for a very, very long time. We talked about your comeback story. We talked about the fact that you've had a struggle from career as well. Obviously, I don't think anyone right now doubts how much it means to you as a player as well. But one thing I, I strike with is the fact that you always use the word team. You guys are a team compared to everyone else in the space of Counter-Strike. I would argue that you guys are the most and, and closest team out there. How important is it to you to win a trophy like this, but do it with your team? Yeah, I think, like you say, you don't need to be like really good friends in order to win, but it surely makes it a lot sweeter when it happens. And also I think you're gonna cope better with like the bad moments, the stressed moments, the tough losses and stuff like this, when you do it with people you respect and who respect you back. Uh, so it means a lot, you know, coming into this tournament, I didn't expect it. And when I woke up this morning, I just didn't want to be remembered as a team who like went to finals and lost like twice, you know, what an awful feeling that would be. <laughs> and I mean, we're the first Danish team, full Danish team to ever win a trophy in Denmark. And I think that's also something very special. Man, your evolution as a team has been nothing short of incredible, honestly. The amount of ceilings you have broken through recently. How does it feel for you to be the IGL and see your team finally break through these barriers? <sighs> I'm so proud of the guys, you know, like I've been in other teams where maybe people have been doubting my philosophies. You look back at North and stuff like this and it's been no easy task to incorporate that kind of play style into the system with these players either. But I think, my opinion, when you look back maybe two or three years, people will talk a bit of, about the heroic way of playing Counter-Strike. Obviously not to the extent that they did with like SK and Astralis, I'm not saying that, but the way we're like trying to play for information, you can see it in the opponent's interviews as well, we're playing it a bit differently. And to kind of have that understanding for all my teammates, you know, because I can do it to a certain extent, but they need to help me. And they've just been growing so fast. For a while, it felt like you guys lacked just that little bit of certainty to push it over 16. It was very clear you were playing good Counter-Strike, but when it came to 14-14, yeah. we were doubting. Maybe you were doubting. What made you go through that river, through that last jump? I'm, I'm honestly not uh, not sure, man. Like, uh, because <laughs> the style we play is also a lot of like decision-making, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I think under high-pressure situations, with the crowd, when it's getting tight, that's where you have an easier time making big mistakes, you know, like not making the right decision, not getting your teammate to do what you want, because the set kind of executes, you know what to do from A to, to C. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> oh, my God. Where are What? Mom Kalian, huh? <laughs> where's the jersey? Where's the jersey? <laughs> I love that we can see how much it means to literally all your friends and family in yeah. attendance as well. I mean, it must make when, it extra sweet here. When we had to play the game against G2, I was like, I have like 45 friends and family <laughs> who's coming to the arena. Am I going to be sitting next to them? Or am I going to be playing on the stage? You know, that was literally what it was about in that game. So I was happy we at least got one game and yeah. 
And not, not just one. Today, you were lifting a trophy in front of the momentous occasion for you. Production of Dallas is solid, and I want to react to the winning moment uh, because, Caden, I think you even bumped your head in the booth as well. Uh, let's take a look <laughs> at that because there's so many emotions going up through you. That's amazing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it Do you remember that? Do you remember these moments? I remember the flash on the ground, but uh, I don't even know what to say. People also expected some pretty big reaction, I guess, when it happened. But yeah, instant tears, instant joy, and yeah, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, there's just so many emotions going through the heroic camp in there. It's absolutely beautiful to see you guys lifting your first ever Tier 1 Land Trophy as a squad. But for you, Kadian, you have also received the Maersk MVP fan votes here. Uh, we've got an extra special little trophy for you there. There we go. You can get that one out, Jacob. You can hand it to our man. There. Yeah, we got uh, an extra trophy for you, Kadian. The Maersk MVP. Here you go. Uh, a memory I guess you can cherish for, uh, for life. Thank you. There we go. Oh my god, I love it. So many people are staying. You, Just you know, watch this I, 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 I kind of think that from the showdown we played to get here, Tess has robbed me for the MVP. Go look at the ratings. <laughs> and this time I probably robbed someone else because I'm not 100% <laughs> sure that I deserve it. This was not my best tournament individually, but that's just even more saying that it's a tournament that we win as a team. It's a team effort, isn't it, right? Yeah. You said it yourself, it's a team effort. We talked about where Heroic could go from here, and I think that will be one of the final questions for you as well. Now that you've finally done it, you finally got the big win here, you got the land trophy, you got the MVP as well. What can we expect from Heroic moving on? Because we discussed that when Xiaopi is fully integrated, you can become one of the best teams in the world. Yeah, we can. But we still have a lot to learn. Uh, we still have a lot to learn. You can see in the games we played throughout the major stage and this one as well, we had some big losses, like not even getting double digits on, on some maps and still plenty of mistakes. So I'm not at a point where I'm like completely satisfied. Sure. You know, I'm really happy with the win, but I think there's a lot of things we can learn on that we can get better on. And that's the plan for, for the next year for sure. Um, I think we also just worked really hard and like you guys, because you are at the same tournaments that we are, you are at the end of the, uh, the station. You don't have much more left in the tank. You know, you travel so much, you work so hard and uh, we're looking very much forward to a break as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've literally given everything in the tank here, Kadian. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Of course, there's been so many people supporting you here in the arena, but I want to hand the floor over to you for the viewers at home. Is there anything you'd like to say to the people who voted for you, for the people that were <coughs> cheering on Heroic through and through? Yeah, this camera was? Yes, there you yeah, go. Yeah. That one with the red I light. mean, thank you so much to everyone who supported me throughout my career. It's been a bit of a roller coaster. And to those who is against me or was against me, appreciate you guys as well. It's <laughs> been a fucking fun ride. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just want to say thank you also to Blast, who hosted an amazing tournament in amazing conditions. And uh, the crowd was really awesome. And yeah. Uh, I, I think maybe looking back at this in a, a year or two, I, I, I would like to say more things, but I don't have it right now. No, it, it's such a special moment for you, Katie, and thank you for all the thoughts and emotions that you've given us. There's so many people that are waiting in the stands. I literally haven't seen this many people crowding around before, so I'm going to let you go, sign thank some you. autographs, get thank some pictures. Guys. Thank you so much for your time, man. Thank Huge you congratulations once again. Man. An absolutely incredible showing from Kadian and an incredible showing from Heroic. We talk about the resilience, we talk about the fortitude, the importance of all those aspects coming in and coming to fruition for the Danes today. Man, that actually got me. Ooh. That interview actually got yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> coming I'm coming up. It's, it's actually really hard and it's a, it's a good reminder that, you know, behind all these skins and models and shows, there are emotions, right? There are real human emotions involved in it and what it means to him to be able to go through the finish line with his boys and sharing this moment against all the adversity and the obstacles he had to go through recently it's it's honestly beautiful it's genuine it's it's true it's it's human it's it's life in itself it's absolutely fantastic isn't it we talk about hobbit having one of the best comeback stories in counter strike i would argue that the comeback kaden have made in terms of his career personal development and now finally standing on this stage winning a tier one trophy as he said we spoke about it during covid we spoke about it after covid we spoke about it after the major maybe heroic would never be ready to win a trophy and now finally they have done it i am just super super excited to see obviously the emotions you have on screen right now but also looking forward for heroic i personally believe they can become one of the best teams we have in counter strike for a long period forward as well because as he said they play unique counter strike no one else in the world plays like heroic which is also why this trophy is fully deserved yeah Kadian certainly the king of denmark and the comeback king at that but he also gave some props to his right hand man throughout all of this journey with heroic it's Stan, and he has a few words for us Stown, congratulations on the grand final win here at the Blast Fall Finals. You just literally stepped off stage to come here and talk to me. What are you feeling right now? I'm filled with emotions of joy, obviously. It's, um, I'm so fucking happy right now. Sorry for the word, but I'm, that's how it is. I'm, 
this game like really like shows to me why as well even like in the rough times maybe like that you can think back to like this is why we play the game right because that feeling I've never tried anything like it like the close game in overtime third map it's insane and this is your second grand final run in in two tries last time was in Rio you lost to the outsiders now you just beat FaZe Clan this is an amazing accomplishment but how, how much does it mean to you right now it, it, it means everything, right? I mean, I don't know what else to say than that. It's just, we've worked so hard for this. We've tried so many times, getting deep in tournaments, and now we finally get over the curse, right? So it must mean that something is working in the right direction. So I'm just so happy. And let's talk about that curse, because no Danish team has lifted the trophy here in the Royal Arena on Danish soil. Was that the express goal for Heroic when you guys started the Blast Fall Finals here? I mean, uh, it was for sure one of our goals, right? I mean, we don't like really like say before tournament, like we must win this tournament or we must go to that like uh, playoffs or something like that. We just like focus on uh, the process, like what we want to like improve in the game we play, how we want to improve, yeah, like how we play, right? And then uh, we're just going with the flow and we managed to win, so we're really happy. And speaking of goals, your uh, team performance coach has posted earlier today, and I also asked Tessis about this, that your goal wasn't to win, it was to achieve a number of other goals. Did you guys achieve those? I would definitely say so. Uh, and as, uh, yeah, Casper Strauber says, like it's not about like setting a like result-defined goal, it's all about like the process. So yeah, we're really happy. And just put a few words on your own performance here at the Blast Fall Finals. You have been your team's top performer. How does it feel and how did you do it? Oh, it feels good, obviously, knowing that like, uh, like I can make a difference, you know. And uh, I've been playing a really good tournament. Had like not not because I had a few bad maps in the finals, but like I could have played played better in the first two maps. But I had a good reset for the third map. Decided to give everything, and I'm yeah, I'm just really happy. <laughs> Thank you so much. What an incredible journey for the young star of Stan. Man, we just think back to even a year ago, the adversity that he had to be facing on this very stage, being yes. booed by the Danish crowd. The fact that he gets to lift the trophy here with roars of applause echoing around him. Yeah, and I believe he's quite down to earth when he said, you know, I had a relatively silent final, but I stepped on on the third map, and that's what he did. He finally wore that cape of superhero he was supposed to wear on the third map. He pushed them over through the finish line. And, you know, there's time to, I guess, rethink the goals for next year. And for now, let's just appreciate it's you know, just it's, it's, a, it's a sweet moment for yeah. a player when you get to lift that trophy. Just bask in it, as you're saying. Just have a good time. It, it's your time. It's a breakthrough for, for Stown, obviously. It's a breakthrough for Heroic winning the trophy. But also for Stown to have one of those tournaments where we put him up in the highest category, where we can argue that he was the MVP of the tournament when you look at the entire thing. So just fantastic to see him and Yabi played a, a great, great tournament. And so did Heroic. Yeah, huge props to Heroic for managing to lift this one on home soil, no less. But unfortunately, for phase they do falter at the final hurdle but we do have a few words from resident Zane himself it's Carrigan the first map was uh, heroics pick they took that you took the second map on your own pick and then this third barrage it was a slow start for yourself as well but you actually came rolling back into an overtime finish what do you have to say about that so obviously uh, like I said I, I couldn't find myself uh, as a captain, as, an, uh, as a player, and sometimes we fight to get back into the zone or find the zone. Uh, today was one of the finals. Uh, I played my last few years where I couldn't find my footing. And obviously I have to relook and rethink uh, what happened during the game. But uh, my teammates did a great, uh, great job of keeping us alive. Um, obviously I hope we would have finished up in there in all time to, to forget about this final. Uh, but yeah. Um, Pretty disappointing right now, but we lost uh, to the better team. You guys have a chance to finish off the year on a high note, though, even though you lost it here at the Blast Fall Finals. What are you going to prepare to end the year as best as possible? I, I think whatever we have done the last uh, week here has been good. Um, so, yeah, keep up the consistency and do our best to, to keep improving our, our form. The uh, second season hasn't been as we wanted it to be, uh, but they finished uh, well strong. We can be proud of that in the end, too to keep resistant, but yeah, um, right now pretty disappointed, but yeah, I have to work on on, uh, on the new maps as well for newbies for, for Vols, obviously. And just talk to me through these Blast Fall finals. You had your ups and downs throughout the uh, the event, but what was the fondest memory of this? 
obviously the group stage was the funniest moment. Now um, Chiban is obviously playing the final here. Uh, what a fantastic scenery and what a fantastic uh, event for for Blast to show Royal Arena is more than just Australis. And I think we showcased today that uh, let us have a major at some point in Denmark because whatever happened in here, uh, it's just fantastic to see that uh, so many Danish fans showed up to to an amazing final. Yeah, obviously a heartbreaking moment for Carrigan, uh, no less. Unfortunately, not being able to lift the trophy here on home soil. But man, we do have to give some props to FaZe. Bouncing back, almost making it all the way to lifting that trophy after <laughs> faltering it in what was the most recent Rio Major. Yeah, they definitely showed a good resilience now. You know, bouncing back from Rio, as you mentioned, we expected a reaction from FaZe. And I think we had exactly what we wanted a couple of rounds away from lifting the trophy now. I feel Carrigan's pain. It is true from an individual standpoint. He was never really a factor in this grand final. He was targeted by Heroic individually missed the mark a lot. He had a couple of other players next to him who didn't necessarily bring what they had to. We talked about Rain being a grand final player. Unfortunately, aside from a couple of highlights, he was also a little bit bleak. So for FaZe, it's all it's not all negative. Right? No. I think mm. the reaction is here. They sat on course. I think they reacted from Rio. And second place is not that bad. Yeah, nothing will overshadow the, the feeling of disappointment right now yeah. for Kerrigan. Obviously, having a rough game individually, losing in such a close final, we can talk about that from, from now on and, and for the rest of the year. But overall, as you said, a great bounce back from the Major. And once again, it sets face up for a, a position when they come into Abu Dhabi, when they come into the World Finals, we once again have to consider them one of the favorites to win. Well, uh, let's round out the show with some highlights in our CS Money Play of the Day. Make sure you guys are heading on over to the Blast Premier Instagram to get your votes in. What is the uh, selection for us, Jake? Well, we are starting off with Lord Bentner. One <laughs> the brightest stars in the game of Counter-Strike. Took the scene by storm and had a nice round here with a triple kill, if I'm not mistaken. The fact that he was able to shoot simple this many times in the game. Oh, Lord Bentner, he's back. He's a Counter-Strike player, Matthew. Best crossover in history. Now, second possibility, we have Yabi, one of the clear heroes of this grand final with the Glock work on Inferno. He was the main architect of this gun round. You see the great timing he found, great shooting as well. Man, I tip my hat to Yabi for what he's done here in Copenhagen. An amazing final and an absolutely amazing final from Yabi. Unfortunately, Fortunately for Rain, and there was never an amazing final for him. This round, though, this deagle play that almost kept, oh, I guess almost, that kept face inside this game. Yeah. Absolutely outstanding with the deagle right here. Three kills, three headshots in a 2v5 that they were never supposed to win. Well, make sure you head on over to the Blast Premier Socials because, uh, unfortunately, we have no broadcast tomorrow. That is what? the end but of the line. How are we going to announce the finals? winner? How do well, we do? you'll have to go on over to the Instagram. I'm sure you're already following I can come back Matthew. tomorrow morning. Here. Um, you know, I'm it out. is a sad moment, but a happy moment for you, Matthew, when we're looking oh, at no. Bet way predictions. Jacob almost had the crown, almost, but close is no cigar. And uh, Maniac, the crown on top of your head once again. What can I say? Sometimes. How are you feeling this moment, Matthew? I feel like life is normal. Yeah. yeah Order is normality restored. has been restored. Ooh. Nature is healing. I'm on the throne as I should be. Um, the real is that it? Is that it? You're a pretty bad winner. Come on, give us some more. No, you know, I think when you get used to winning the way I do, you just take it easy. You don't have to play it hard, you know. It's That's just, it. Just That's the way it. I do it. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. <laughs> no matter what. Got money on my mind and I can never get enough. Another one. There we go. Beautiful stuff, Matthew. Um, but we can check in and what will be the final tournament of the year. Of course, the World Finals is coming up in a mere two weeks time in the city of Abu Dhabi. We have eight world-class teams to be gracing the stage here. I absolutely love this because this truly is the culmination of Counter-Strike when we're looking at the names across the cards for this tournament. So many teams on your screen right now who potentially can win that tournament. Let's be honest, Face Show, Glimmer was Counter-Strike right here. Navi, sure shaky, but we know the quality is simple. Vitality, a little bit of a question mark after the major. Yeah. I We'll leave that one out. The major winner, heroic one right here. There's a lot of teams and a lot of quality in Abu Dhabi. Man, we'll see if the winners of yesterday can actually remain winners. The likes of Outsiders, the likes of Heroic, how are they going to fare in Abu Dhabi? That's going to be my question. A lot of teams, a lot of quality, and a lot of cash on the line to round out 2022. One million dollars prize pool. Some uh, very happy team finishing in first place is going to go away with a whole big chunk of change, Jacob. Well, nice, you know, leading up to Christmas as well. A lot of Christmas presents will be had to handle out. So I guess whoever wins that prize will, uh, at least the family will be. Yeah. You you want to be friends with them. Yeah. They're going to be treated good. Well, uh, thank you for being my friends up here on the desk Aww. so much. It's always a pleasure to get to grace the desk with you guys. Thank you so much for everybody at home, for all the teams competing as well. And of course, to the solid production out there as well. You guys have been absolute superstars throughout the duration of this tournament. We love you and we will be seeing you in Abu Dhabi very soon.